Okay, we are going live. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Katie of Greenwood Quilter, and welcome to my 12-hour live. We will be sewing and talking and having great conversation. We, uh, Nikolai and I will be taking y'all outside around 9 o'clock Greenland time, which is 6 o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time for the first volley of fireworks. And then we will do it again at midnight our time because there's two sets of fireworks that will be going off. Everybody around town will be shooting them off. We didn't buy any this year because we're just going to have fun living through all of their fireworks because by by one o'clock in the morning I'm gonna be already tired of them. So and our dogs are gonna be barking the whole time. So be advised that you may hear them barking in the background and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. So there's that. So anyway, welcome to the live. And um yeah, I'm just waiting for people to come in. Hi Nancy and uh, Tammy from Siberian. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> it's the Siberian wind. You got it. Yeah, Siberian wind. She's here already in the Zoom. She's going to be hanging around with us. And like I said, we're all going to sew. And then I'm going to wait a couple of hours, maybe two to three hours before we start this um, Moda Blockheads Love Block. So there's also that little treat we're going to do. And, you know, we're just going to have fun for the next 12 hours. So welcome and stay tuned. And just so uh, a little disclosure here, I'm probably going to be eating in front of you. <laughs> I hope nobody minds. Were you able to get your uh, phone up? Were you able to get your phone up? Starting. Uh, I've got about uh, probably 80% now. So what are you going to do? Use the Use the laptop and telephones ready. Yeah. Awesome. You can put both of them on there if you want. Because I think I'm allowed up to 50 people in the room. So, you know. And people have been fire shooting off fireworks already today. So, um, what you going to work on, uh, Tammy? I am going to work on this. Um, it's a feathered snowflake. Uh, a tree skirt. Mm -hmm. It can be done as a tree skirt or as a, a table topper. I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera. I've got one can I've got one screen oh, yeah, over here and one screen yeah. over there, so I can't tell. Um, but it is all paper. Hang pieces. on a minute. Let me let me pin you, okay? okay? Give me a minute. I can pin you. You can. Uh, I think you also have the ability to do the same thing, but I'll show you how to do it in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can put them. There we go. I am now, there we go. Now they can see you. Okay. Hi Fallon, sorry. Hi Fallon and hi Beth. And I'm going to let uh, Tammy have the floor for right now. So go ahead, go back to what you were talking about. So what I'm working on is the feathered tree skirt um, or feathered snowflake tree skirt. Uh, it can be done as a table topper. Uh, this is a Judy Niemeyer Quilt Works pattern. Um, it is discontinued, but it's back from 2012. I've already got round one and round two complete. So I'm going to see if I can get through rounds three, four, and five when we're doing this, this live. I have been working on it off and on eh, for about two or three months. So I've been working on other projects a lot. So I finally get to get back to this and get it done and get it off my plate. So I'll have one more quilt on my plate to get done. And then I can start my first new projects of the new year. What are you gonna be working on Katie? Um, one of the things I'll be doing is, uh, prepping for the Moda Love Block. I'll probably be doing that to start Oh, that's me. right. That's right. I saw so that. I can get ready. So I can get ready for that. And then besides that, I will probably be, um, uh, there's a pin message already up here. Oh, I didn't think, sorry. I'm just, uh, then I'll work on, uh, probably some of my, um, 
UFOs. Okay. I, I love that love block. That's adorable. Yeah, you know, I um, <laughs> I, I I love the block because I've been sticking it in other things. I made a um, I'll, I'll have to find the pictures and I'll show it to everybody later where I inserted the love block inside of a Lori Holt flower pattern. Okay. That sounds so like a cool idea. No trying. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, uh, I I will find the picture and I'll share it with you guys. So. Thank you, baby. You sounded like an echo going on in our ears. <laughs> you can be so tiny little annoying. Nah, not me. <laughs> so let me welcome who else has walked in. We've had Fallon walk in, Robin walk in, Debbie's walked in, Beverly's walked in. And hello to Joyce also. Hello to all of y'all and welcome to my live stream. Uh, yeah, we will be talking some more. I'm just kind of waiting for people to drift in a little bit. And then um, also I want you to... Uh-oh. Something's wrong. Babe, do you see all of the windows in your chat? Oh, I know. Wait. Only on, on, on Zoom. Only on Zoom? Yeah. Okay, I need to fix something. Something's wrong. <coughs> okay, now let me see. Hey, can you guys see every, Can you see three windows in your chat? Those that's in the channel? You do? Oh, it's Ooh. What's going on? There we go. Can it show up now? No. Because I can see all of us in the actual... Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I was about to say, what's wrong? Say, <laughs> like, no, please don't mess up. So anyway, I want you to see that one of our first guests... She's the Siberian Wind. Her name is Tammy. And she is going to be hanging out inside the Zoom live. Um, so, well, yeah, four. Yep, there's probably going to be more over the time. I don't know. We'll see. So um, she, I'll have her reshare what she's working on when more people drift in. Because right now we've got 16 watching, looks like. Um, sorry for the, the sinus thing. Rista? Krista, do you know if um, Zoom can be run in two different uh, Zooms simultaneously at the same time? Do you know if that's possible? Because if I can, I can just give you a Zoom link for the other thing we were talking about. Hi, Diane. Happy New Year. Uh, Krista and Diane are part of the Cotton Cuts PMQ um, support. Uh, detectives and uh, we've all been sewing together for a really long time now so um, yeah and usually once a month we get together on our own time and sew together too because you know we love sewing and I forgot to set the time on me okay so uh, yeah Nikolai I'm going to give you the floor so you can tell them what you're going to do oh well uh, I have dismantled two buildings of creator set that I have. Question is, which one do I have to, which one do I want to start first? It's, um, I have a cinema, cinema, a theater, all the rest. Theater, yeah. Theater. Movie house, whatever. Or I have to build this, uh, what they call it, assembly square. Yeah. 
this this will be my two main projects for tonight. For the twelve hour soon. Diane says fancy dress for Lego building, Nikolai, looking sharp. <laughs> well the years. I have to try to look nice. That's my man, you guys. Uh, I just want to for I just want to forewarn everybody. Um, you're going to hear noise, and it's not just there's nothing I can do about part of it. You're going to hear fireworks going off because people are outside already blowing their wad before they even get there. Um, our dogs are probably going to bark, and I can't I can't muzzle them not to bark. So be aware of all these things going on. There's things that me and him cannot control. It's gone back again. Yeah, I know. I, it'll pop back again. I had pinned you is what I did. So now I know why it did that. Did it take it, took it back to me instead of you for some weird reason? Back again. Okay. All right. It's just weird that it's doing that. Okay. Hey, Linda. Yeah, Um, I had pinned Nikolai. It should have went on to Nikolai, so I don't know why it didn't. I must have a setting not set properly. Which, hey, it's me. I mess up all the time. <laughs> you want to take a look at the meat? Yeah. You talk to him while I go do that. I'll be right back. I'll do that. You're going to do it? Okay. And then let me know and I'll set for 10 more minutes. Robin says, welcome to my life. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and re-repeat again what we're going to do. Okay, so, as you know, yes, he's wearing a tie just for you guys. So, here's here's the plan. Uh, for the next 12 hours, we'll be sewing, of course. We, okay, is it looking okay? Yeah. It's not overcooking or nothing? Okay, yeah, I'll go look at it in a minute. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I got distracted. I'm so sorry. So we're going to sew. One of the things that I had talked about uh, that we are going to do probably in a, a couple of hours, because I want you know everybody to have a chance to go and download it. And speaking of downloading it, I need to get the link. We're going to do together, if you want to, I'm still going to do it whether you, whether you um, do it yourself, but we're going to do the Moda Blockheads 3 uh, Love Block. And it's paper piecing. And we're going to have a little fun with that. And that'll be the group project for those who want to participate. And um, in, in between, along with that, uh, throughout the 12 hours, we will be... Um, so I'll be working on other things. Like I'll probably work on a couple of my PMQs. I'll be showing you what we've been working on for the last three Saturdays of my lives. So you can see what it looks like because it's coming out really nice. And we're going to have great conversation and laugh and just sew together at uh, nine o'clock Greenland time. We're going to, uh, Take you guys outside for the first volley of uh, fireworks, and and they what they do is at nine o'clock, which is midnight Denmark time, they are shooting off fireworks in honor of Denmark, and then at uh, twelve o'clock our time, we will take you back outside again. Uh oh. And you can watch uh, our town celebrate the New Year's Eve, too. So hopefully everything will go good. We're going to use the phone and put it on a tripod and put it at an angle where it should point. So you can see at least most of it, we hope. At least that's what we're going to try to do. Now, I just posted a link for Moda Blockhead's Love Block. This is what we're going to do tonight. Together. And you can use scrap fabric, whatever you want to use. You can just find, you know, 
dig out of your stash what you got, and um, I will show you how I do it. I'm a little unconventional sometimes. I like to draw the lines on the back of the page. And I'm going to be doing a six inch block. So there, there you go on that part. Okay. And as you can see, I have a, a, a visitor sore in our Zoom, and her name is Tammy through Siberian Wind. And uh, that starts, the star on the back of your wall is what you're working on, right? Yes. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Yes, Linda, I'm wearing a tie, but probably to, to these 12 hours uh, live will be my, so far my last uh, live for this year, until next year, but that, that will be probably first, you, you might probably see me first in April, a long way, it will be, I will be absent for three months. And I will be seeing my wife in March, the beginning of March. So I will only be two months after her. Yeah, um, I'm hoping I can get up with a few people while we're in the United States that's on the east, you know, between uh, our plan is, or here's the plan for February, March. Um, I'm going to be flying to Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, for the quilt con and I'll be up there the whole four days and my daughter and her husband and my granddaughter will be there with us and then I'm going to um, ride back to Lake City with them and then Nikolai will be getting on an airplane and coming uh, probably around March the 3rd did we decide March the 3rd or 4th Sorry. yeah March the 3rd and I'm going to get him from the Jacksonville airport. And then we're going to do all kinds of things. We plan on doing a road trip to South Florida. Uh, we're going to go to a Lego convention. We're, that's in the plan or in the works. I'm also going to Georgia. We're going up there um, to see Christine. And um, also we're going to see how my son is doing because he, he just uh, drove from California all the way to Georgia. Um because that's where he's going to put his roots in the ground. And uh, if he needs any help, we'll be there to help him with that also. So he, he did a road trip uh, right before Christmas, and he drove 2,200 miles. The other thing we're going to do in Florida is we're going to spend a couple of days in, at Jacksonville Beach, and we're going to hang out with Krista. And uh, we're going to do whatever over there, because Nick, I don't think I've taken Nikolai to um, Jacksonville Beach or through Jacksonville. So I'm thinking we're going to road trip it through Jacksonville Beach. Does she have a channel? Does who have a channel? Chris Christine? Or do you mean Krista? Did it look like it was cooking pretty good? Yeah, yeah, I need to find out what. Linda, can you tell me whose channel you're asking about? I'll go look in just a second. Hello, Kelly. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, her time. Okay, so you'll get to watch... Um, I have to go check on a ribeye. <laughs> so while I'm checking on the ribeye, watch Nikolai and uh, Tammy So, And uh, I, we have another guest in the Zoom, but I don't know if she's going to um, turn her camera on or not. But she doesn't have to. I told everybody they didn't have to if they didn't want to. Okay, so uh, I... Like I said, I posted the link for the Motor Blockheads lot, uh, Love Block. And this this is the one, this is the six inch one I'm going to do. And when I come back from checking the roast, I'll show you part of what I'm going to do. 
I'll be right back. Linda, were you asking if I have a channel? I think Linda was asking for if Krista has a channel. Yeah. We, we, uh, we're going to meet her in Florida. When, I, when I'm there. Ah. <laughs> it's a good bit to do with that about cannabis. What? Oh, really? Bro. I'm just going. Which one did you decide to work on, Nikolai? Uh, theater. The theater? I like yeah. that one. It's, uh, because I will try to show it from when I'm done with the buildings. Cause it's, okay. It's, it's, uh, what's it called? it's uh, three ways of making the building. Uh, to, for the first hour, I'm making the first floor. Okay. Then, up theater than uh, the roof part. That'll be awesome. And for now, I'm I'm about to make a I think it was a open limo limo limousine. Oh, that would be cool. You gotta have a limo to take everybody to the theater. Yeah. Oh, and uh, talking about limo, I have a Lego of a limousine. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, nice build. Nice, cool vehicle. I could have. Uh, I think I'm, I might need several. several. All right. But uh, I, I might be ordering some several different parts, like like uh, maybe two or three more different limousines. Okay. Not that I have a. Not that I have a. Book, book for making anything. Yeah. I, I can tell you that limousine how big it is. Somewhere. I have a keyboard. <laughs> he loves building. He's always building. <laughs> I love yeah. it. That, I think this is how he's, uh, this is his way of decompressing. And so by the time he gets back to see his, his, he's clear past stress, you know, exactly. um, you know, cause they, they, they live on that boat or he lived on that boat the whole two months. So he used to be way longer than that. And, you know, it can be stressful when you're, uh, closed up with, you know, 20, a crew of 24, 25. 24 to 25, sometimes 26. Yep. And sometimes they have, uh, is that 26 count the guy that comes and watches what y'all are doing? Yeah. Back to yeah. Sometimes. So sometimes, sometimes they have people who come sit on the sail with them. To make sure that they're following the rules. That makes sense. Uh, Linda, you asked um, if I have a channel. 
I do, but I don't have much of any videos if I have any um, up right now. I tried to start a channel back in 2020 uh, when everybody was doing masks and making masks for charity. Uh, so I do have a video and it's pretty poor quality. Um, and I really, I, I didn't know what I was doing back then um, as far as video and such. So I do have a few videos up. I'm thinking about getting back into um, running a YouTube channel and actually get a good go at it. So when Katie offered this opportunity to, to get on her Zoom and go live with her, I figured it was a great opportunity to see if I thought I could handle it. <laughs> So I might have some videos coming up, uh, but I don't have much, if anything, right now. I think you're going to be just fine. A long way since 2020. Get... Yeah, the only the big the biggest thing that I think is a pain is trying to learn all this technology. Yeah, that's, I've got... that's, that's the part that I have struggled with the most. Well, I've got. My camera up in front of me, uh, in front of my windows. I've got my computer monitor that shows my Zoom status over off to my right. And then I've got a TV off to my left that is showing what's live on YouTube. Um, and then in order to see the chat, I've got to do it on my phone. So I've definitely got to figure out a better system because I'm spending a lot of time, I notice, looking one way or the other just to see what's actually on the video. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I have a monitor and a laptop and a phone. And they're all like in front of me. Well, I've got, a, I've got a good camera um, that I was going to use, but I couldn't get it set up last night to save my life. So I'm using just a, a webcam that I happened to, to have for Mandy Pandy stuff that I wasn't worried about. So. <laughs> Upper Quilter says, hi, Katie Noll, stopping in for a few minutes. Thank you for coming by. Um, I want to tell you guys something before I forget to do it. Every every second hour, which there's, well, wait, let, me, let me make sure I do the math right. Hang on a minute. Uh, 12 divided by 5. Well, yeah, I got to divide this up Come to think of it. So here's the deal. I'm going to be giving away five. $25 gift cards, and the gift cards will be for Fat Quarter Shop. So, um, I'm going to divide these uh, drawings up into so many so many hours pass by, and then I'll do the first drawing. So many hours pass by, I'll do the second drawing. And once I draw your name, if you're still in the channel, I hope, I will post my email so that you can email me and say, hey, I, I'm so-and-so. And I will make sure to get your gift card sent to you through Fat Quarter Shop. And I'll do it as an e-card. So, Katie, am I eligible to win? Yes, that includes everybody. Moderators, visitors, all of y'all. So, so every two and a half hours, I will give one away. Well, I will be here for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, this is how the uh, limousine looks like. Oh, that's amazing. I love that, Nikolai. Uh, there's a awesome. driver here and a uh, passenger here. That's sweet. Oh, and... Uh, Fridge. If you uh, if you want some ice cream, there's an ice cream in the fridge. <laughs> I've been in a limo limousine all of one time in my life. I don't think I've ever been in a limo ever. I got in a limo. I want to say it was when I was selling sewing machines, and they were carrying us from a hotel to some big event we were going to. But I think that's the only time I've ever been inside an actual limo. Is it all it's cracked up to be? 
<sighs> I don't re honestly remember enough about it. <laughs> I promise I wasn't intoxicated. <laughs> but uh, I, I think I was just nervous because I was around a lot of people I didn't know. Um, maybe they were picking us up from the airport. And there was a good four or five of us at the airport at the same time. We all flew into Chicago to go to headquarters. And I think they sent a limo to pick us up because we were the largest group uh, arriving at one time. I think everybody else ended up in like regular taxis or SUVs or whatever. But it was the shortest ride in the world. I think it was maybe 10 minutes of a ride. I, I really don't remember it being that long. Yeah. Um, Kelly, wait. Linda says to, to Tammy, Siberian wind, hope you do just be yourself. Yeah, just be yourself. I'd, I'd like to. Like I said, I, I would love to start my own channel. I just, or actually do more than just you know, hang out on other people's channels and watch them all the time. I, although I love watching you, Katie. And I watch Ian, I watch Tiffany, and I, be I watch Becca, and I watch Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. Actually watch their, I caught theirs yesterday on the replay. Yeah, I didn't have notifications turned on. Um, so I've been enjoying watching all these creators. And I'm definitely, I'm excited. I just don't typically do a lot of what everybody else is doing because I have my own project list <laughs> that is well, what you do long. what you do is you do you whatever your thing is that's what you do that's what I'm gonna have to do because I've got so I do three projects at a time I let me pull this out while we're talking about it I have got one of my three done that I was working on um, but I really don't have the room to pull this out completely, but I designed a block to go around my sister-in-law's cross-stitch blocks. Wow. Look at that. And this That's is coming beautiful. And this is coming out to be a queen size, which is what she wanted. Uh, she did these, she is probably about 10 years older than me. And she did the blocks when she was about 11 or 12 is what she said. But I designed it and I designed these super long diamond and a square units. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, I bit off more than I could chew with that. <laughs> I definitely uh, did not think through how difficult those were going to be to piece. So I went round and round and round with that. And that's one of the three projects I had going. Um, this feathered snowflake is another one. And then I have a Bonnie Hunter pattern on Ringo Lake. It's from 2017, I believe, uh, if not 2018. And I have made it, I'm making it in reds, whites, blues, and golds uh, to be a cult of valor. Nice. So the Bonnie Hunter, I am through week four and I've got I think all of her cutting is done for this one at week six I want to say either week five or week six and then everything after that is assembly into larger units so that will be done I, I have a goal to have that one done by January 24th mm -hmm. I really want it done by the 17th but so if I can get this done Maybe by t you know the end of this live, I am doing the New Year's Eve mystery with Stitch in Heaven. Huh? I'm going to be, and I'm not going to go live yet, obviously, because you know they're going to be live doing it. Uh, but I am doing the that New Year's Eve mystery that they've got, and then I'll be getting back to finishing this if I haven't finished it already, made it into a top. And then I will have my Bonnie Hunter Quilt of Valor to do. And then my next three projects will come out. <laughs> That's outstanding. Uh, Tommy, did you see Baker's live eight days ago? Was that to me? I didn't yeah. hear. Repeat yourself, babe. 
you can see Baker's live eight days ago, something that probably been thing. When when she revealed the gift. Oh, uh, she w she was uh, unboxing mail. Oh. It was part of that holiday, but she uh, unboxed mail. She may not have been there, babe. Oh, oh we've got some but you can you can always go and show everybody that same polar bear again, you know. Oh. Okay, so Kelly says my chat. Wait, let me back up for a minute. Tangle says good day, everyone. I just caught got caught up and you're talking normal speed now all right kelly says hi carla uh carla i think might be tangled this right and then kelly says my channel is always eclectic wild and crazy i just carry on with it you you get me my miss mistakes and all. just go for it tammy uh linda says i like to see people do different things not what everybody else does i agree linda Linda also says, wow, I love that and love the different sashings or borders between the blocks. I like to be different. Yep. You do you. that, And your channel is going to be, uh, you know, about you if you sh should set one up. My channel. Hi, Krista. Welcome to the group. Hey, everybody. This is Krista Klein, and she lives in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Krista. Hi. Thank you for coming. Krista, do you want to tell everybody about yourself a little bit? Um, you know, what you like to sew, things like that? Um, okay, well, uh, my name's Krista. I live in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. I actually met Katie through Cotton Cuts and our uh, puzzle mystery quilts, and I, I've been enjoying doing those for a couple of years now. Um, other than that, I just do some quilting here and there on whatever strikes my fancy. She makes some beautiful things. How are you coming along with your um temperature quilt? Oh, uh, that's still April and March up on the wall. Well, we're actually what you're seeing. I'm sorry, May. That's May. April's over here more you can't see it, but I'll get them done. Hey, yeah, whenever you want to be, sweetie. You I'm know, thinking about doing I'm thinking about doing one for 2024. Yeah, that it's it's fun. I, I mean the bit I've done, I've enjoyed. You know, I've had a rough year, so I kind of like have not spent a whole lot of time in here due to things. So <laughs> uh let's see here. Um Robin says hello. Tangle says, yep, but I answered to Tangle. Either or both are good. Okay. Diane says, hey, Krista. Hope you're finishing up that temperature quilt. It looks good. Tracy Debbie, love seeing what everyone is working on. That's where I find inspiration. And Kelly says, hello, Krista. Nice to meet you. Uh-oh, we can't hear you. Krista, we can't hear you. Okay, I'll unmute. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> Fryer. Yeah, for him. What? Oh, Lego? Fryer. That's a four liquid critter. Oh, she's wanting in here? Yeah. Well, we need, I need to make your, I'm, if you'll fix, sit and cut them, and then I will make our plate. What plate? Oh, 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 oh. Princess, you're <laughs> muted. I should have been you. Okay, there you go. Now I hear you. Okay, yeah, I, I'm not saying a whole lot. I, yeah, you were muted again for some reason. Yeah, t t talk to them if you like about what, what are you working on right now besides the temperature quilt? Um, well, today I am actually starting the, um, it's, um, hold on, what is it called? It is the um, Project Quilting Mystery Quilt that, uh, they she does every year at this time. Uh, hold on, let me find the real information for it. Yeah, you feed them, and then I'll make our plate. Yes, it's the project. Oh, I just lost it. Project quilting mystery quilt along, and it started. 
the day after Christmas and goes needs to be completed by the January 7th. I've done okay. it a couple of times, but so I really wanted to do it this time too. And actually maybe completely get it finished by the finish date. It's only supposed to be 24 inches square. So I'm hoping to do that. Be able nice. to do oh, that's a small one. That should be fun. Be doable. A doable yeah, have... goal. That's outstanding. Do you know what fabrics are you planning to use with it? Um, so I have, I'm using a blue. Find the blue. Just a regular blue. Uh-huh. Okay. And then I'm using a print. Oh, I like that. Uh, that I pulled from my stash. Okay. Sounds like it's going to be a nice looking block. Hope so. I I'm sure it will be. Um, last year's I uh, I only got the top done, but the one I did two years before that, I was able to get it completely finished and uh, be able to get it hung up, which I enjoyed. So, as Krista said earlier, she's part she she met me through the puzzle mystery of cotton cuts. So, did you sign up for a tree of life? I did. Can you tell everybody what color way you're doing? If I can remember what it's called. <laughs> um, it's the red one that much. I think it was red. red, red, red. Is it the reds and pinks? Uh, yes, I think with the yellows. It's not the pink, pink one. Okay. It's breast cancer. No, it's the one that's more reds. Um, I don't know. They, maybe they still have it on the website. Let me go look. Yeah, I'm looking. It is. It's redwood. There's reds, red there's wood. yellow, and a black and white. Are you doing the large or the small? Small. And I did order border kits this time. I like putting awesome. borders on them. Makes it more user available for me. Yeah. This will actually be my first time doing the puzzle mystery quilt. I signed up and uh, a friend of mine uh, locally wanted to do the puzzle mystery quilt. So she chose the teal set I think tranquil mist I want to say and I chose mm -hmm. chestnut that's outstanding what size are you doing Tammy uh she and I are both going to do small and okay. I I did order the we both got the oops kits and I ordered the border kits for mine okay cool so she she wanted to do the mystery quilt but she does better with help so we both signed up, and part of my Christmas gift was her paying for part of my uh, mystery quilt. So she's giving me the opportunity to participate in it, whereas I probably wouldn't have done it to begin with, because <laughs> I got so much else to go on. on. So uh, since you're first time puzzle mystery doer, every third Thursday, um, Cotton Cuts hostess a um zoom meeting and you can bring your pmq there to sew or you can just if you don't want to sew you don't have to sew nobody's it's not a structured okay. whatever you call it krista might can help me out with that we just we get to know each other yeah and uh, we sew together and if we have new people coming in that has questions us older you know us more been around for a while doing this can help experienced them. Experience, yeah, we have more experience and we are there and we'll be happy to help. So, um, okay. I'll make sure that uh, I post on the community cab with uh, make sure that you're part of the Cotton Cuts Fabric Group. Make sure you do that if you haven't done that because that'll be where you'll hear about the Zoom. But we'll also make sure that you get the word out because I'm always all of us are always letting everybody know hey you remember we have a zoom on the third thursday blah 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 you know okay. and we get we, we get the word out is that group on facebook yeah okay yeah i'm i'm on the cotton cuts facebook page yeah if you're okay. on that that's where you'll see advertisement now keep in mind um just if you can remember that it's going to be the third thursday 
start looking for the announcement. And if you don't find it or you've missed it because it, you, you notice that the group is pretty busy with every one of us posting pictures, um, ask a question inside the, the group. Say, hey, when is the Zoom for PMQ or yeah, somebody for, for the it. PMQ detectives? And one of us will definitely answer. Or you're welcome to message us, whichever you want to do. Okay. I will keep that in mind. I'll let her know. I don't know if she wants to be on camera. Well, um, well, she doesn't have, if, if she wants to join the group or join the Zoom so she can ask questions or hang out, she doesn't have to turn her video on. She can still come and join. Okay. Uh, it's not a requirement that they turn their camera on. Okay. And it's just us anyways. It's not a live or anything on YouTube. It's just a regular. Yeah, it's thing. not. Okay. But, you know, I've gotten to meet people like Katie and Diane and Tracy and some other people, and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, just getting to group with the people from all over. It's just, it's been a good time. It's been a good That's time. Fun. And we yeah. enjoy it. I enjoy it and look forward to it every month so yeah i'll definitely have to keep my eyes out for it i'll have to let her know and see if she wants to join me since we're going to do it together so we could just set it up to do it on the third thursday or we can do it before then and just come and see you know see if there's anything that we miss or whatever in the group yeah um the other thing that you might not be that you won't be aware of until it starts getting advertised <clears throat> On the tenth month, when they do the reveal, they—it's the last Friday of the month, right, Krista? For when yeah, they do uh, the yes. So on the last Friday of the month of the tenth month, when they do the reveal, the Saturday after that Friday will be a, a, a half a day or several hour mm -hmm. day Zoom where we all can sew together, putting our clues together to finish the quilt. Okay. It's the Friday of the last flu because right now, what are we doing? We're doing carnival, carnival. and it gets mailed on the last Friday, so that's when it'll be. But once yeah. with Tree of Life, like Village Green, it was the first Friday of the month. Okay. So that's whenever the reveal is. But could they time those with the release of the last clue? Okay. And I can tell you that when everybody comes to sew all their clues together, it actually motivates you to get your quilt finished or the top done that day. I did it for Piazza and I got all of mine put together except the border. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> well, I know sewing with friends always helps motivate me to, to accomplish more. Now, Diane says she's also doing Redwood. And Diane also says we get to chat with Kim, too. She often gives us information on what's coming up. Yes, she does. So there was mention about um, in Ian's live earlier when I was sitting in there, someone asked if people could buy past PMQ patterns. And he said he didn't have an answer to that. Well, we have knowledge that there is going to be a uh, quilt uh, create your quilt your way on where you can choose your colors and pass one one of one or two of the past patterns that were used for a PMQ will be offered with this. So oh, that'll cool. be how you can have access to that a particular pattern. That's awesome. He didn't know that because he doesn't, you know, we know before everybody else sometimes. <laughs> You have inside information. Yeah. That's good. You're funny, honey. Okay. I'm going to let Nikolai or one of y'all talk while I go fix his plate. Um, I don't know how to do this. Oh. Yep. I give him some. I'm 
So, Chris, how do you decide how much fabric to get for your temperature quilt? Um, I did this through um, Jaybird Quilts this year. Okay. It was my first one, and she had a basic amount per where your range of temperatures fall. Okay. And, uh, so I tried to get at least that much, if not just a little bit more. You know, I'd, right. I'd rather round up a little bit than to be really close. <laughs> Always. <laughs> you never want to run out. Right. But I did also try to keep it as fabric that I would be able to find again because these are all grunge. Okay. Not that you can tell from there, but it's, if I got out of a closer, you could see they were grunge. I like the braid design. I think it was the first one like that I've seen. Yes. We're use, it uses her, um, her Hexamore ruler. Okay. And the the sidekick okay. between the, with the different pieces. So, how long do you think it's supposed to be once you get it done? I got that written down too somewhere. Hold on. I know I've got tons of questions. <laughs> That's fine, feel free to answer. Um, so to, whatever size that you wanna make it, she had different choices um, on how you can, uh, when you finish it off, I'm gonna see if I can find it here. Um, so, I know for a fact that my temperature columns end up at greater than 72 inches because my wall is 72 by 72 and it hangs off the bottom. <laughs> um, but you know, she had, she has the fabric amount that you need. Like if you were going to do a small lap, a large lap, a queen or a king. Okay. Uh, my goal is to do a large lap, which is, she says is supposed to be 85 by 77. Oh, that is a very large lap. Yes. And, uh, if I could... But she has done she has done fabulous instructions. Uh, I've been very pleased with because I had never used any of her stuff before. And uh So I may have to put that on my to-do list. I think it's going to go for 2025 at this point, but. A lot of it has to do with the different sizes, it has to do with if you're putting sashing between the rows and okay. then if you, and then the border that you put around it. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see these. Oh, cool. So, those are the four different sizes and how she has it set up. That comes out really pretty. And uh, I could only print it on a black and white. It's much prettier when it's in color. <laughs> well, then you might actually uh, use the wrong temperatures. No, uh, no, she's got that too. <laughs> I have my uh, my little sheet that I assigned which color, which temperature range, and the colors that I was doing in um, three degree sections. I go from one hundred and one to higher, all the way down to twenty eight degrees and lower. Okay. Wow. So I got a nice little rainbow. Yeah, you do. I don't think we got up to 101 this year. I'm not really sure. So I'm a little bugged because that one purple won't get used then, but it's okay. So Katie, I'll be right back. Okay. So at 8.30, we're going to do our first drawing.
which will be 5.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, what did I do with what I brought in here? <laughs> I don't want to make a mess. Oh, there it is. So tell me what y'all are working on currently. Um, like what I'm working on here, or you want the, the chat? Chat. Okay. okay. Everybody, what they're working on. Let's see. Robin says, I asked Ian, he didn't say the name of the pattern. Okay. Kelly, I was assembling the binding for the Sudoku quilt, taking a break before I press it in half. DS, hello, Greenland. I just popped over from Ian's live stream. Good to see you too. Fallon says, back, Katie. Sorry my dad called. It's okay. No need to apologize. Giovanna says, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Tangle says, my to-do list for 2025. I love that. I think I need to start my to-do list for 25. Wow, that's pretty far in advance. <laughs> Joy says, Happy New Year. Lori says, hi, Katie and Nikolai. Jackie says, hi, Katie. Joy says, hi, Robin. Robin says, hi, Joy. Diane says, scrap management. Yeah, I need to do that, too. And Joy says, hi to me. DS, I'm piecing 25 chum dashes with sashing. And Jackie says, village green aster. Beth says, I'm about to start on a army panel to make for my husband's birthday in March. And Joy says, I'm going through my projects and organizing. Ah, oh, you guys are doing, you're doing something productive. So... Um, I'm going to be a kind of rude, and I'm going to eat in between talking to y'all, okay? Yeah. Um, the only thing I didn't think about, did you turn the camera where they went and see what you were doing? No. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't see what you're doing. Okay. I didn't know how people feel about us eating in the camera. Happy, happy, Misty says. Tangle says, I am putting the borders on a simple square Patch quilt for donation. Ah, y'all are definitely being productive. Yay. That makes me happy. Well, we're eating because we're a couple hours ahead. Yeah, we're three hours ahead at Eastern Standard Time. And I, without thinking about it, started our live at our dinner hour. So I'm going to... Try not to eat in front of you, but I'll be here because I can see what you're saying. Nina says she is working on the Bonnie Hunt mystery. Can you tell everybody what the Bonnie Hunt mystery is? Joyce says, Nico, what are you eating? I'm going to get my food too. Be right back. <laughs> it's ribeye steak. Ribeye steak. Go right there. A really big one that we dropped that we split in half. <clears throat> you have to split it in half so it's uh, quite big. And Linda says, just watching for now. Giovanni says, Giovanna. Says, bon appetit. Thank you. Joy says, it's okay to eat in front of us. It's all good. Well, I didn't know if it would offend anybody, so that's why I, I mentioned that. Where'd Krista go? I, she said she had to step away for a moment. She okay. said she'd be right back. Oh, okay. Jeanette says, I just finished repairing the jacket that was torn by the black. Oh, yeah, you were working on that yesterday. Dia says, yes, please eat. Hey, 
KN. Hi from Gainesville, Florida. Wow. Just up the road from Lake City, KM. That is definitely a possibility. Tracy Debbie says, I'm working on borders on PMQ so it can go on, go off to be quilted. Misty says, I'm eating chips and salsa. Giovanni says, I already had dinner. It's 10 p.m. Where is here, Giovanna? Denton says, yes, go ahead and eat and do not worry about us. Joyce says, that my mm -mm, off, Robin. We can't blame you today. It's Nico's turn. <laughs> Kelly says, hi, just checking in, checking my laundry and watching a bit of the World Juniors. That's hockey, by the way. KM says, yes, Tangles, yeah, we should try meeting up because we're going to be right up the road in uh, March. Italy, Giovanna says. Ah. Nice. I love Italian food. The name was supposed to be Giovanna. Yeah. Am I correct? Just a few, few, uh, few words that I can in, in Italian. Oh, and uh, Misty, I hope you don't have any screw loose with chips. But, uh, we have these here in uh, Greenland that that that's named screws. That's a chip. So, Tracy says, I just made uh, brunch, French toast. It's 1 p.m. on the West Coast. Linda says, hello, Katie, Nikolai, and everyone in the chat. Georgie says, just popped over from Ian's. Welcome, Georgie. KM says, definitely, would love to meet up in March. Okay, we'll have to uh, get up to get some information. Maybe we can meet somewhere in Ian's. I'm up for eating at um Olive Garden or something. Hey, look what Kelly said. Team Canada is beating Germany. Seventeen to nineteen year old. Happy, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Robin says, I am having homemade chicken and vegetable soup, milk and milk and white chocolate for a dessert. Andrea says, Howdy, I am here for an hour, then go to Teresa Louise live and then back to for the rest. Yep, come and go as you please. I just popped over from Ian's. Hi, Catherine. Kelly says, oops, playing junior chalk, junior, oh, I almost messed that up. <laughs> junior hockey. Giovanna says she doesn't eat a lot of Italian, Italian food, even if I love it. Too much uh, richness to it. Katie, where do you stay when you come to the States? When we come to Florida, we um, stay in Lake City. Uh, when we go to California, we um, stay at my with my daughter and her family in Hanford. Hey, the food is good. Yep. Mm. The potatoes are just great. Right. 
Katie, I completely forgot to make one of the videos for the Sudoku quilt. I just did it today. Okay. I, you'll, you'll be sharing pictures of it, though, right, Kelly? You can share them over in the group if you want to. <clears throat> Giovanna says it is I need to lose weight as I have to have both knee replaced. Ah, oh, okay. Pangle says I should start prepping for dinner. Our New Year's Eve dinner is going to be a nice piece of cod. Yum. When you were talking about catching cod, Nikolai, it reminded me of how long since I've had it. Tracy, I splurged and ordered a Juki TL-18 straight stitch only machine as an early birthday, late Christmas gift. I'm wanting to do more vinyl sewing, and my Bernina isn't liking that. Nice. Uh, Kelly says, I will do that shortly. I have a photo of the top finish. Thank you, Kelly. Um, Georgie wants to know what Krista and Tammy are working on. You want to go first, Krista, or you want me to? Go ahead. Um, I am working on this uh, star that you see behind me. It is the feathered snowflake tree skirt that uh, is a Judy Niemeyer pattern from 2012, I believe. It could have been from earlier, but my copyright on my newsprint that came with the pattern is 2012. And she did it with six fabrics and I'm doing it with four. So I've got the green, the white, uh, the cream actually has music notes snow and snowflakes on it. It's got black, green and red snowflakes. And then I'm also doing a red fabric with it. I'm not sure how well that's showing up on camera. It will show up much better once I get these pieces done. So that's what I'm working on today. Uh, we'll see if I can get it done. <laughs> so right now I'm working on uh, the Project Quilting Mystery Quilt Along. It's, I've got one block done so far. Oh, that's cool. Um, I, but behind me, what you see there is uh, a temperature quilt that's through Jaybird Quilts. That actually is May. You can't see April's also up on my wall. And I'm a little bit behind. Giovanna says the star is beautiful. Oh, thank you. You'll have to leash them. He tried to run off after whoever was shooting it off. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, in case you're wondering what we're talking about, Nikolai just took the dogs out for... Um, by, uh, for a bio break and just as they, he got outside with the dogs somebody shot off a firework and Coda wants to go and chase down the person shooting them off Kelly says where are you located in Oregon and I think I saw something about uh oh I think I missed something oh. Tracy says it's gorgeous Tammy uh, Tammy says thank you Giovanna Andrea says, awesome. And Kelly says, Tracy, I live in Canada, just east of Vancouver, BC, in the Fraser Valley. And uh, Tammy says, thank you. What am I working on? I'm eating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the plan is, Andrea, that I'll be uh, show will probably around I don't know nine o'clock my time. I will start on the uh, no wait we can't at nine o'clock. It'll have to be at nine thirty. Eight thirty. No, fireworks start at nine o'clock here. Yeah. I'm talking about the love block. So I'll start the block probably at ten o'clock our time. The love block. I'll be doing that, and I'll also be working on my um, PMQs. I have a carnival, bomb pop, along with um, hot air balloon. And I'm also trying to catch up with my village green, which is begonia. And Giovanna says, poor dogs tonight. Yep, they're going to bark tonight. That's why I told everybody ahead of time. If you start hearing barking, there's nothing we can do about it. I'm just not going to holler at my dogs. If they're not so. Well, that was out there. You just got to keep him from running off after whoever it was. Well, the ones are fired, they're far away. Our German Shepherd thinks he needs to go hunt down where the fireworks are being shot off at. Kelly says, oh, it's only 1 p.m. here, too. Nothing wrong with prepping early and then sewing until the last minute. That's right. Kelly says, Tracy W., is that sort of in the middle of Oregon? Ages ago, I had family in Grand Pass, Grant's Pass. Giovanni says, they suffer a lot with the noise. Yes, they do. Has anyone ever tried those thunder shirts for dogs during fireworks? I haven't. Yes. Yes, my dog had one. If I got it on her early enough, then it, she wasn't as freaked out. She wasn't happy, but she wasn't a complete mess. If I did not get it on her early enough, then it didn't matter because she would just been a complete mess. I have not smelled them. Yeah, they can smell the sulfur. I haven't ever put the thunder shirt on my my dog, um, but I exposed him to fireworks when he was six months old. Uh, just took him with me to go watch fireworks and just reinforced, hey, you know, calm down and settle. And as long as he knows that it's just fireworks and not somebody banging on the door or something like that, he doesn't he doesn't mind them one bit. That's good. Ours, ours barks at them. <laughs> well, Paladin, my boy, will bark at them if he thinks it's somebody knocking on the door. You are not getting into the treats. Not yet. Babe, we cover mine up, too. I'm full. Yeah, for midnight snack, so cover it up. That was yummy. Nothing better than a ribeye steak grilled. Okay, let me give this to you. All right. I need more to put it. Got it. Okay. All right. Now I can give you all my attention again. Um. So while I'm sitting here talking to y'all, I've been um. Wait, let me show you the front side first. Okay, front looks like that. This is for that Moto Blockheads Love Block. And then I fold them all along the lines, and on the back, I draw the lines. And people, I'm sure you're going to be like, well, that's an extra step. Because I, how do I put this properly? I'm a bit challenged at times, and it's very easy for me to, to put some because if I don't do it by marking the numbers on the back as well, then I might start at one end and work my way across. And a lot of these you can't do that. Just start at one end and go the other way. Some of these you have to start right in the middle of the block. So that's one of the reasons I draw the line. The other reason is 
when I'm laying my fabric on this side, I can see where the seam line is. Um, I don't have access to a light box. They don't sell those kind of things over here. So this is my, my solution to a problem. There's a lot of people who do that, Katie. It's a really good idea. Yeah, it, I think it works pretty good for me. Right, yeah. Um, Mars, Mars. Yeah, let's do Mars. Those are easy. Giovanna says, I don't have a dog anymore. Lost mine in May this year. I'm so sorry, Giovanna. Aww. Tracy says, yes, middle as far as north and south. Grant's path is about three and a half hours south. Kelly says, we got fairs in late November 2020. He could care less about fireworks. Now, the vacuum, on the other hand, Mommy, I will save you from the noisy thing. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, Tangle says, Giovanna, I am so sorry. Pets are family members. Gentle hugs. Alma Tuba, Tubin is from, lives in Titusville, Florida. Wow. Uh, Alma, I used to live in Christmas, Florida. What do you think about that? Because I know you know where that's at. I know where that's at. Huh? I know where that's at. Yeah, I lived there for two years. I was, uh, I think I we moved there when I was 10. Um, Andrea says, I just adopted a new fur baby today. She's half pit, not sure what the other half is, but she's so sweet. I do not know how she's going to react to fireworks. Joy T says, I wish I knew how to cook ribeye. I'm eating snow crabs. I've been, I I cook them on the grill, Joy. That's my mainstay for cooking ribeye. Tracy says, helps me keep my colors in the right spot. Yes. Andrea says, my daughter just gave me a new light box that she found at a flea market. It used to be an x-ray reader. Wow, that's so cool. Alma says, wow, that's cool. Tracy says, I purchased an inexpensive light box off Amazon. Works for what I need. Yeah, you know, if I could buy one from Amazon that shipped to Greenland, I would do that. Kelly says, I'm going to head out now. Bye, everyone. I'm going to go press binding. Okay, Kelly, see you later. Thank you for Kelly. coming. Later, Kelly. You're not getting this ice cream. It's got chocolate in it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's over here begging. Babe, yeah. do you still have that pair of paper scissors? What? Paper scissors. Do you still have it over there? You will you I need them. I can't. Throw them out. Oh. <laughs> there you go how do you know you live with the sewer you have specific fat scissors for non-fabric items yep i told him that he would make me feisty if he used my other scissors for paper yeah marty knows that too my husband knows if if he touches my fabric scissors that uh, he will not have access to Netflix or any of his streaming services for a while. <laughs> it's very effective. Mm -hmm. Joy T says she has friends in Titusville. People use the light box for their paper piecing, Alma. Katie, they make them make the light boards for people doing diamond painting. I wonder if that would be something that you'd be able to order and get shipped to Greenland. What did you call it again? They're uh, light boards for use with diamond painting. Hmm. I know I've got one that's like an A4 size. Uh -huh. So it's not super big, but that might be 
something that, that they might ship to Greenland. That's interesting. I use one when I diamond paint. I don't have a light box specifically for quilting, so but I do have that. So I wonder if it could just be marketed differently. It could be. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to tell you guys that we have someone sitting in our Zoom, but you can't see her. Her name is Denise. And she is working on a Friendship Star rainbow color kit by the Block Party Quilt Company. She's more of an observant than a participant. Well, welcome, Denise. I forgot to mention that um, she's still here. Excuse me. I can't believe I just did that on the video. Human, your body has to be taken care of even when you're in front of a video. <clears throat> okay. Now, Giovanna's anyway, that's what I was suggestion. doing. Say that again, Tammy. Giovanna's got a good suggestion. Um, Katie, you could make one with a glass of a picture frame and a cardboard box the same size. Then you put LED lights in the box. That is actually a great idea. Then you can make uh, it any Jordan. size you wanted. Yeah, and I have all those items. Joy says, Katie, is Nora afraid? No. She does the same thing Coda does. Barks and wants to run down the road. After them. This, 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 this particular Dotson, she is not afraid of anything. And she's built like a little tank. And um she thinks she's she thinks she's big like Coda. She she just is. She doesn't get all shaky um from but you know, um I think a lot of it has to do with Coda, the reason she isn't afraid. And secondly, because we've gone through what two or three years now rock blowing. Babe. Rock, rock, rock blowing, yeah. About three years now. Two. Two. So for the last two years, they've been blowing up rock right up the road from where we live. And um, when they blow up rock, you hear this siren that goes off this warning everybody. Rock is, a, uh, they're about to use explosives. And the siren will be uh, used and then it'll stop for a second and then redo it again. And over time, the dogs have learned to associate the siren sound with the rocks blowing up. So they uh, as soon as they hear the siren, they just start barking. It's, it's funny. But uh, I got her from Russia. She came from a, a, um, a really good bloodline that's there, but we want to get another one, but... We're not going to, we're going to have to find a breeder someplace else, I guess, because I just, I can't bring myself to put money into the war machine there. And I really like the breeder. She's really nice. And it's sad that we have to penalize the people because of their leadership. You guys end up hearing squeaky toys in the distance. My door is open, so my dog is playing with, of course, a squeaky toy. Yeah, I hear it, but it's okay. It's all good. You know, we're, we have life going on around us, and, you know, this is a live. It's a, a celebration, and I'm not going to worry about anybody's noise. And they may not even hear it. Um, I've got the Zoom set to um, filter background noise, so it may filter most of it out. Can you guys hear him moving his Legos around? We'll see how good the Zoom is. 
I haven't been hearing him with his Legos. I've been wondering if everybody hears my sewing machine when I'm sewing. Yeah, I haven't heard your machine. Oh, okay, good. So I've got my settings set correctly. <laughs> Engel says, hi, Denise. I often feel like I want to just observe, but but then I just have to comment. <laughs> Jeanette says, my light box is a glass top coffee table. Down, downside is sitting on the floor to use it. Oh. Giovanna says, don't penalize the people for what a bad person is doing. Yeah, that's the downsize downside to this kind of stuff and Andrea says she doesn't hear Lego noise see so it, the settings are working Yay. I know I talked to the breeder I don't know a year ago and asked um, whether she was still able to sell puppies outside of Russia and she said that she could sell the puppies but anyone who wanted to register them they can't currently because of the restrictions that's on them. Oh. So there's that part, which registering her really doesn't matter to me. I just want the bloodline. That's all. You know, the the paperwork showing where she came from. Yeah. But I, I, in fact, she asked me why I didn't register Nora, and I thought she was registered through the breeder, but apparently I was supposed to do that. I said, well, I didn't. I didn't think of, I didn't know that I was supposed to do it. I thought you did. No, you're supposed to do that part. I'm like, oh, well, she says, does it really matter? I said, no, I just wanted the bloodline so I could see where she come from. I said, that's the only reason I asked for a pedigree. Because buying puppies, buying dots and standard dots, which comes from a working uh, show line. That's why I tried this bloodline out because it came from a working bloodline. And um, she shows her dogs also. And um, and she, I had talked to her about her parents. I said, do either parents shake when they get upset or if they're scared? She says, no. Why do you ask? And I explained it to her. She says, no, my standard Dotsons don't do that. I, and I said, okay. So we had her put, put us on a waiting list. And we were gifted with Nora. And... Um, yeah, she's 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 a feisty little thing. She's not little though. She's, <laughs> she weighs all of about would be uh, about thirteen kilos probably. That's about twenty three pounds, honey. Twenty three pounds. Twenty three, twenty four pounds. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so she's she's a big girl. He nearly killed me last night, though. Hangle says, however, if people allow their leadership to go off the rails without pulling them back on track, maybe they need incentive. Yeah, but how do you how do you pull back a dictator? Oh, no. And we probably should not be talking about this. Hey, please. Oh. Somebody might get upset. Okay, what time is it now? It is 7.26. How far from Russia are you? I live in Greenland, uh, snarky old lady. One kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Now, so she weighs 13 kilos. That is more like 26 pounds and something. 27 pounds, yeah. Hi, Teresa Louise. How are you yes, doing? Good. I you were doing a live. Jesus. What is it, Coda? Yeah. Daddy had to bring you in because they were shooting off fireworks. Next time I take the log, Yeah, just put them on the leash and then you'll have to worry about them running off. Oh! Waiting room. Okay, hold on. Wait, how do I let... Custom live showing. Oh, 
Target nearly killed me. That's the best thing. You know, me. You. Somebody's trying to get into the um, Zoom because I gave her the link and it says, she says she's in the waiting room, but I don't know what the waiting room is. Teresa, is that from the link I gave you last night? Uh, could be that if, if you have sent it to a Facebook page, uh, Messenger, you have to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you have to go through something? No, it's more like a re uh, reboot, not, not reboot, you look for it. Refresh the page. Um, <clears throat> Teresa, refresh your page and see what happens. Um, wait, so, wait, 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 wait. I missed something here. Andrea says, Teresa, are you still going live in a half an hour? She says, yes. Maybe I should not say much about leadership since I live in the U.S. No, I, that's not what I'm saying, Tangle. Not at all. Because, yeah. But I know that some people get upset about different things. And I don't want to anybody to leave because we're talking about politics or something else. How did you get there? Did somebody fly? Oh, how did I get her? Oh, okay. Here's what happened. When she was ready to fly, because you're, the European Union has a rule about puppies have to be 20 weeks old before they're even allowed to fly. So um, she has a, a, a friend who happens to be a... Um, they don't call them that anymore. Flight attendant. She's a flight attendant. And she happened to be flying from Russia to Denmark. So she she um, took my puppy with her on that flight. And I flew from Greenland to Den to Copenhagen and met her at the airport and got Nora. And that's how we did it. Yeah, I understand, Joy. I'm trying to watch her weight. It's really hard. She's, she's probably at least four or five kilos overweight. No, not 10 pounds. She's more like... She probably could use about, she needs to be around 22 kilos instead of 26. So, um, hang on a minute. Teresa, I'm going to resend you that link, okay? In your um, messenger. I don't know why she didn't automatically could join. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. I don't know. Things things are weird. Here comes more fireworks. Okay, where's Teresa going to run? <laughs> hey. Teresa, go click, uh, go join on the one I just sent to you. Maybe I sent you a wrong one yesterday. That's possible. Knowing me, and I was tired. Knowing me, me knowing me. you. Uh huh. <laughs> There she is. All right. That's what it was. I gave her the wrong darn link. Oops. Hi, Teresa. No one me, and I was tired. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Is it Zoom? Yes, my... came into Zoom. Okay, that one worked. <laughs> yeah, you have to, to mute your um, browser. Yeah, I did. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey Teresa. everybody. Look who's here. Teresa's here. Hi, Teresa. Hello. How's everyone doing? Good. So, Hi. Teresa, you want to tell it? Tell everybody in the chat who you are and about your channel and everything. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I'm Teresa Louise. I quilt too. I have a YouTube channel. Um. It's about quilting and 
stitching and crafts and all the all the artsy crafty stuff. <laughs> and I thought I would just pop in for a few minutes and say hello. Um, I go live today. I normally go live on Sundays at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, so I thought if I'm still up to it, once my live is done, I'll probably come back, Katie, and visit for a little while. Yeah, that's so. fine. Um, there's 12 hours for people to come and go as they want. So um, I don't have a set time. I want everybody to be here. Y'all, it's to, just to have fun and give back. Uh, all of y'all have helped make my channel grow. And, you know, this was my way of giving back. And I don't expect everybody to stay the whole 12 hours. So just come and go as you want. That's all I care about. Okay, sounds good. And at uh, I think at nine at what did I say ten ten o'clock. If the fireworks start at, nine I'm thinking of when I want to start this love block because we're going to do a drawing at eight o'clock, eight thirty. No, eight thirty. You know what? We'll start on the love block around eight eight o'clock. Hopefully, most. There'll be enough people in here who will want to do it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you. Someone asked me about paper piecing. And I made the comment that I have done a little bit of paper piecing. And someone says, well, why don't you do a paper piecing live? And I do my paper piecing a little bit different. But it's similar, of course, to everybody. But um, I... Thought, well, let's do the love block by Moda Blockheads 3. It's a free block, and I'll post the link again for those, anyone that might be interested in it. And, um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how I do it. You, and all you need is uh, a small amount of background and scraps of fabric that you have laying around. And this is what we're going to make. And I'm going to make the six inch one. Now you have a choice of making, if you want to participate, the pattern has four inch, six inch, eight inch, and 12 inch. So whatever you're comfortable with, if you want to learn how to make it, or if you want to make it with us is what I mean. Um, <laughs> I'll post the link where you can go download it and it's free. So yeah, we're gonna have a drawing. We're having five drawings tonight. Every two and a half hours, I'll do a drawing. And you're going to get a $25 gift card from Back Water Shop. That means everybody. Cool. Um, speaking of everybody, Denise, um, when I get right before I get ready to do the drawing, can you use a separate browser and join the channel? Since you're not, I can't see you. Right, well, wait, let me. Denise, do you have a browser up with the channel stuff on it? Where you can type things in the channel? I do. <laughs> I knew all y'all did, but I wasn't sure about her. I didn't think to ask her that. Well, she would have to if she's seeing everything. Okay, anyway, you got to be in the channel to be in the drawing. Put it that away. So make sure you're there when I'm doing it. You mean you have to be here live in the chat? Mm -hmm. In the chat. Why you're live today? Well, um, once, okay, so every two and a half hours, I'm going to be posting a, a thing that you have to type in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, if you're not in here and I pull your name, then I not sh I know how to get a call and contact with you. But if it's somebody I don't personally know, then I wouldn't know how to contact them. Right. So it would be good. But there's five drawings. It'll be eight thirty. Be here eight thirty. Be nine thirty. Ten thirty. So it's every two and a half hours. Okay. 
Uh, let me post a link in the channel for the uh, motor blockheads before I forget to do that. Okay. Uh, do you I don't know how to... Hey, uh, Teresa, is yeah. there a way to set the bot so that they don't have to keep repeat, repeat putting in or no? I have no idea, Katie. I've never used the bot to do a giveaway. Okay, because that's what I'm using is the night bot to do that. Yeah, I don't know. I could look and see if I can see anything, but... Okay. Because um, I'm still learning. I don't know all of this yet. You want to hear something really funny? Well, it's not funny. It's aggravating, actually. I have the night bot on my other laptop. But I can't figure out how to get it to sync up with my Greenland quilter on my new laptop. Because I can't remember how I synced it up on my other laptop. You have to put a uh, Nightbot in as moderator. Okay. Um, so you go to your your studio mm -hmm. and um under settings and then um Somewhere in there, wherever your moderators, you'll find it. And um, I think the Nightbot has a a link for you to use, and that's the one that you put in to the moderator section. Oh, so I have to redo that on the new laptop, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, you shouldn't have to. It should be in your settings already. Well, um, I run my Greenland Quilter stuff over on my Advest router browser, so it didn't carry all of my stuff from my other laptop over to this one, but my Google Chrome did. So I don't know why the Advest didn't. So that's why I'm well, having difficulties syncing the darn bot with this one. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that wherever you sign on, whatever you whatever device you sign on onto your YouTube account, mm -hmm. all of your settings should be there. It shouldn't matter what device you're on. Okay. All right. Then I'll look yeah. on that. It doesn't go on, on the device uh, software or, you know, in the memory card, it doesn't go there. It's, it's on YouTube. Okay. So, okay. So it should be there. As long as you're signed in to whatever uh, whatever your YouTube channel is, mm -hmm. then you should have all those settings already. Okay. So I know that for whatever reason, every now and again, I have to um, put the link from Nightbot back in as moderator. I don't know how he gets kicked out. But That's interesting. Yeah, uh, or sometimes if your Nightbot's not working, you have to mm -hmm. go sign on to Nightbot and make sure that it, you know, has your channel name in there so it knows where it's going. You know uh, what? My Nightbot is not in there. On my wait, no, it's under standard moderators. That's where it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, that should work. No, I don't know why it's not working now. That's strange. Maybe maybe it has to be I don't know. Because you know, my night bot hasn't been working for the last couple of lives and I can't figure out why. So maybe it has to have more permissions than the standard moderator. Oh, okay. So I'll have to investigate that after this after this long live. So I yeah. have my other laptop up and running and I can see the chat on the bot actually, which is funny. And um, I can just uh, tell it to start the giveaway at the, the allotted time. Right. The settings are in sync with all the devices, Giovanna says. Right. Okay, something. it must be something I'm doing wrong then. Wait, something... Diane, something somebody said Diane's finding funny. What was it? Yes, I promised myself no new fabric until 
I use everything I got. <laughs> oh, now I know what Diane's laughing at. <laughs> She's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw that earlier too. I was laughing. I'm thinking, boy, I'll never get to buy any more fabric if I do that. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Okay, so um, while we're talking, this is what the back of my little paper piece looks like. I have drawn the lines on there. They look just like the front, only they're opposite. And I've marked the, the the way I'm supposed to do them. This keeps me from making big mistakes. And it also, because when I, I can see the line, you know, when I'm laying the fabric on top of the seam allowance, I'll know where to put it because I can't see through the paper. Okay. No digital anything on my phone. Have been hacked last year, so I blocked everything. So I have to pass on the drawings. Okay, Robin. Um, Robin, uh, that's not going to make a difference for what Katie is doing, I don't think. So no. when, when Katie gives you the word to put into the chat for the drawing, just put that word in and her program, uh, Nightbot, picks up those words from her from this chat and then that's how she does the drawing so yeah that's all you that's all you got to do robin is just when when katie gives you that uh word then that's what you type into the chat and then what i'll do it should uh, pick up where uh Teresa left off if your name is drawn then i will post my email and you have to email me saying hey i was one of the winners and then i will do my part to get the card to you and that'll all happen through an email not through a live uh i won't be giving your information uh, across the chat that's not how this works because people need to be able to keep private right Teresa? right yeah nobody wants to put their email in the chat if you're you know private like where mine, I could put mine in there because mine is like for YouTube, for for people on YouTube. So yeah, it's not not my private email. Yeah, this email I'm using is for this channel also, not my personal ones. Um, Alfonso says, Alfonso, sorry, Katie, I heard that you get 24 hours of darkness in the winter. If uh, I live north of the Arctic Circle, that would be a yes. But we live 60 degrees north, and that is south of the Arctic Circle. So we actually get around 22 hours of darkness for, I don't know what, how long, babe? Maybe a month? Probably about a month. We'll start seeing the, um, the nighttime getting shorter sometime around mid-January. I'll start seeing a difference. So we, our weather, or the way the light works here is a bit different. In, in relationship to where the Arctic Circle lays. Because Nuuk, which is the capital of Greenland, is also south of the Arctic Circle. What's their degree, babe? You know? Six, okay. So Nuuk is 64 degrees north. So they're, all, they're closer to the Arctic Circle than we are. So maybe their hours are not as short or longer. Okay. Or the same? Okay. If you use a pattern make making pattern, you will see through it as yeah, I forgot to print it on some. Sorry. <laughs> I only had a little bit of it and I'm using it for my sugary do. Robin, well dang, I guess you don't have to enter the giveaway. I'll she what did she did I miss something? Well, um, Robin said she does. She closed her email and her Facebook and her messenger. So I just said, well, dang, I guess you don't have to enter the giveaway unless you figure out something with Katie. You know, like if she, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you would do it. Yeah, because that, well, the gift card could be mailed to her, I guess. I mean, you can, there's two ways of buying their gift card, but I still would need to get the information from her somehow. Right. And I'm sure she don't want to put it in YouTube. Right. Well, I so. don't know how she how I would get that information. 
No, me neither. Okay. And you don't want to put so, your phone number in the chat, so <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, who's going to call international? I don't want to put my um, California phone number in there. Because I do have one. And I, I don't, I only turn it on when I have to call the U.S. I only have it because of my bank in Florida. It has to have a, a U.S. phone number on it. So I have, I use Google Fi for that. Katie, I made five raged mug rugs with the four inch love block and I love them. I posted on your Facebook. All right. Yay. Hey, you guys, don't forget to post what you're working on in the Greenland Quilter group. I think I can use my Zoom to share my um, desktop so I can sh show everybody what everybody's been working on. And I can do that later tonight. Maybe we'll do it uh, uh, about an hour before uh, New Year's my time. WhatsApp is free. Yeah. Um, but you can't use WhatsApp for a bank account. They don't, yeah, they don't do that. I'm going to stop using mine for obvious reasons. Well, I have a working WhatsApp because that's how I talk to Karen. Mm -hmm. But um, I can actually call the United States with my, oh my goodness, I hadn't even started on this yet? Interesting. Um, I can actually use our phone, our uh, Greenland phone number to call the United States. And when I'm in the United States, I can call home if I want to, because we have a special plan um, to yeah, Deuces. And Deuces has a special something going on between them and the United States. So we don't have to pay this exorbitant high price to call long distance to the United States. And I can sit on my phone all day talking to one of my kids and it not cost me anything. We have a agreement. Yep. We will meet some kind of Roman agreement. The Abana says she doesn't have a bank account. Wow. You're one of the few that doesn't. I used to, I didn't, I didn't like using banks for the longest time either, but now we're forced to. So you can't, can't not pay bills without one. Not here anyway. Okay, so while I'm just at a, about, uh, I think after we do the drawing, I will start the love block. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you what we were working on yesterday that we're getting closer to finishing. This is the little quilt pattern that I cooked up in my brain that uh, I've been doing for the last three Saturdays that I've been sharing with everybody. Make sure I have it. So this part of it's done. It's six rows by seven. It has six blocks per each row. I used a whole charm pack. Make, I made 42 blocks. Uh, I used uh, one inch sashings in between the blocks as, you know, as part of the block. And then I used two inch sashing in between each four and a half inch block because I uh, trimmed them down to four and a half. And so this is where I am on it. And now all I got to do is put sashing around it. And then we will be doing that next Saturday. And then I'm going to decide on what I want to use as a border to go around that. That's very pretty, Katie. I love those colors. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. It came out really great. nice. I mean, I'm really happy with it. And I'll show you what uh, charm pack I used on it. Hmm. 
Well, I thought I was going to show you the charm pack. I seem to have misplaced it. Oh, when I find it, I'll show it to you guys. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I, this was probably from, a, I don't know which year. See if there's a copyright date on the back of this thing. It says 2019. So um, this is a Riley Blake Flutter and Shine. That's what I used as the charm pack. Wait a minute. I had two of them. And they probably they're probably part of a so sampler box more than likely. And that's what I use for this little pattern. Hey M, very pretty Katie. I'm cutting borders borders finishing Christmas quilt. Nice to have company. All right. Uh Nancy says pretty. Giovanna says that's cute. Beverly says pretty. Hi, Beverly. Uh, Alfonso says I have Google Voice number, which I use to call back home to New Mexico when I'm traveling in Mexico to save the long distance charges when you call over Voice IP. Okay. Well, I don't know how to do that. Uh, DS. It was fun to hang out. Gotta go. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye, DS. Uh, Giovanna. Okay, I'm caught up now. All right, so let me see. I think what I want to work on for right now until 8.30 when I do the drawing is I'm going to work on my bomb pot EMQ. How's that sound to everybody? Either the that or the... Let me see which one i got sitting out right now. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Babe, I need to put my hand in there. I forgot to do that. Yeah, he would be laying on the floor. I need to make a spot where he can lay. Great. Right. Okay. okay. So here's my bum pot, in case nobody's ever seen, doesn't know the colorway. That's the red, white, blue one, right? Yes. Uh, the other one that I'm doing, let me find the uh, card for it. I'm doing hot air balloon also. Hot air balloon? Yeah. Like this? Ah. You are so funny. My funny man. Ooh. Oh. Uh. Where is my color card? Uh oh. Not in here. See if I put it somewhere. I feel so disorganized because I'm not in my sewing room. Do you have a date yet, Katie, on when they're coming to to do the repairs for you? Nope. Oh goodness. They are really dragging their butts. Um, Katie, I gotta run, get ready for my life. So I'll catch up with you later. Okay. Okay, and I will probably come jump in for a few minutes in a little bit too. Okay. But I, I won't leave mine. I'll just bring yours up on a browser. All righty. Sounds good. See okay. you all later. Okay. okay Katie, did you catch the Cotton Cuts video on Spirit? Not yet. I'll do it tonight later. Do you ever get to see Northern Lights during the cold winter months? That would be a yes. And we've had a lot. Quite a, I've managed to get a lot of pictures this year. Nancy, who are you asking? 
about Messenger? Who was that directed at? And Melissa says, Clue 6? No, this is Clue <laughs> 1, because I skipped the first two. I skipped it because I was doing a show with um, Sean on one of his uh, Saturday so long. Oh, yeah. See, I want to show you guys something. I had already started working on my... Yep, I hear it. On it. So I, when I'm doing the PMQs, I try to... Um, what do they call this... Chain stitching. Huh? Chain stitching. Chain stitching, yeah. So I like to do that a lot. If I can do it with my PMQs, I'll do that. And I just make sure I don't um, cut them apart until I know I'm going to put them in the order that I did them in. That way I don't get foozled. Okay. This is what the instructions look like. And then on the back, it tells you what to do. <laughs> okay, so let's get these cut apart in the order I get them in. I tell you, I'm going to get tired of fireworks pretty soon. It's weird how it, uh, the sound bounces off the glass of the windows of our, our windows because we have really large windows. And it, the sound that bounces off of it makes it sound weird. So after a while, your nerves are like, okay, I've had enough of listening to this now. This is my first New Year's in Wyoming, and I don't know what the city does for New Year's, so I don't know if I'll have local fireworks. You know, I don't remember Florida doing fireworks for New Year's. What? Not that I recall. It was only for the 4th of July. 4th of July, New Year's. Your football team wins. Um, well, that has that started in the last 12 years or something? Since I've lived here at the beach, there's been a lot of fireworks throughout the... Well, maybe that's a Jacksonville thing, because Lake City didn't do that. It, it could be a beach thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, at the 4th of July, there's the city does fireworks, and then everybody else does fireworks. And if you go to the beach, you have to be careful because people will put their fireworks off right next to you. And they don't care because. Yeah, I get that. People so don't, I don't care. go to the beach on, on 4th of July anymore. Yeah, I understand that. I wouldn't either. I've been to, I went to Huguenot Beach to watch fireworks one time mm -hmm. with my kids. But outside of that, I really haven't gone anywhere where I was right close enough to people who were shooting fireworks and drinking at the same time. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay. Some people are started some fireworks without waiting for the It's not nine o'clock yet. Nope. They say eight o'clock is still the oh. oh so we might get a messed up fireworks at does that mean they're going to shoot them off at 11 then? I have no idea if it's coming. They say, that's, the reason for that is, is since we didn't go back with, to our wintertime class, it goofed up to the back. I still think. got me goofed up. But mostly because they have to do with the United States time. Yeah. 
the Greenland government reason was that they would have one extra hour for the uh, European uh, business partner, blah, blah, blah. I think it was stupid. I don't even know how the benefits are. An extra hour? Yeah. yeah. Except that we can call them sooner, I guess. Wow, this iron is steaming on my. There must have been something on my. I mean, ironing station. Here? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Can y'all hear the fireworks? I don't think so. If nothing else, if I'm just hearing that, that weird sound the glass makes. I don't hear anything. And that means that Zoom is doing its job. Georgie says, I'm popping over Teresa's. Be back soon. Okay, see you later. Got to go give her some hours, which reminds me, I need to bring a browser up to give her some. She needs some watch hours, so I'm going to go pop onto my Google Chrome and log on to her live and just mute it. Because I had Ian on mute, too, so I don't even know if he's still live or not. Nope, he's off. Okay. Get ready for it. It's Teresa. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Had to go with the puppy. <laughs> okay. Gage is back. A friend. Gage is back. <clears throat> what do you want, girl? How long did they get to do all their business when they went out? Okay. You know what we need to do? Either I need to do it or you do. Take them out on the leash and let them get their stuff done before the big noise starts. Okay. Go to Shishu. Go Shishu. Shishu. Okay, they're going out the door to do their business. Let me know if you need help. Oh, he came back in here, didn't he? Shishu. Go on. Shishu. Shishu. Okay, dogs are out the door. What's up, Squirrely? She's shaking. Oh my goodness, I hate fireworks. They are terrible for veterans, too. Yeah, I agree. Well, I am back and forth on Katie and you, but trying to win a gift card. <laughs> Melissa, he is off. Giovanna says, I will be back later. I have to call my sister in Canada. I'm popping over to Teresa's. 
I'm not a firework fan anymore. Um, I saw fireworks stand in Lake City yesterday. Did you, KM? Uh, let's see. Alfonso asked another question. Katie, how far are you from Santa's workshop? How do you tell if you're going north or south when you are at the top of the North Pole? That is a really good question, Alfonso. I couldn't tell you. I can't answer that. Um, there's an interesting thing about living here in um, Greenland. When I lived in Florida almost my whole life, so I could tell you what time of the day it was based on where the sun is. However, living in South or living in Greenland, the sun moves in a circle. At a, like in the summer months, you'll see the sun sitting at about a, a 45 degree angle. And then it, it's lower in the winter months when it does come out. It only comes out for a couple hours in the winter month and then you don't see it anymore, which is hidden by the mountains most usually. And uh, But could I tell you which way was north, south, east, or west? I can't. Now, I, I happen to know that the back corner of our house faces the north. And the only reason I know that is because when we get what is called a phone wind, the Inuits call it the snow eater. It is a nor it's basically like a nor'easter, only ten times worse, and it lasts for days. And it literally will move snow or or uh, make snow disappear completely. Joyce says I bounce between you, Katie, and Ian, and now between Katie and Teresa. Hey, spread the love. Robin says, fireworks stands are everywhere from the villages to Ocala. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I don't know when New Year's became a fireworks thing. Other than the one that, you know, when they dropped the ball in New York. Or maybe we just, maybe my family just never participated in it. I don't know. It's strange. I'm going, I'm going over here to press these blocks that I've already sewn. So give me, I can still see the chat so I can answer your questions though. Did they do it? Yep, she did. What about him? He just peed. Well, at least they've done that. Mm -hmm. She'll be letting us know at midnight she's got to go back out and of course the fireworks will be going off when that happens. Mm -hmm. Meg, keep me reminded of when we get close to 8.30. Nineteen minutes. Nineteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll do our first drawing for a twenty-five dollar fat quarter shop gift card. No. Yeah, no. There might not be. There might not be. Wait a minute. Is it eight o'clock now? Yeah. Yeah. Eight, 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 eight eleven. Where you're at? Oh, I'm confused because I'm hearing fireworks stop when they're not supposed to be going off. Just do it anyway. Because it's a stone. No, I I was gonna we were gonna go out with the the phone so they could see the fireworks at nine o'clock. But they might not be fireworks if people are shooting them off too soon. Well people some people just can't just they can't wait. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Yeah, hurry up and experience the moment. And then it's all over with. So I'm pressing along over here. Is Diane still in the channel? I know she said she was uh, uh, organizing her straps. Diane always has scraps. Yep. She has very generous friends. You know what Nikolai's going to be doing after he finishes um, making the two things he's making for during the live? He's going to be uh, taking apart his... Um, Another new falcon. Yep. He's going, and then he's going to... Um, 
inventory it to see what pieces are missing that are not on the Millennium Falcon. Uh, I can do that when I get a five hundred. We're talking about five thousand seven seven hundred five thousand four hundred seven on pieces. Oh, was it in the sewing room? Yeah, it was sitting right in front of the darn window on the cutting table. Oh man! Oh, and when the window shattered, part of the window fell on top of it. That's horrible. Sorry. There's big chunk there, and now after he moved it yesterday, because he was going to try taking it apart last night, and then when he moved it to have a look underneath it, he saw glass all over that uh, towel that he's got on the dining table, and he's like, "I'm going to have to do this in the sewing room because he didn't want to migrate glass out here." No, definitely not. Yeah. So while he had it off the cutting table, I could see by the window, and you can see what knocked off the back half, back quarter of the Millennium um, Falcon. It was a big chunk of uh, glass, a big piece of glass. Do y'all have snow right out your window? No, we have. Uh, um, his cousin came over and and uh, screwed a plywood over the window. Well, I'm saying outside because I wonder if anything flew outside because you said all that wind was blowing in and blowing things around. It, it did. Um, I have, I had, I was working on my bomb pop, um, number five, no, number uh -huh. four, and and I was also working on my hot air balloon number two, and uh, number two is completely missing in action. I can't find it. Oh, and gosh. number number three. No, number five, I'm sorry. Whichever number. <laughs> it's missing half of it. Maybe they're the same place as his Millennium Falcon, Falcon pieces were. Oh, Off the window. Because it was all sitting, I, I, you know, you don't think not to leave yourself sitting on your cutting board. Or yeah. cutting table. And that, I'm pretty sure... A lot went out the window because there was a lot of stuff sitting up there to begin with. I had fabric sitting up there that I was going to use. I had some other stuff cut and ready for sewing that was sitting up there. So I'll, I I won't know until I actually start looking. Every time I walk in there, I turn around and walk back out again. I just I can't, you. I can't stand it that that's happened. All because of one person. I uh, when uh, Harmer Green came, I asked Nikolai to ask them if if it would be cheaper for them to just uh, close the window up and turn it into the rest of the wall, since they're going to have to replace the uh, siding on the outside. Because I didn't know at the time that the siding outside had been punctured. But it had, and it, it had damaged not just the window, to the frame. You know, how do you have a window that has a frame on it, right? Uh -huh. um, and you set that whole window inside a, a frame that's been framed within the wall. So not only did it damage the, the window itself and its frame, but it also damaged the framing that went around the window to hold the window in place. So that whole thing has to be fixed. Katie, I was wondering how I could become a member. There should be a... Down below the chat, there should be a... Wait. That's odd. Hang on a second. I need to go look at the other screen. Hang on a minute. Let me do something real quick. I have to do something so that I can see it. Oh. And then I'll explain how to join. Okay. Now we got that done. I'm going to refresh the screen.
Okay. Do you see where it says um, down up underneath the video itself? It'll say, you'll see a button that says join. Do you see that? Lori? Hi, Jim. I love to sew scraps together to make new fabric. When I was a kid in the early 60s, we would go to town to see fireworks at the fairgrounds and then go back to the house and fire off our own. And yes, Diane is still here. Good, good. All right. So I'm waiting on... Um, Lori's answer. Are you on a phone or are you on a uh, computer? Krista, are you using your phone or are you using a computer right now? Computer. Do you have your phone? Yes. Can you can you look at um the this live from your phone on YouTube? Is that possible? Yes. Can you see where the join button is on the phone? Sure. Hold on. She's on an iPad. Oh. It's on a tablet. Hmm, I can't answer that about an iPad. Anyone in the channel using an iPad? I have an iPhone, if it helps. Well, Katie, if they, will, if, if they want to become a channel member, if they click on your name or touch your name, it should bring up your page, and then there's a join button on your page. Did you hear that, Lori? Because yeah, I want, I don't know the answer when it comes to this Apple stuff. Yeah, they do. Whoever is wanting to join just needs to click on your name, and then there's going to be a join link on your on your page. So it should come up to your your page and have a button for join and subscribe. But if they're already subscribed, it'll show them that they're already subscribed, and join will be an option. Lori says yes, and that was who was asking, so she must have found it. Hey, good. All right. Thank you, Lori. Did he finally answered? Is he okay? Did you tell him you're going to be in Denmark? Do you think he'll make a drive? Aw. I was kind of hoping you'd see him. He can't drive? Is that what it is? <clears throat> well, if I was there, we would just drive to see him. <clears throat> How long of a uh, train trip would it be to his house? Oh, well, my goal in my mind. I know, to be with your sissy. Yeah. Yep. Did you tell him why you were going? Or Show him the opportunity. What did you say about it? There hasn't been no updates on the investigation, has there? I guess your sissy will fill you in. I don't, it's not going to make him come back, even if they do something to him. It's not going to make y'all feel any better. It's not going to make any of us feel better. He might be having bad dreams because he does love what he done. Killing a young child, you know, a child like that. 
by accident because you were driving too fast. Lori says, sorry, no join button. Oh, um, hmm. Lori, um, Tammy says, if you hover over my name, you should be able to see something. Or you may have to click her name. Or you have to click onto my name. And it should show you what you're looking for. Does she need to go to the about page or something? Yeah. Uh, so, like, for the the live stream, I see the title of the stream, and then I see your name, the green, or I see Greenland Quilter. When you click on that, that takes you to your page and shows all the videos that you've got, including this one. And that's where it's got whether you can subscribe or join. Oh, yeah, I think I remember seeing that, come to think of it, when I've looked at it myself. So, Lori, try, try uh, going to my about page or to my actual green load. Hang on. I'll just post my link in the channel. Follow the link and see if you see it there. Here's the link. Because you're, it should be right there in front of them, right? I would think so, yeah. Yeah, because I can see it join custom. Of course, I see other stuff too that has to do with me having a yeah. channel. <laughs> but I imagine if I went and used my other browser to go to my page, I would see what you're talking about. Yep, it's right there next to the subscribe button. I didn't think about saying go there. That hadn't occurred to me. Thank you for pointing that out. I would not have thought of that. I'm still such a newbie at this. Well, I definitely haven't run a channel. For <laughs> You've got me on that. Yep. But there's so much still to learn. There's a lot out there. Okay, let me go back to pressing. Ah, and well, it's almost eight thirty. <laughs> I didn't even know I dropped one on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I got it. My toe found it. <laughs> it's gonna be a pain being on this this type of carpet because you can't even see them, uh, or I can't see them. My eyesight being like it is. I think while I'm in the U.S., I'm going to get a new pair of glasses because it'll save us money by getting it there instead of here, babe. 15, 10,000, what was it, 12,000? It'll be way less. It'll be more like between uh, 500 and under. So that will save quite a bit of money. All right, let me quit being distracted here and get on with this. All right, so I want to sit. So on the other side, see, one, two, three, four. Yes, I have a magnet on a stick. Here, I'll show you what I did. You know those uh, magnets we got in our sew sampler box? I don't know if you can see it or not. I have a stick, and I duct taped it to the stick. Good job. <laughs> and that then I just run it up underneath my desk. But see, the carpet, the area rug we have here in our living room is dark colored, so I can't even see anything on it. The one that was in the one that's in the sewing room, you could actually see it. Joy says, I don't see it either. Not next to my subscription button. That's odd. Hmm. I wonder why. 
I heard that some people have trouble with uh, Apple products when it comes to um, joining, doing super chats or uh, the sticker thing or the joining of channels. So it could be that. Is she trying to join your live? She's trying to join my channel as a, uh, you can join the channel where you pay $2 oh. and you get emojis out of it. There's different levels, but I only have it set for one right now because I don't know what to do with it right now. But you can do soup. You can also do. It's okay, Lori. No need to panic. Yes, no worries. I'm not worried. Y'all are giving me watch hours, and that's, that matters the most to me. That's what I need more than anything. I need to get my watch hours high enough so that if there is a small decline at some point, it won't pull me off of YouTube. Okay. Has any of you seen any commercial breaks in this thing yet? I, there were ads when I first went on. But after that, nothing? I don't know. I'm on here. Okay. I have a paid, uh, I have a YouTube premium, so I don't see commercials ever. Oh. So I couldn't answer for you. How much do you pay to be a premium person? Uh, I just joined, I think it's $12.99 or $13.99 a month, I think. I watch so much YouTube, though. It's, it's absolutely worth it. I'd have to... I think I'd have to go back out to figure out how much I pay. Oh, looky. It's time to do the first drawing, you guys. So I'm going to show you what you got to put in the... Um, uh, chat you have to type exclamation mark great our GQ fun so wait a minute don't do it yet This is what you got to do. And make, I'm just showing it to you first. Please don't start it until I actually start it, though, okay? That's what it needs to look like. All right, now I'm going to start the giveaway. There are no eligible. What? Wait a minute. What's going on? Okay, let me try that again. I'm trying to figure out how to make this thing start. It means that you no longer get paid for any um, uh, ads or uh, things like that. Something is wrong. Hang on, you guys. Time to start the panel. Ooh. Yeah, and got it started, you guys. You're gonna have to put it back in once once the uh, thing goes live. Yeah. Are they putting it in? Yeah, some of them are. Yeah, because I'm having troubles. Once she gets it going, once and the, then you put it in, it will tag you until you you've got a ticket. Y'all need to wait a minute.
It's not letting me start it. Great. The chairman member is 10 times more like blah, blah, blah. Okay, wait a minute, you guys. I see what's wrong. Hang on. Something I forgot to do, apparently. No, still not working. And the number. This is a keyword people enter in the chat to become eligible to win. Okay, go ahead now. Well, let's see if it works. Well, maybe. No, maybe. hang on, you guys. Okay, I need to go bother Sean. Some of the people are saying that uh, the bot has already uh, picked two winners. Oh, it picked winners? Yeah, it's um, it picked two different winners, though. I thought there was supposed, we were only going to be doing that one winner. Per... Okay, you got, all right, everybody hold up for a minute till I see what's going on. So it picked, oh, so that's what it's doing. Oh. All right, hold on, y'all. Hold up. So they actually saw, so it didn't give enough time. Is that what it didn't do? Yeah, if it was already picking winners, it definitely wasn't enough time. Yeah, there was not enough time for everybody to put it. You guys, hold on a minute, okay? I'll have to give them... Red, uh, random. A channel member is 10 times more likely to win a giveaway. Regulars are 10 times more to win a giveaway. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, how do you make the time go longer? Um, no winners officially technical difficulties. Yeah, y'all hang in there, okay? I got to figure out what to just.
Users active within the past 15 minutes are over. That's not what I'm looking for. I want to know how to set the time. Timers. This is your time. Okay, listen up, everybody. I think I know what's wrong, but we can only let's test it and let's see how it goes, okay? I'm going to um in 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 a couple minutes. Hang on a minute. Okay, here's what I want you to do. When I tell you to, we're going to try again, but don't do it yet. Please don't. Okay. I want everybody to put in the green, the GQ fun with the exclamation mark in it. Everybody do that now so that I can do a test. And I'm going to set a timer for five minutes so that everybody can get it in. Yeah, Glenda, five minutes. Glenda, go ahead and put it back in there. Yeah, go ahead. Everybody put it back. Technical difficulties. Yeah. yeah, everybody put it back in there so that I can test this to see if it was me doing it wrong. If it works, we'll have a winner. If it's wrong, then we won't. Hi, Linda. So everybody put in exclamation mark GQ fun. And you have five minutes to get it. I'm going to go five minutes before I press a button to see if that if it was because I did it wrong to start with. And Krista, I owe you a $25 gift card and whoever the other person was. You don't owe me anything. Because I messed up. You have four minutes left. And Katie, it looks like my YouTube did have a... Uh add on it because uh, I'm slightly delayed on behind on where we are with from YouTube to the zoom. Okay. On your, on, cause you're using your computer, right? It, up yes. there where it says um, chat, you see where it says top chat, there's a drop down arrow next to it. You can change it to live chat and it'll catch you back up. Well, it's the screen. It's the video that's behind oh, it's the video. The video should also have, yeah, my live is off on mine too. Wow. There's yeah, a live my, button right next to your volume live. button. Well, my Zoom is way, way delayed from, or my Zoom is way yeah. ahead of the YouTube. Yeah, there was a delay. Check your screen and see if it's still showing live. And click the button if it's not. There, right, It's right next to the volume button. Yeah, You'll I see, see that. Thing, it says live. And if it doesn't have a red dot by it, it means that it's not live. It wasn't, I have the red dot on right now, but I think it's still slightly behind. Okay, now there's a 30 second delay between 
supposedly between the Zoom and the channel. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, that, I There's think that's that. what mine is. Yeah. But if it's a lot behind, then that means that it's sleeping again. Uh, I, it's not I, that I just noticed sense. mine was sleeping. So, yeah. I think that I must have had an ad and that's why it was behind. Yeah. The ad messes things up a little bit. I can't do nothing about the ads. All I can do is spread them, tell them to spread it out. You, you're, it gives you some settings that you can do. Now, there is some settings where you can manually do it, but I don't know how to do that yet. You may want to check with Ian because I know Ian on one of his lives recently that I caught, um, he was scheduling everybody to go to a commercial break. Yeah, I need um, to learn how to do that. Yeah, I know he was doing it. I don't know how he's doing it because I haven't done this. <laughs> yeah, um, so is Becca. She's learned how to use her bio break as the part where the, the ad plays. Oh, that makes sense. It makes good sense to me, too. That way they don't miss something. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've got all of these done. I just have or all of this one section done. So I've just got to trim them up and then I'll start on the next part of this section. Oh, good. Uh, Joyce says no tickets come. Did you yeah, type I'm in? Not doing either. It's not saying anything. Well, it didn't do tickets last time either when it awarded the two winners before. Yeah, and it's probably because I'm doing something wrong. So I'm there is a roll it button, and that might be how I had a winner because I pressed that roll it button. There's a roll it button on there. So that's why I, I said I got everybody four minutes. And let's test this theory and see if that's how it's, how for right now until somebody teaches me how to use it. Let's try that and see if that's the ticket or not. Yeah, uh -oh. I think that probably is what happened because you probably pressed the roll it twice and that would have been what gave us the two yeah. winners during our first run. Which that's okay too. Don't you think so? Because it's still randomly picking somebody. We got 18... 17 seconds, 16. Okay. And, and it, if you haven't put the exclamation GQ fun in there, hurry up and get it in there. So Georgie said she's had no um, ad breaks. Uh, Diane says she hasn't had any either. Okay. The time has gone off. Let me test this theory. Does it show I that Joyce's name got pulled? Yeah, Joyce. Yes. Yep. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> then this is how we're going to do it for now until I figure out how to manually or have it do it on auto. Congratulations, Joy. You are the first winner of the $25 gift card. Let me get my email address and post it in the channel. So you can, you have to email me, okay? Because I have no way of setting up a gift card without your email address. So make sure um, that gets done. Congratulations. Congratulations, judges. Okay, I'm um, tagging you, Joy, with the email address. That's where you need to email me so that I can get your email address to use for, uh, for Fat Quarter Shop. So congratulations. Uh, gosh, how do I say that? Is that to tag? Ooh. T. Roberts. I don't know how to say your first name, and I don't want to butcher it, so... Uh, T. Roberts is asking you, Nikolai, what you're working on. Uh, theater. Yes, you did, Joy. I'm working on this one, theater. Now, on the next drawing, don't enter, okay? Since I don't know how to fix this thing, let's just do it manually for right now. Is everybody in agreement on that? 
Sounds fair to me. Yeah. Rock your <laughs> Oh my gosh. Rock your body song. Denise, are you sit uh yeah, congrats uh Denise says congratulations to Joy. And uh yeah, I'm getting yeses or okays. Okay, all right. That way, um, if this thing does something weird, we know why. Okay, so the next drawing will be in two hours. So at 1030, we will do it again. Because I'm giving away five of them. Maybe I'll actually win one. <laughs> huh? Maybe I'll actually win for a change. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you never know. So, uh. You know, I never hardly ever win anything. You know, my whole entire life it's been people winning, 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 and I never win anything. But something happened in this, this December um, that I would have never in a million years thought would have happened. Um, every year, right before the Christmas bazaar, the young the college students sit at the front door on the inside of the front door of Brucey, which is our grocery store. And they're selling raffle tickets. And every year I buy raffle tickets because it's going to the students, student cause, you know, to help them with different things that relate to college. Yeah. And um, so we, how many did we, we bought four, didn't we? Uh, no, you, was it four or was it six we bought? I think it was. Yeah. So we bought six this year. And on Saturday, which is the day of the, um, they were doing a Christmas bazaar, and we decided not to go. Um, later that afternoon, probably after dark, we get a phone call, and it's one of the one of them at the college, and they said, um, "Your name got drawn, and you have won." What was it called, babe? Yeah. It didn't. She didn't say about the ten thousand. It was the. It was Greenland travel or something like that. Visit, visit Greenland. Yeah, visit Greenland. You have won the visit Greenland gift card. And that's oh. all she said. So I I didn't even realize when she told me what I actually won. So I told Nikolai, I said, I won the gift card from Visit Greenland. And then Nikolai decided to go look and see what that meant. It was ten thousand Danish kroners from uh visit Greenland to do some any travel I wanted within Greenland. And so oh, I'm going goodness. to use my 10,000 which is about 1458 US dollars. So that's $1,458. And I'm going to use it to go visit Ilulissat so that I can make content with skyscraper size icebergs, whale safari, and visiting the ice cap and spending the night above the ice cap in a cabin. That's what I'm going to use it for. And okay. I'm going to make lots of content while I'm there. I, and then I'll Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> You're fine. I never win anything either. And at my, I'm a member of about three different quilting groups here in town. And one of the quilting groups, uh, two of them played a game called left center right and you bring in three fat quarters to play per game and the first group was going to play twice so they told you to bring six and you roll these dice uh, and if you roll it l you pass a fat quarter to the left if you roll it r you pass a fat quarter to the right if you roll a c you put it in the middle and if you roll a dot, you keep a fat quarter. And then if you have less than three fat quarters at your turn, you only roll the number of dice per how many fat quarters you've got. And the person with the fabric, still having the fabric when nobody else does, they're the ones who win. And both groups that I played that in, uh, one group played twice and one group only played once, but both groups that I played it in this year, I actually won. So oh, I came wow. home with fat quarters from the Christmas parties. That's cool. 
and I never win. So I was really, really shocked. So Joy asked, what about Krista and Glinda from earlier? Now, Krista says, Don't worry about me. Yeah. She says it's not necessary. I don't know whether Glinda said anything about it or not. But she did. Uh, she said that you didn't know her anything either. Um, after all the the ex the explanation about you know that we were having diff technical difficulties came through. Okay, because I didn't see what she said. So there's your answer to both. They said it wasn't necessary, so I, I would honor it. Be but they telling me not to. So okay, that was answered. All right, so I'm gonna get back to. Sewing and when, oh, look, you guys. Can you see them on the screen, babe? There's a bit of a glare. There's a glare? Tell me when there's not a glare. Babe, look at your. Uh, oh. Hang on a minute, you guys. Now I can see what I'm doing. Oh, look at that. Um, so sweet. You see how Nora's back behind him with her head up against his back? <laughs> Sometimes oh. she puts her head between his front legs. They look like they're tired. That, that's how they sleep all the time together. That's why I know I've got to get a, you know, Nora, uh, Coda's nine and a half and he started having health problems this past year and um. Oh, you want me to make? Oh, somebody wants. To, yeah, I can do that. Hang on a minute, and I'll show it to you again. I can pin myself. Where's that pin button at? All right. Okay, I'm going to reshow it, you guys. As you can see, that's my German Shepherd Coda on the front. And right there uh, behind him is Nora, and she's got her head up against his hips. And I can see her from where I'm standing. Oh, you took it from that side. You should take a picture from this side, too. Wait a minute. Hold on, you guys. I don't know how to get to your... Oh, there it is. Okay, now how do I get back to that window? Oh, never mind. I see it. I think. He's, he's got his phone set up different than mine. So here it is from my direction. That is cute. I know at one point you she's had me gotta be, Yeah, she's always got to be touching him when she's sleeping with him. Oh boy. Is it nine o'clock? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, are y'all ready for us to take you outside? Sure. Hang on a minute. I need to unpin this thing first. Move pin. I'm going to have to take my phone. Okay, I'm going to just be snatching this phone. I think I just I just knocked off a zoom. It's real cold outside. Um, we're gonna go outside, guys. Uh, I accidentally locked myself off of Zoom. I'll get back on Zoom. So give me a minute. Okay. Krista, can you and um Tammy help with the channel while I go outside for this? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're still on, on Zoom. I see both of yeah. your Greenland filters. Oh, on Zoom. okay. I am? Yeah, yeah they're both there. Yeah. yeah. You were still on Zoom, but my phone wasn't. It's come back, right? Yeah. Uh, Whatever yeah. you have in your hand is on Zoom. Yeah, that's yeah. the phone. 
And then the other one you just leaned in front of and that's on Zoom. Okay, all right, gotcha. Your sound is gone. No, we're not hearing you. But Christine's here. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. I'm not hearing Christine either. Oh, well, hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Who's here? Me. Hi. <laughs> You, you, you. Sammy. Yep. Hi. Hello. I am in my room. Nicole and I are running outside to show us fireworks. Oh, nice. Okay. It's nine o'clock there. Ah, there she is. Okay. No sound. Yep, still no sound at Greenland. So what do they do? Fireworks at nine there? They do, yeah, they do um the nine o'clock nine PM fireworks are celebrating. Oh, I'm seeing them. I don't yes. I think. Um oh there they go. Uh they do fireworks at midnight Denmark time. And then they her local town does fireworks at midnight Greenland time. So it's a three hour time difference. Mm. So there'll be two rounds of fireworks. Those are gorgeous fireworks. Yes. I like to watch them, but I don't like to hear them because my pup, she's already, we just tried, just tried to walk her, but People are already popping off fireworks, so she's not having it. And then I got the kitty back here. They're all. Ugh, it's going to be a rough. They're doing fireworks in Greenland right now. Uh -huh. uh, so, lady, yeah, I've got the B770 Quilters Edition. Uh, that's what I'm sewing with right now. And then I've got a Ricky Tim's uh, um, 350 that I take with me when I go to retreats or go to quilt groups. I love my Berninas. All right, ladies, I'm going to take a quick shower so I can get back and comfort the pup, but I'll still stay on, so. All right, okay. see you later. Okay, all right, girl. Nice. Yeah, those are some pretty big fireworks. Okay. 
I'm not in Greenland. I'm in Wyoming. And Christy, you're in Florida, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, Katie. We yeah. saw your fireworks. We did not he really particularly hear your fireworks because the phone you were on outside did not yeah. have sound. It didn't have what? Sound. Oh, so you couldn't hear it? <gasps> because I forgot to turn the volume on. <laughs> there was a little bit of noise coming from that camera in front of you right now. There was yeah. some, a little bit of pop noises, but not a lot. Okay, so that's what you could hear. But you, we but could, could see you, the fireworks. Could you see any of it? Yeah. We saw it. Yes, yeah. it was beautiful. Okay, all right. So if the sound is a babe, when we go out at midnight, I need to turn the sound on on this phone. Yep. Because I turned the sound, so that means I need to unmute it. Yeah. Okay. Or join and rejoin again. I think all we right, should let be able to just unmute it. Let me get this thing plugged back in. That, that is just a small That's small part for uh, to say hello to Denmark. Yeah. So the big part will happen at midnight. And let's see if I can knock myself out of Zoom again. And Christine stepped away, but she'll be back. Okay. I'm happy about her being here. All right. Okay. Everybody got a good view of the sewing area again? Do I need to make any adjustments? No, nope, doesn't look like it, but if you do, let me know, okay? Congratulations, Joy. Oh, okay. That was from earlier. All right. Are you both in Greenland? Me and my honey are, Joyce. Are you both in Greenland as Katie? No, we, we already answered that. Um, oh, I am okay. in Wyoming, and then uh, Chris is in Florida. Okay. Some of them are still shooting off, but I wanted to save the big majority. So when we get ready to do the one for uh, midnight, I want to get outside 10 minutes before it starts. So um, y'all get to go. You get to watch us walk out because I'm going to turn my white uh my data on so that we don't lose the connection and I'll take you outside and we'll show you what it looks like at night while it's so dark. Awesome. While we wait for the fireworks to go off. I'm going to try to put it up on a tripod. Maybe. I don't know. Or I might just hold it. Was I shaking the phone too much? No. No. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Yeah. Katie, do they do radio broadcasts with music that match the fireworks there? I don't know. Do they, honey? What? Play uh, Christmas music or New Year's music oh. while the fireworks are going off uh, on the radio. He says he doesn't remember. He rarely listens to the radio when he's home. Sometimes he, it, mostly he watch, listens to the news and that's about it. Okay. I think being married to an American life is American wife is kind of rough into it. I heard. <laughs> yeah, some things you just can't help. If that can rub into me, but maybe my, my eating habits have been rubbed to you. How about that, honey? I don't think so. You're uh, never going to convince me to eat raw fish. Okay. Not chicken. gonna happen. Chicken. Not gonna happen. I might be Katie. In your dreams, baby. Chicken. <laughs> hey, what do you want? All right, let me see what I need to sew next. All right, get down. So at nine o'clock, we'll start working on the motor block, and I need to get some scraps too. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Mm -hmm. We're going to use the teats. Now, all I need to do is decide on what color I want for a background. I know we can hear you barking in here. I bet y'all heard all that barking. You didn't hear the dogs barking? No. I didn't. No? Uh -uh. Wow. 
That no, but I didn't mute mine. She said she could hear the fireworks popping though. Just barely. Barely. Yeah, just barely. Wow. It was that YouTube thing or that Zoom must really work good. Because I could hear the dogs barking outside. Yeah, I need to choose a background. What color do I want to use for a background on this love block? Hmm. Why don't I use this as a background? Wait a minute. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, I and like this that. is a petite. Yep, yeah, I'll use that as the background while I use scraps of batiks for the colors. I need to turn this other light on. I don't know why it's not on. What are you going to do with your love block once it's done, Katie? I will probably put it on the back of, of one of my um, quilt tops that needs quilting. Okay. It's a batik quilt top. It'll probably go on the back of that. Or, I don't know, I could always turn it into a, you know, if I did a bigger one, then I could make a wall hanging of it. Hmm. Now I'm thinking maybe I should do the big one. <laughs> what do y'all think? All right. Well, let's get do four of the of the ones you're doing right now, and then just put them together. Yeah, that's a great idea, Krista. Okay, that's what I'll do then. Well, you could do four of those, and then if you find a paper piece heart, put a paper piece heart in the center. That would be cool. And use the love blocks as kind of cornerstones. Is this part of the first nine block second round? Melissa, are you talking about um, the um, one that I've been working on the last three Saturdays? This one? Jeanette said she heard barking. So it must be what we have on, on our end is drowning it out. Okay. Melissa, are you talking about this? Oh, the motor blockhead. Yeah, would... Oh, she's talking about the 20. No, this is not part of Blockheads 5. This is Moda Blockheads 3, and we're just doing the love block. That's all we're going to do tonight. Um, it's a paper piecing, and um, I'm going to show you how I do it. Yeah, that's going to be okay. Uh, yeah, it's 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 for the New Year's party that we're going to do the love block. Andrea says, I am doing the big one times five and making pillows for my grandkids. Oh, that's an excellent idea, Andrea. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so this is my, one of my scrap boutique boxes that I'll be pulling scraps out of. I hear fireworks here. From from outside your house? Oh, I didn't see that Candace came. Hi, Candace. I'm sorry, I wasn't ignoring you on purpose. I didn't no realize problem. you entered. No problem, hi everyone. Hello. So now I want you to tell everybody in the live YouTube, if you don't mind, who you are and what you, what type of quilting you, quilt making you like to do or what you, what you're going to work on tonight. Um, Candace Zeminov, um, and, uh, a little south of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm kind of getting prepped for a couple quilts. Um, right now I'm going to make this. I need to order some fabric. Um, Lace. and one's going to my daughter it's going to have all the Tula fairy dust colors in it and then one I'm ordering new fabric for me from Jay Wicker Fresh um, and I have some other stuff piled up that I need to cut tonight that way I can work on them 
or quilt along I'm doing this year and stuff. Okay, that sounds good. Wow, it's still going on. Yeah, it's still going. I'm going to need this laptop. Yeah, some people that are a little late. Yeah, it's quiet. Hopefully, they won't spend a long time after 1 o'clock or after midnight shooting them off once everybody gets them all thought off. That's what I'm hoping for, to give the dogs a break. Okay, now that I've got that done, All right, so it'll be pressed. So I'll show you what I'm working on in a minute. Andrea says, I am planning on Candy Hearts fabric for the backs of the pillows. That sounds pretty. I really like this love block. You can put it on anything just about or insert it in the middle of another block. You know, where... You know how some designers make blocks where there's the, what they call it, negative space? You can sit and put one of those right in the middle of the negative space. And it still be a pretty block. Get these pressed. Right, my next one is up. What? My next one is up. Yeah. All right. My red and white. And then I'm about to do a whole bunch more red and white. I think. Did Christine say what she was working on? No, but she'll no. be back. Okay. She stepped away for a little bit. Thank you, everyone, for coming and hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. Nikolai, are you where you can show what how far you've gotten on yours? Oh, yeah. Uh, first floor is about to be finished. But a little bit more. You'll be able to show it to them where they can see it? Yeah, I will. I will show it. I'm working on it. At least the dogs are chilling. They're not up barking. Yep. I think they were barking because we were outside. Yep. They're and like, they're wait. Gonna, they're going to hear fireworks. Too. Yep. But they're not even listening. They're not even paying attention to them going off now. Yep. Probably because we walked out the door and they were concerned about it. Yeah. steam coming off of this uh ironing board honey mm -hmm. there's steam coming off of this it shouldn't be wet here i'll show you why It's really hot. Or I can see it because of the light of the TV. Probably. Okay, so I've got these flying geese made. I 
I have to say that uh, these pre-cuts, or whatever you call them, die cuts, make doing flying geese a lot easier than the usual way of doing it. Where is my... There it is. Or at least I think it seems to make it easier. Those are your pre-cuts from your cotton cuts? Yeah. Okay. I can't, I, I would love to own one of those die cut things, but they're so expensive. They are, but they are definitely worth it. I have the AccuQuilt Studio um, studio cutter, and I can cut basically any AccuQuilt die that they put out. And it's definitely worth it for me. And I guess what everybody's been saying. Price tag is like up around eight hundred bucks. Yeah, depending on which one, which system you want. I didn't buy everything all at once, but I have. Yeah, I don't know it was an electric one. That's all I knew, and oh, I don't yeah. even know if I can buy the electric one here or not. I'm not using the electric. Um, the I can't remember which Go is the electric one, but I I have the studio, which is above the Go. Okay. And it is not electric. Um, I cut two Hattie's Choice quilts this past mm -hmm. summer, and they were like kite designs, as uh -huh. well as triangles and all of that. And there's no way I could have done it without the Accu quilt. That's actually... I've got to bind it, but that's what this quilt is. I just got it back. It's already been quilted for me. Let's see. Easy. Okay, so I'm going to show everybody what I'm sewing together next. Okay. This is, Katie, this is the one that I did with that Hattie's Choice. So oh. these little sections right here, this all this cream is all a kite design. And uh -huh. then the, the blue and the red are all diamonds. And it would be such a pain to cut it all with a template. You can do it. And it was in one of the Fonz and Porter's magazines. Um, and it was all done, you know, all done by template. But I bought the Hattie's Choice die to be able to do it and I did two of these. I can imagine that does make sewing time much less. It does and it also increases your accuracy. You know, same thing that you're saying about the cotton cuts, pre-cuts. Mm -hmm. When it's accurate, it's so much easier to sew. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so right now it's having me sew these two pieces together, you guys. So that's what I'm doing next. Okay, somebody made a comment. Let's go see what it said. Melissa says, this is fun. I just gave my dogs meds. Missed. And then Robin says, missed it. My dog got into... No seums. Oh, no. Oh. What is a no seum? They are... Bugs. Almost like mites, but you get them um, typically on the beach is where I've seen where I've gotten into them, and you you really can't see them, but they will bite you and they sting. Uh oh, I didn't know that. I lived on the Mississippi Gulf Coast for about a year, and we were about half a mile from the beach, and got into those things all the time this past summer um while i was not this past summer but last year sorry 2022 when i was stuck in california um for seven months uh Hanifa was taking care of the dogs in the house and she must have let Coda stay out too much um right at mosquito season and they really feasted on one of his ears and damaged it pretty bad. He had a complete uh, allergic reaction to it. 
and there was no vet. There was a, I think some, a vet was there for like a day or two and she lanced it, but then she didn't tell Hanifa what to do if it filled back up with blood. Aww. And so by the time I got, finally got over being sick and was able to travel, it had, it had turned into, um, hardened, uh, scar tissue, I guess you could call it. So one of his ears is mangled because of it. But he, he apparently is now allergic to mosquitoes. But I think it was a combination of the mosquitoes and the kibble he was eating. Had in, it had intensified his immune system to go into overdrive. So, and I, I took him out some this I mean, he got to go out during the summer this time, but I made sure that he wasn't out there being chomped on by mosquitoes the whole time he was outside. Because we get about six weeks of mosquito season, and then they're gone. The only thing that seems to stay the longest is these little midges. And I really don't see the midges attacking them like the mosquitoes do. And the strange thing I've noticed is mosquitoes seem to like to attack dark coated animals. Hmm. I never given any thought to it when I was in the uh, in Florida. I didn't really notice that, but I definitely notice it here because they get all over uh, Nora too, and you'll see a light coated dog standing next to her, and they're not even bothering the light coated dog. So there must be something about this particular breed of mosquitoes that likes dark coated things. I know if I'm in a room or if I'm in an area with a whole bunch of other people, I am most likely the one that's going to be bit. Yeah. I try not to wear dark uh, sweat jackets or anything in the summer months because it seems like they congregate around it. If I wear something light co light colored, it's not near as bad. They still attack me, of course. But and the other thing is, is you don't get mosquitoes in your face when you're facing the wind. It's very funny. You have a light sea breeze, and as long as the sea breeze is face you're you know facing the sea breeze, the mosquitoes aren't pouncing all over your face. Our dogs are on heartworm prevention and flea prevention due to mosquitoes. Yeah, we don't have heartworm disease here. In fact, there's no diseases, diseases mosquito-borne here. Yeah, Melissa, I, 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 yeah, I have to agree with your statement about hematomas. He's definitely the last couple of years had trouble. So I'm trying to be proactive. And I know when I get back to the state, because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how bad it was until I got home. And when I got home, I'm like, oh, my God, I could have picked up some some um, SWAT from uh, the tractor supply and at least put it around the edges of his ears. And then at least the mosquitoes would have left his ears alone. That's what I used on my horse was SWAT. So look, this is the ointment that you put around the edges of their ears and the mosquitoes will avoid it like the plague. I had a, my, not my current dog, but my dog before this it was solid black and he ended up with a hematoma. And when the vet took care of it, when the hair grew back, it grew back uh -huh. white. <laughs> he, yep. was our, he was our little old man. I hate that it smangled his ear like it has. Because when I was looking at some of his younger pictures recently, I'm like, his ears were so beautiful there. Now they're not. Well, now, he looks like a, now he looks like he's a beaten up old man. At least now you can tell whether the pictures were before mosquitoes or after mosquitoes. Yep. You know, when you're a dog owner, 
you do you know what to do with your dogs and what not to do. But when you have a pet sitter come and stay and live at your house, and especially if they're young, they don't realize certain things. They don't notice things. And I, you know, having German Shepherds all of my adult life, you know, I've always been very mindful of certain things about them anyway. And it's, it's you learn by doing. And she's never, she's never had a dog ever. She's 19 now. And um, she's learned a lot by taking care of my dogs, but she's really good with the dogs. I can't complain. She didn't know that he was going to have a reaction. And I, I couldn't be mad at that. Because mm -mm. they, they, both of them adore her. They, you, you know how you've seen the video? Well, I don't know if you've seen the video or not, Tammy, but some in here have. They've seen the video where my dogs, when Nikolai comes home, they're going crazy. She do, they do the same thing with her when she comes to see them. My dog goes crazy when my, I've got one sister-in-law that he has hung out with. He loves her and he loves my parents. So he, when we say their names, he absolutely goes crazy, just jumping everywhere. And then I've got a friend here and he absolutely loves her as well. So the moment that he realizes it's somebody he likes, yep. that tail, that tail is literally hitting his rib cage on either side. Yeah. <laughs> Dogs are good judge of, judge of character. They are. Remember each other. Yep. Robin says, I'm in for I'm in Florida. No Sims. I found out the hard way. I got them every, everywhere. Only one got them, and she's a pit bull. The ointment is from my vet. Hmm. Yeah, I guess those, I've never had no Sims. I I learned the hard way on those too. Um, Katie, you'll send you'll tend to see them on white sand beaches. I don't know. I haven't seen them on South Carolina, North Carolina, or Virginia beaches, but I haven't spent a lot of time there but I, I definitely it's you may not get it directly on the beach but again like I said I lived about half a mile from the beach and uh -huh. just out of our just outside of our door you know hanging out in the sandy dirt uh -huh. that's that's where we got eaten alive by them so it's probably because of the sand they they tend to live in the sand yeah or sandy sandy ground Oh wow! I don't know if there's a particular, yeah, I don't know if there's a particular type of sand they like better. Um, of course, I would get eaten alive. My husband wouldn't, but my husband also doesn't get bit, bitten by mosquitoes like I do. So, yeah. what I would get bitten by all the time in Florida was yellow flies, and they would swell me up big time. Hey, Katie. I can yeah. sleep away for a little while. I'll be back. So I'm I'm going okay. to for, for a bit. Okay. 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 Sounds good. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay. Section two, section four. The hematoma could be caused when when he was head shaking and scratching. Yeah, more yeah. than likely that's what it was. He was scratching and shaking his head. And, you know, Hanifa didn't know what was going on. By the time I was told that he had blood in his ear, the the effect of the mosquitoes had already done their damage. And, you know, when you're far away, you, you feel like you're just helpless. You can't do anything. Okay, now I've got both of them together. This is what this one looks like so far. Those are definitely bold. I like them. Yeah. This 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 quilt is probably going to be beautiful. I don't usually do well. I have a couple red, white, and ones I've been working on, but I usually don't sign up for red, white, and blue type of stick. Not into. I don't know patriotic stuff that much. But I don't have a red, white, and blue quilt so I'm making. 
I've got in my list of things to get done eventually, I've got a red, white, and black quilt. Oh, that ought to be interesting. Oh, I bet that's going to be pretty. I signed up. I don't know what year. Uh, I, I've heard a couple other people mention it before, so I know I'm not the only one who signed up for it. But it was a 365 quilt. Uh -huh. So there's literally 365 blocks in the quilt. Yeah. And um, I... There are fair triangles? Uh, there's a lot. Uh, some of those blocks only come out to three inches in the square in the quilt. Yeah, that's pretty small. So, and then some blo some blocks are much bigger, but life kind of got away from me the year I signed up, but I downloaded all the patterns as I was going, even though I didn't get all of them worked. So I've still got the fabrics for them and I kind of need to go ahead and get it on my to-do list so yeah. that it's <laughs> not hanging around for another few years. <laughs> How many people are watching right now? It looks like 25. Two, four. Okay, I'm showing 25. 25 watching. I just wonder where we were on. I was hoping I would get a bigger number so that I could share something with everybody. And I would only have to say it once instead of repeat. One, two, three. Yeah. Some people may be over at Tiffany's. I think her channel, her live just started. Tiffany's going live also? Yeah, she's doing her live at her normal time for her so Sunday. But today is Sunday, so that's right. Yeah. So this is her regular. Oh, it says live in 30 minutes. Mm. Live. So she may not be live right this second. Okay. I but wonder how much stretch my bandwidth today yeah she's got 14 people waiting it's scheduled for just over 20 minutes from now okay i wasn't sure how long um teresa was going to run her live i don't know how long she normally runs hers i know tiffany i think her so sunday is usually two hours but i don't know how long Teresa runs hers. I normally just turn her channel on and just watch. As yeah, I, I usually don't pay attention to exact times. She's got 152 people watching. Wow. Lucky her. Is that Tiffany or Teresa? Teresa. Oh, wow. All right. I have a feeling that she didn't get. I agree, Melissa. Yeah, New Year's Eve might make it hard to have a big audience. No, it's okay. I'm not complaining about that. It's just the dog is a bit whiny, like she wants to go back outside again. Or, or she's tired of hearing the pop pop on the glass. Right. But. Like, Dad, pay attention to me. You're not. You're not paying attention. Okay. Yeah, this is the regular. After she's done, then they. I guess that leaves whatever I get over. Well, oh, maybe I'll get the people from Europe. Robin said the last homely house is also live now. Mm hmm. I don't think I've heard of Family House yet. I need to get that other right screen. I need to figure out how, how I can. When you're when you're live, you you have the screen where on one side it has a reduced the the video screen of all of us together is small, and then on the right or down below that is analytics and screen settings and all this other stuff that's like in that space. And there's no thing where you can like reduce it to get rid of it that I can see. 
or I just haven't figured out how to do the dashboard yet mm -hmm. one. Oh, really? Are you mad at me? Hmm? Are you mad at me? Uh-huh. Oh. Sure. Yeah, Andrea just said Therese and Tiff are one after the other, and both are two hours. Okay. That's like four hours out. So Therese's will be ending right as Tiffany start. Oh, no, Tiffany, um, I think Teresa is right after. Oh, no, you said Teresa's already live. So I guess... Yeah, Teresa's already live. She's been going for a while now. Oh, okay, that's right. Because when she was on here earlier, she was saying... We ask if anybody's going live tomorrow. I don't know, but I'll be live till six a.m. And I'm temp I don't know if nobody's live tomorrow night. I might go live. I don't know who all goes live on on um Mondays. Mondays. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm still trying to work weave my way around everybody to try to get myself stuck in between somebody without running into their their lives i think donna goes live on monday night doesn't she i think i've seen her but i don't know it's usually late in the evening isn't it yeah um, yeah. yeah but yeah i do believe donna does go live on mondays that sounds right she's working on that lion or something um, but she fixed the lion so she's gonna be working on something new i think I just watched her the other night. I knew she said something about what she was going to be doing. I, I can't place it. I know she said she was going to be doing a Bargello in February. Somebody just asked if anybody caught uh, Soya's 12 hour. When did they do that? Yes, Because I didn't think that they worked on Sundays. No, it was yesterday. It was all day Saturday. They did it. I okay. watched all of it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch any of it. I bought a few things. I wasn't bad. I mostly bought backing because that's about all I need. <laughs> I I can't afford their shipping on stuff. Yeah. It used to be very affordable and now it isn't. Ever since the pandemic happened anyway. So I, I I can still shop my usual places and get anything I want anyway. So you just have to buy some cheap luggage when you come to visit in the um for in the year and pack it up and bring it home. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm bringing an extra suitcase with me this time so I can bring back stuff because I can fly with a hundred pounds worth of suitcases. So there's that, but there's a a, a hitch knot. Wait, that's not the word. There's a problem with that. Once I get to Denmark, you Air clear. Greenland charges extra. So I will probably put all my stuff, uh, ship it to Blue Water home in the suitcase like I did last time I done this. To say, it's, not, it's astronomically high price what Air Greenland charges for extra suitcases. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. I gotta make your money somehow, right? Yeah, but you know, we pay so much already just to fly out of this country. I could fly cheaper to the United States versus flying from here to Denmark. Oh, goodness. But that may end come, um, well, the first, there's, there's going to be new flights from, uh, new to, uh, What's the name of that town again in Canada? Hollywood. It's the capital of something. Hollywood. Yeah. Um, they have an airport, an international airport up in Canada. And there's going to, starting in May, there'll be flights between New and there. And so there's the potential for the next time I go to the U.S. of doing it like that. But in December, the whole international airport in New will open. And then we'll see what kind of flights will be intercontinental between um, Nuke and the United States and where. Because I would rather just fly straight. I would I would fly any day to Nuke 
just so I could fly to the United States and just avoid going to Denmark altogether because that's an extra flight. Yeah. I have to pay for it. That's why I only make my trip to the U.S. every other year because we couldn't afford for me to go every year if I'd done that. I mean, we could, but we'd never save any money. Yeah. We need to be picked up from Atlanta Airport. Let me know. I'm like 20 minutes from there. I definitely will be flying through Atlanta coming in or out. Oh, when I leave, when he comes, he will be flying through Atlanta to go to Jacksonville because that's where I'll pick him up is in Jacksonville. Okay. And um, when I fly out, we both will be, both of us will be flying out of Jacksonville and we'll have to go through either Atlanta or Boston. I'm not sure which one yet. But we're going to be in Georgia in March. We're going to go uh, up there to um, I'm going to go see Christine for one thing. And um, also we're going to see see, if, see how my son is doing once he gets settled into a place. Right now he's still staying at a hotel. Okay. I'll make sure to grab lunch. Grab a meal or something if you want. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, we'll be, we would be willing to meet anyone who's going to be within the area we're going to be at. Yeah, I used to live like the next town over from Carrollton. So I lived in Temple for, I don't know, 15 years. What's Temple like? Um, You know, I mean, it's been a while since I've been there. Um, and my mom, so like 10 years ago, I... Um, I moved to Pennsylvania from Georgia. Um, my job was like closing down here in Noonan and um, they were moving the manufacturing. I was manager. So I moved up there with it and made me a killer offer. So, um, and my mom was kind of, you know, down and out that, you know, cause she's close to my kids and everything. So she ended up moving to Mexico and well, met this air, retired air force guy that lived in Mexico, ended up moving to Mexico. So her house sat empty for about a year and a half. I came down and checked on it a few times because I still came down like three times a year because my kid's father lives down in Georgia still. So, and plus my other, one of my sisters lives here and one's in Florida, but um, I, uh, but the, after a year and a half, when I went back to the house, like the garage door was off the house. Um, the windows were broken. They had torn the walls up. Like there was a bunch of meth heads that got in there or, you know, whatever. So this was in Carrollton or Newton? This is Temple. This is in Temple. Oh, in Temple. Ne okay. Yeah, the next town over from there. So I had to go to the, pla you know, as soon as I saw the garage door off there, off the, the, I mean, the whole wide garage door was missing off the front of the house. Mailbox was gone. There was trash all in the yard and everything. Um, and she was still sending money to the neighbor to mow the grass and just like stay in touch or whatever. So she never said nothing to me, but I happened to go by the house because I wanted to pick up a, a couple things there. And um, yeah, so the house was like demolished. Um, and the police had evidently tried to get a hold of her. I guess they just didn't know how or whatever. Um, so yeah, we ended up like basically selling the house for like 10 grand and the property values in that neighborhood. And so, I mean, I'd say in the town over Temple, um, they've had some, you know, drug issues there and stuff like that, but Carrollton's nice. I mean, my nephew went to college there. Um, you know, I mean, every town's got a little back pocket area, but it's, it's nice and, you know, more spread out and stuff like that. I think he'll like Carrollton. I also, when we were looking at the, uh, different kind of warehouse jobs, there was some, there's some listed for Noonan and I wondered what kind of drive he would have between Noonan and Carrollton. Yeah, um, I did that drive for about three months because I was living and um, out that way. I mean, it's, well, it's back roads. I'd say it's probably still 45 minutes an hour, probably one way. That's oh, a so long. it's that long? Oh, wow. Yeah. I yeah, need to get him, about the traffic. Yeah, he needs to be, well, ever warehouse job, he needs to be as close to where they're going to live at as possible. Yeah, because, yeah. Um, it's he's going to be it's just him and blaze and blaze is seven yeah and i i want to make work i'm trying to make this because he's got to learn how to be independent he hasn't been he hasn't had his own place oh my gosh how long honey since 2017 or 18 Something. yeah he, he hasn't had he hasn't functioned as a family unit by himself 
and all this fun. Um, we, it, it's a complicated thing, and um, he got with a girl that basically was a predator at a time when he was at his weakest because he hadn't gotten over the suicide of his father. And so he, he made bad choices of who he was getting around. He wasn't doing drugs. He wasn't doing anything like that. He just was around the wrong kind of people. Yeah. So he was, he, he, you know, he had a, he had a full-time job and he was, he was actually doing what young men should be doing despite the, the emotional trauma of losing his dad. And, um, you know, and he, he got with her and, at the time, he didn't know that she was a predator, and you know she preys upon weak. I I shouldn't call him weak-minded, but that's what she preys on. Yeah, and it you know things as things, you know he has a son from her, and um, of course she's lost all custody of all of her kids. In the last, uh, well, she's been missing. What? How long has he been in California now? Blaze three years, yeah, because yeah, he got custody of his son three years ago, and um, and he's been living under the roof with his sister and her family, and um, so he hasn't learned how to be independent because while he was with that woman, they were, I guess, they call it couch surfing. Oh, god, they, they would move to this place and stay a while, and and Thomas would pay rent and do his part. And they basically took advantage of him. And this went on for a long time. And every time we thought we would finally, he would finally accept our help. He would, he would um, uh, reel him right back in to her. And, you know, he's an adult. You can't, twi you can't twist your child as an adult. You know, you can't twist their arm to make you come, come, let us help you. If he didn't, you know, every time we thought we we could, he would turn away. And when it, he finally had to hit, you know, he finally hit rock bottom. And when that happened, that's when he asked for help. But now, you know, during that time frame of living under another roof, it wasn't a positive way of doing it. So he needs to learn how to be independent. And California is not the place to do it. No, it's very expensive there. It's too expensive. It's too hard. He needs to be in a smaller place, you know, smaller town, and hopefully not around bad people, you know? Yeah. And we'll do what we can to help him. I mean, I'm not going to let him become homeless or anything, because I'm still his mom. I can't do it. But I can step aside and let him learn how to be independent. Right. Yeah. That's one of the most important things to teach your kids. Yep. Is how to be independent. You know, he has a learning disability. So that's why he he doesn't want to work in a job where it requires. He wouldn't survive a fast food hamburger joint, but he likes working in a warehouse, unloading trucks and loading trucks. He likes that. He loves it. And I can see why he likes it. It's not, you know, stressful. It lets him do what he feels he's comfortable with doing. And that's what yep. you need to be doing in a job, you know, yep. learning disability or not. Yeah. And he can and he can support him and his son on a, a warehouse job. They pay pretty decent. It's yeah. not a it's not usually a minimum wage job. It's a little bit above that. I mean he might still he's not gonna be in a middle class but he can still provide for him and his son. Yeah. And that's what matters, in my opinion. It's not about making tons of money. It's about being able to live comfortably and be happy. And that's what I want for him. Hey, Katie. Hey, Nico and everybody else. Hi. Hi. Who just came in? I don't know. The now. See her? Why can't I see her? I can see her. Oh yeah. wait, I'm looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> <laughs> she is. I don't know. Hey, hey there, girl. I am working on my legit tip vortex because I am about four months behind schedule. <laughs> so, 
Before you start, I want you to tell everybody in the chat who you are and what you're working on, blah, 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 that kind of thing. All righty. So I'm Danella with Danella Stitchery, and I am working on my Legit Kit Vortex Block of the Month. I am on block number or month number six, where I just received month number nine in the mail. <laughs> just, I'm trying to play catch up. Oh, good. This is a this is a long life, so there's plenty of time to try to catch up. Yeah, I won't be able to stay too long tonight. I figure probably about an hour because then I gotta go spend the rest of the evening with the husband and, and my oldest son. Okay, that's fine. Just whatever you can put in there is fine by my. Oh, it's it's busy. it has been a very busy day. <laughs> Don't spread the ketchup on us. You are so funny, honey. Uh -huh. <laughs> ha ha ha. What do you want? Love and attention. Miss Talky Girl. You tried to kill me yet last night, though. Who, the dog or the wife? Nora, the dog. <laughs> I think mine are trying to take me out from sleep deprivation. My, I have a 14-year-old Yorkie that has incontinence, dementia, and partially blind and almost all the way deaf. He wakes oh, me up at like... You? He is, he's starting to show signs of having some form of dementia. Like he'll, he's completely fine, lives scenes and aware, seem like he's aware and everything. And then all of a sudden, he'll wander off into the corner of the room and just stare at the corner. Or he'll come to my sewing room door when I'm sitting in the front room. He'll just walk over to my sewing room door and just sit there and stare at the door. Wow. And, but the moment I go over and touch him, it's like he, like, comes to all of a sudden and like it's jolted back into like reality or something so well, well, I mean he's not it. he's not showing any signs of being unhealthy or distressed or anything like that still happy go lucky jumping around like a poppy so I'm just keeping tabs of him and but he wakes me up at 4.30 in the morning to go potty every day and to get fed. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is not daytime. <laughs> I'm like, you are not an infant. <laughs> well, the reason I said that is that last time when we were, when we were in bed, laying watching movies, her butt was near my head. Oh, you're going to talk about that? Yeah. You see. Started on me when it was like singing. She said she should have gassed you. Yes, yeah, she gassed me big time. Hi, Teresa. Welcome back to a weird conversation. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, Teresa Louise. Hey, hey, Danielle. How are you doing? Good. Just trying to get into a little extra sewing time on my vortex before the guys come and pull me from my room. <laughs> Welcome back, Christine. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. What's up going on over there? I had to log off real quick because I was trying to order food and I couldn't do it with the Zoom window open. So, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, did you make it out of town by any chance? I'm. You don't have to say. Just say yes or no. I did not. No. Okay. I was just wondering. Uh, yeah. We should talk tomorrow if you have time. Okay. Because I need to ask you a couple questions. Oh. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow just with... is January the first. So Tuesday, my son has to go try to get his kid put into school. I did not miss those days. I don't miss them either. <laughs> well, I don't think he's missing any more school than he needs to. Yeah, I did not miss the days of kids being in school. I am so happy that I have adults now. I noticed when I was looking up the information with the school, they, it looks like they have a really good school system there. But it's kind of confusing because it looked like that it was saying if you're an out of town, if you live out of town, you have to pay. 
money for your child to go to that school. And I don't understand what that even means. Okay, so that's under the school of choice, I think. Yes. And so essentially, once when you live in a certain area, you're supposed to go to that district school. And if you want your child to go to a different district school, then you got to be well, then you have to pay extra money for your child to go to that school. And then you got to transport them back and forth yourself. They won't bus you. Right. Yeah. So he won't he won't have to worry about that since he's planning to live in that town anyway. Right. 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 Correct. But are they going to require him to pay money even though he's just now moving there? No. No. I wouldn't think so. Because that's scary because he don't have money to pay for that. No. Nah, no, nah, it's public school. It, that, it, like Donnell said, it's only if you, if I'd send my son to a different county, then I had, would be responsible for potentially paying and um, busing him there, transportation in Georgia, so. Well, the, the, the school, I, I did some research on the school system there, and gosh, they have a lot of uh, uh, positive things for kids, and something called um, STEM. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm thinking that would be good for Blaze, the STEM program, but he can't, he can't get into STEM or uh, there's some other thing about uh, music and um, learning how to grow gardening or something, farming. Oh, agricultural. Yeah. yeah, this agricultural thing that they offer in the third grade. So both of them are offered in the third grade. <laughs> That's good. And he's in the second. But, you know, once they get settled, he might end up on, I think that the STEM would be perfect for him since he's um, kind of like his dad. When I was living in Alabama, the, the same rules applied there where uh, they could join those programs in third grade. Did you have your kids in any of them? Uh, yeah, my son uh, was in a lot of those kinds of programs. And it seemed like, at least to the school he was at, that, like, they didn't do, like, anything, you know, specific. Like, there was no homework or anything like that. But it was more skill building. Uh, so yeah. they, it was more of a community, kind of like a club kind of thing instead of just going about the everyday school things. So he they was able to get clubs for elementary schools. When did that start? Mm -hmm. I don't know that my son had had access to those too, but I don't I don't know when they started. Well the STEM thing looks like it's going to offer technology relating to computers. Um, built, you know, starting from the hardware part standard or the hardware side of which I've seen that because um, Lego, the Lego company also has something that relates to Legos being used to build computer things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that must be about the same thing almost. I know my son was building Lego stuff in his STEAM or in his STEM classes. Yeah. And I've noticed that you know, Blaze is seven and he's already building Technics. Which yeah. is what his dad did at age six. So I'm frankly not surprised by this because they just look at the picture and they build. Yeah, that will be good for him once he yeah. can, once he's old enough to qualify to be in those programs. Yep, I think so too. He's he has a, a, a he's an ADHD kid on top of it. So and um, he sees a ther he was seeing a therapist before before this move and the therapist is trying to hook up a therapist there in Georgia to continue with his therapy to help him learn how to deal with um, certain things that he was doing. And I think mostly he was doing it to get attention. Yeah, the phone's laying over here, baby. Got a message from TID. What is TID? Huh? Oh, yeah, I got one too. I'll answer him later. I'm busy. I'm entertaining people or trying to entertain people. Tommy? First. 
Okay, in Georgia, you don't have to pay to go to another school zone, but you have to provide transportation. That's what Melissa said. And then Lisa says he will probably have to show proof of where he will be living, like his lease agreement to prove he's in that district. Well, right now he doesn't have an address yet. Because they're at the hotel. Which is going to be the tricky part. Yep, that's where the tricky part's going to come in because he's got to find, he's got to look, you know, he's going to be job hunting at the same time, trying to find a place he can rent. I'm hoping we can find a place where he can rent it and pay like so many months in advance or something. That way the the landlord won't be worried about not getting paid while he's looking, you know, looking for work. He had no choice. He was home. He was, it, it's just, it's very complicated. I can't really explain all of it because then I would have to tell the whole thing and I don't want to do that. Um. But between me and my friend, uh, Melanie, we got him across the United States without getting in trouble. He did it in three days. I'm very proud of him. Because oh, he, wow. he traveled to Albuquerque without any problems. Uh, he stayed in Little Rock and he said it was not that bad to him. He didn't think it was. And the last, the third day he traveled through Birmingham and there's something wrong with his blood. Oh, oh. I gotta fix that. Um, and um, yeah, he did really good. I thought he would have trouble in Birmingham because he was traveling during the Christmas season where everybody was going um, to their family. Right. What? Okay. Somebody just said something. What was it? No, nothing? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Is it? You already finished it? Yep. Show show the inside of it so they so know what it looks like, babe. Tommy, can you hear me? That's awesome. Hey Tammy, um Nikolai's talking to you. I see. That's awesome. Make sure everybody else sees it too, baby. I don't know if you see it. I'm sure it's this is uh this is uh this is the front part where you can see the posters outdoor thing. Yeah. That didn't take very long for you to build. Yeah. Interior is for the moment interior is just looking. Oh cool. With a regular theater entrance. So pastry pastry queen says if you don't have an address you fall under the homeless act. They can't discriminate, and he can then go to any school, and the school district has to pay for transportation as well. At least that is how it is in New York. I don't know if it works that way in Georgia or not. But Georgia, we had a choice between Georgia and South Carolina as to where he should go. Because I wanted him to go where there was the cost of living was it freaking skyrocketing high. And, and the area he's in has plenty of warehouse job openings, so hopefully it won't take long for him to get a job. I hope not. So y'all pray he find that he gets hired fast. The sooner he works, the sooner he can find a place to live too. Unless we can find a landlord willing to work with him, because he had he I, he has enough to pay for. If we can find a one bedroom apartment that runs around. Because around that area, a one bedroom part apartment is around between five seventy to seven something, and um, he might have enough to between us and him to pay for like three months rent. And that would at least get him, you know, in a place that has an address. I thought about telling him to go ahead and sign up for a um, post office box, but don't you have to have a physical address to do that? Not that I'm aware of. Because your post office box becomes your address. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about, if you, if you could do that. Because at least then he would have some type of address. 
shown that he plans on sticking around. Well, here's the thing with post office boxes. They're they're not going to accept that to go to school in that district. Yeah, it's not going to be a physical address. Yeah, they they won't accept it because, you know, it's Georgia. It's a big football state. So a lot of people lie about addresses or try to get just a post office box so they can go to that football school or they can go to that sports school or that authority, you know, whatever school they want to. So they've really cracked down and they won't take a post office box. But your son's situation is a little bit different. And, you know, he can show that he's just getting into town. So they might make an exception. But the overall rule is, no, they won't take a P.O. box for your address. Because the only other alternative is for him to use the hotel address of where he's staying at. And I don't think that's a, considered a permanent address either. Right. I know. I would. Yeah, I would. But yeah, those are questions to... that when he goes Tuesday, you know, that he can ask and, and you know, tell him the circumstances. And it's not just somebody trying to put your kid in a certain school for the football team. You know, yeah. it's it's a circumstance of living situations. So, yeah, he wants to put his roots down there. Yeah. Not because of I didn't know. Is there a football team for Carrollton? Is there what? Is there a special football team in Carrollton? I don't think so, but it's just Georgia and football serious. So each probably individual little county or town has their certain football school. Like we're in a district that's a good, that's a big high school football um, school. They were national champions for like three or four years. And then they're, now their basketball team is like really good. So people seek out this school. So, but I don't know with Carrollton. I mean, it's just oh. each individual little little pockets of Georgia that have their, you know, specialties. It's interesting. I never even thought, I never gave any thought yeah. to having to worry about Well, a- the reason why I know that is because when we moved here, we had a few people asking to use our address because they wanted their kids to go to this high school to play football. So, I mean, of course you, I didn't do it because, you know, I can go to jail telling somebody that they live at this address, you know? So, but that's, that's the reason why I know that they do that. Now, Carrollton, like I said, is a different ball game. I don't know. So that's why there's so many, so many discrepancies in how student, what students get to go where then. That's the wrong word. I'm trying to think of what it's, it's called. You know, there's been big discussion about colleges and that. Mm. You know, where parents went to this specific college. And so their kids go to this college because the parents pay donation money. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm sure that's different because that's college, too. You know what I mean? He's yeah. Blaze is only, what, seven? Yeah, he's just seven. He's not even eyeballing football, which is fun. Okay. Wait. I'll be back, Katie. Okay, sweetie. Cute Lego station. Robin says, awesome, Nico. Melissa Fedhouse, to do what? I'm not sure what that question was for. They can't discriminate, and he can then... I don't know. That's sad, Melissa. Unfortunately, we have this issue at my school, and I used to help families with this issue. It's to protect children to get education and food. We also help families find places. So Georgia doesn't do that. Is that what you're saying? And let's see. Wait a minute. That's sad. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I read that. In my, you have to have a permanent address. And if you don't, you go under the McKin- McKinney Bento Education Homeless Ant. Write that down. All this knowledge in this channel, you guys are amazing. McKinley Bento Education, or wait, Bento Educational Homeless Act. Let 
In the U.S., you need a physical address to get a post office box. However, you can get a general delivery at the main post office in your area. Oh, okay. There was a lawsuit about that with a guy that lived under the bridge. Uh, Melissa says that's in New York, not Georgia. Okay. Yeah, any, anyone wants to share any of their knowledge to help me help my son, I will gladly take it. Because I know very little about Georgia because I'm a Florida girl. I just didn't want him going back to Georgia. I mean, going back to Florida. Florida's not a fit. Not a good fit either. No, see, they totally don't care. So they only bark when... The dogs are not barking. Have you noticed? Can you hear the pop noise? Somebody's shooting off fireworks and they're just sleeping. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. Hey, um, Christine, I wanted yes. to talk to you more about us coming to Georgia. Okay. I wanted to have a little chit chat. Okay. Um, it's I know everybody's busy, but and I got family in town. But um when are you looking at coming? Like, do we need to talk like before the third? No, we can talk. Okay. We can talk about it after your family is gone. It's not an emergency. Okay. I just wanted to um have a chat. Okay. Because I might want to hang about longer. Sir, if I'm cleaning the house for you to come, I don't care how long you stay. <laughs> it's the house prepping, getting work for you. So if it's ready one well, day, you know I can cook. You know. <laughs> well, hey, girl, hey. You and me will have to go to the um, uh, farm market or whatever they call it these days and get some fresh okra and let me fry some. Okay. Because I definitely want some fried okra. Okay. I don't know how, how what season it is or, you know, all that stuff, but we'll figure it out. Well, it's in this, yeah, I don't know how soon you'll be seeing okra around. That's the other thing. Because that'll be March. We might not even be able to find okra. Who knows? We can, we can cook together. Yeah, Nikolai makes great soup, um, Christine. All right, I'm down. I am down. It'll be cool being home for a little while and being access to all those grocery stores. I'm going to be like a kid in a candy factory. Right? <laughs> yeah, the dogs are passed out, Melissa. They're laying on the floor sleeping through all that popping going on outside. But I'm pretty sure they're going to bark when they realize we left them inside by without us. I don't want to take them out with us. Because they could of would want to go and bite somebody because they're shooting off noise. Okay, so now I've got this part done. Yep. Now I'm going to join it to be these four pieces. And then I think we should start this mode of blockheads blocks here directly. How many are going to make the block? Give yeah. me a give me a heart for the ones that are going to make the block. I'll pass. I know you're not making it, yeah. baby. <laughs> Soul machine, okay. You do have one single one. Yeah, and I bet it's covered in glass right now. It, it has the cover on it, I think, so it shouldn't be that much on it, unless it fell in between the handle. We find okra all year here in Georgia, Melissa says. Oh, all right then. You hear that? Oh, yeah. Christine? Yeah. That means we're going to go on an okra hunt. Okay. And I want to get it from the farmer's market because it means that it's not been like, you know, processed. Right. I will be back shortly, Katie. Okay. I told um, Thomas when he um, 
stayed in Oklahoma City. He was about an hour away from where his dad was born. He's like, really, Mom? I said, yep. Because he stayed in Oklahoma City and um, his dad was born in Lawton, Oklahoma. I think there's an army base or something there. If you lived in in a residential hotel and had the receipts to prove it, you could use it as your physical. What is a residential hotel? A hotel that um, rents out by the month. Okay, so that's like an extended stay hotel, yes? Um, uh, that I don't know. I mean, some there are some hotels out there that rent out rooms, you know, monthly, yearly, that type of thing. Okay, I'll have to look into that. We got a couple of those in the, our little town. Um, mainly, I think, because there's not that many people that stop overnight at the hotel. So they, you know, try to make money some way. So they turn some of the rooms into, um, you know, monthly. When I used to travel around with Brandon for his job, he was a commercial diver. Uh huh. We would um, do the rooms by the week, unless we knew we were going to be there for a couple months, and then we would rent them for the month. Okay. I need I need to look because I've been using the Booking dot com to get him better prices of where he's staying at and doing it so many days at a time to try to save some money but that's not going to hold out forever it's going to start adding up yeah paying by the week or the month is a lot cheaper they can you can usually get a better rate okay it's already been having to pay you know quite a bit yes. i'm trying to think how long he's been staying in the hotel now um, when he first ended up in the hotel um, Blaze was at school and you know before we before, cause they had like two weeks of school left uh, before they were going to make the move and they had already ended up in the hotel by then and um, Blaze said something to his teacher about having staying in the hotel and Nick Tom's got a phone call from the teacher and the principal what can we do to help you we understand you're staying in a hotel. And Thomas went down there and told him what was going on. And, you know, they didn't, you know, try to take his child or anything else. And, you know, they were, they, you know, they were okay. Now, California has this strange rule that you can't stay in a hotel for when you hit the 30th day, you have to move out of that hotel and go stay somewhere else. And then stay two or three days, and then you can go back to that same hotel if you want to. Which is kind of a weird rule. I don't see what difference it makes as long as you're giving the hotel money. Ah, Melissa calls it long-term hotel. Okay. They usually have many kitchenettes, bathrooms, and beds. Best of luck for your son and grandchild. If you if he can't find schooling in Georgia, maybe he could find warehouse work in North New York State where it's cheaper to live and where he can get schooling. Okay. They are like mini efficiency apartments. Yeah, I was thinking about a studio apartment or efficiency would even work. He doesn't have to have anything fancy right now. He just needs a place to live and get on their feet. And then they can worry about something in the future. You know, save money up to, to get something better.
Teresa, what are you? I'm going to have to take off for a little while here. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you for coming. <laughs> are you going to come back? Um, I'll, yeah, I'll try. I'll see what's okay. happening down downstairs with the old man. Okay. All right. Hey, if uh, it'll be um midnight your time. Wait. Sorry, that's not correct. Let me think. At midnight our time will be eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, six o'clock your time. If you want to come watch the fireworks, it the main fireworks. It'll be at six o'clock your time, Teresa. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Thanks for having me, Katie. Bye, yeah, everyone. Thank, thank you for coming. Anytime. Happy New Year. See ya. Bye. You fair, Christine. Yes. Um, Are you I almost had to do a little surgery and repair them a little bit but yeah I'm just gonna, gonna ask if you're almost finished yeah right any cute let's see That's horrible so yeah I just gotta do a little back surgery on them then I'll be done with them I wish I'd have known all you guys back then when that when all uh, the kids dad passed away we could have took some of his clothes and done that very same thing with them Girl, this is the first. Well, I did another one. He's sitting over there headless because I messed up the nose. So I oh. I had to do this one because it's supposed to be a Christmas present from my mom, but I just haven't finished it. But I'm going to get it in the mail this week to her. So, yeah. But I tell you what, bear making is not in my future. That's this probably why I haven't even thought about considered making a stuffed animal. It is not my cup of tea. I'll just say that. They're all saying it's a cute bear, though. Thank you. Donna says, ah, something happened here. Oh, okay. Finished my last quilt of 2023, the Grove quilt pattern from September So Sampler Box. Yay, me. Congratulations, Donna. Uh, Linda says, cute bear. Christine. Robin says, congrats, style, Donna. Frank's, oh, happy new year, Frank. Good to see you. Uh, Pastry says, that's a cute bear. Hi, Beverly. Joy says, congrats, Donna. You, that must feel good. And Glenda says, love the colors. Thank you, everybody. And I'm about to have this part of this block done, I think. Well, this, this what do you call it, step. I have to say that these colors for this particular batik set is really nice. I am back, Katie. Huh? I am back. Okay, welcome back. Thank you. And Christine, I love that bear. Thank you. Um, I love I walked it back in just as I, as you were showing it. Yeah. My uncle passed this year. So this is from his clothes and his little jeans. And he's adorable, Christine. Uh, bear making's not in my future, but he's almost done. I would work on some of my cotton cuts clues, but I can't do that in Zoom at the same time because then. Jack, my friend, always comes out, and I'm, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on uh, clue. Eh. I skipped well, clue. clue one, two, and I had started with three because mm -hmm. I was doing it with um, uh, Sean on a live. So when I got to looking through my thing, I'm like, wait, I never did one and two, so let's get that done right now because mm. I need to get them all caught up anyway. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see how this looks. I'm going to press these, and then I'll show one of them to you. Oops. This one's not. Let's see if I need to fix that. 
So I got a question for everybody. Okay. What are some of your New Year's good luck things? You mean, like, what do you do at the stroke of midnight for luck? Like here, my son's girlfriend's Mexican, so we eat 12 grapes at the strike of midnight. And you have to have a certain color underwear on for like good luck, good well, joy. You know, certain colors mean certain things. Like, what do you want in the new year? But my absolute favorite is we have to take our luggage and run with it. So like after we eat our grapes and, you know, everybody does the happy new year, we run to the garage, we grab our suitcases and we run around the neighborhood because that signifies lots of travel in the next year. So. Those are our three big things, grapes, underwear, and luggage. <laughs> and of course, tomorrow is Black Eyed Peas, but I think that's kind of standard. So I'm curious to see if there's any other different ones out there. Yeah, let's see what the chat says. Nicola, is there any related things that are done for what? You know, like the walking. Well, the walking. Did you hear what yeah. she said? Oh, yeah. Do Greenlanders do anything on New Year's to 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 um, bring in good luck for that year? Uh, <laughs> so let's see what the chat says then. I've never heard of that before, Christine. Yeah. Like I said, my family had no culture. Well, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, you should have like all your laundry done. You should have money. Oh, money in our pockets. That's another thing. You should have all your laundry done, you know, all the beds made and all that. And I'm like, uh, that's a little bit too OCD for me. <laughs> My house just has a glass of wine. With the suitcases, but all that other stuff, uh, I don't know. You'd be that. lucky if you ever see my bed made. Right? My well, household just has like a glass. I got out of the military is... There's two things that I don't do anymore. One is make my bed, and two is get up early. <laughs> yep. As soon as I hey moved girl. out of my parents' house. Well, I used to make up my bed, but at some point I got where I stopped doing it. Because it's not, it doesn't rank at the top of things to do. It would sure be made, I guess, if we had company. <laughs> So when you stay in a hotel, do you make the bed? That's a good question. I would like to know the answer to that. How many of you make the hotel bed that you spent the night in? I do. Why would you do a thing like that? Well, I'm just asking. Because I've oh, seen people no. make their bed in the hotel. Now, I do. I'm on, if I'm staying in a hotel, I am on vacation. I am not making a bed. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, my husband is former military, <clears throat> so here at home, he has gotten me into a routine of making the bed, and if we don't make the bed, my pup will end up on the bed and under the covers, and I really don't like sleeping with dog hair, so it's more of a necessity move. Mm. That's interesting. I'm pressing this block in case anybody's wondering. I really do not like this one. Close to ten thirty, isn't it, babe? Yes. It's ten thirty now. Okay, it's time to do another. Um. It's 
time to do another um giveaway. Woohoo! What have you already given away? I've given away one twenty-five dollar gift card to Back Corner Shop. So, and we're giving away five of those. Oh, nice! So, who's been on all day? Has everybody been on all day? I don't know. Yeah, let's see who who has been here since I started the live. What time did you start, lady? Besides my me and my husband and. Tammy. And uh wait. And um Denise has been here, I think, for the whole time too. The uh Denise that's in our Zoom. How many has been here since I started the live at six o'clock my time? And while we're uh well, let's see if anybody's going to answer before I tell you what to do. Let's see. Yo, Patty G said she's been here, and Linda saying she's been here. So we've had a couple people that's still been here the whole time. Yep. Yo, Patty G's been here since the beginning. Linda's been here since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, Lorraine else? Young just said she's been here since the beginning. Yeah. Lorraine Young's been here since the beginning. Tangles just says I came in about seven minutes after you started. But I took a nap. <laughs> nice. With the, with the spring running. Oh, hey. Whatever works. Uh, Fran says, I came on about 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that was 6, 7, 8, 10, 10, 10 our time. No. Wait. Eastern Standard Time. That was 8 o'clock our time. Melissa says, I came in just after you started. Yes, I'm about to do the next drawing. I was just waiting for everybody to answer my question. <clears throat> okay, everybody type in exclamation GQ fun. All one word. And you have I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. And then after the five minutes is up, uh, I will draw a name. Everybody can participate. I'm waiting on the channel to roll, so. There, there's the first one. Type in exclamation mark GQ fun. All right, now I can set the timer. Okay, you have five minutes to get your uh, entry in. Joy T was the first winner of the first one. Nice. And uh, I just want y'all to remember now, when if your name is strong, I'm going to uh, tag you or I'm going to highlight you or whatever. And give you my email address and you must email me because it's the only way I can sign you up for a gift card. If you don't, then you won't get the card. That includes even the people sitting in the Zoom. Well, except for me and Nikolai anyway. Okay. <laughs> Yep, you don't get to play. Sorry. Unfair. <laughs> Nikolai wins because he, he gets you there all the time. Huh? Nikolai wins because he has you there. Yeah. Oh, well, I was always giving a hard time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
My husband does the same thing with me. There was a dull moment with me. No, there's not. But the dull moments are not bad moments. They're good moments. Our whole life is a good moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if Misty is still here. Uh, I think, wasn't the Misty that said that she was eating chips and whatever thing? I don't know. I didn't see that. You did, remember? Uh, I, my back was turned to the screen because I was over here pressing. Was far up, but she did. I think it was so. chips and salsa she was eating. What well, did you say? I think it was chips and salsa she was eating. Oh, chips and salsa. Yeah. Uh, well, and I did respond to her that I'm eating screws because I got screw loose. Yeah, you need to show them what you're talking about. I, I did show them that. Yeah, but there's new people in here that were mm -hmm. here earlier. Well, we have some chips here that from Kim's that it look like it's, it, it, it says screws. It look like a screw. Those are awesome. <laughs> yeah, because see, if you don't show it to them, they won't have a clue. Because the first time you told me you were eating screws, I'm like, what? <laughs> Think about. <laughs> And then when he showed me, I'm like, oh, why didn't you just say uh, chips? Like, they look like screws. Because when he said, I'm eating screws, I'm like, I don't, I didn't get it. <laughs> and he does that sometimes. He'll play a prank and he'll say some off the wall thing and I'll be sit sitting there like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and um, to the newcomers that uh, haven't see, seen me building, I mean, they can see me building this. It's, uh, I'm making a theater. A theater that looks like this. Oh, these blocks oh. are going to be pretty. I'm running the second floor now. Hey, you should see the front of my black shirt, babe. <laughs> Full of, uh... It's got thread hair all over it. I don't know that. This is what happens when you wear black. Gonna have to get the vacuum cleaner to it. Well, the hand vac might get it off. Oh, these blocks look so good. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am just thinking I love this fabric. Because it looks so good the way they designed it to come together. Okay. You have one more, a couple more seconds. If you did not put in exclamation mark GQ fun, uh, and you don't do it right this instant, you're going to miss out. Because yeah. I'm about to draw for the next gift card. Did anybody else add anything in there? Thank you. The exclamation? Oops. No one? Okay. Ah, Jan's putting one in. All right, hurry up, you guys, because I'm about to do it. Why is it doing it? Okay, all right, I'm going to draw the next winner. The winner is Donna Dixon. Congrats, Donna. Uh -huh. Congratulations, Donna Dixon. Now let me go get my email address. Oh, 
I don't know about you, but getting a um, Fat Quarter Shop gift card is pretty cool. And why don't you keep the rest? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I want to give back to these guys because they... There you know, is. what What have I learned from being with you, babe? You do know what I mean. Being generous is a good thing sometimes. And Nikolai, is a, Nikolai has always been very generous, haven't you? Yeah. And he also forgives people a lot faster than I do. What do you know? It already did it. Congratulations, Donna. Donna says, woo hoo, thanks. All right, she's actually here too. Good. Now I can get her name programmed in here so that I can give her my email. Okay, Donna, what you need to do is I'm about to um, share my email address for Greenland Quilter. Although it says Living Greenland, it's the same thing. Um, you need to email me so that I can set up a gift card to Fat Quarter Shop that can be emailed back to you. That's why I need your email address. So here is my email address for you to email. And congratulations, you're the second winner. Sometimes when you give, it's a good, or to me, I think giving is a good thing. You're, you're paying it forward. You're helping someone else out. It doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you can do it. Because sometimes there's times when you can't do it, and then something happens and someone helps you out. I'm not saying you have to do good to get good. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's it's good to be good. All right, here is which way is this supposed to be facing? All right. Where's the picture of this block? Oh, so B is supposed to be down. Okay. And T. Oh, wrong way. Put you like that. Okay, here's the next block or part of the block for this clue. This is what it looks like. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so we will have the next drawing at 1230, but we will be going outside at 10 minutes till 12, our time, so that we can, hopefully, I want to stand out there in front of the lake is where I want to go. Do you think the footing's going to be okay getting down it, babe? Yeah. Okay, and then that way you can see more of the fireworks in the air because we'll be more at a distance. And we'll probably stay out there until we think it starts to wane a little bit, and then we'll come back in. So um, whoever is sitting in the Zoom, can y'all manage the channel while we're outside? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because he, he, hey, he's going he's gonna to make sure I get down there safely, and I don't fall on my face. Okay, yeah, Katie, in a few minutes, I'm going to be taken off for the evening, so. Okay, Donnell. Thank you for coming. Babe, I need... Um, oh, you're welcome. Thank you invi for inviting me. Yeah, hey, you know, Zoom sewing is fun. Yeah. Regardless of how you're doing it. This will be my last time, though. Okay, so... Glenda Hyde says it looks like a fish. It's cute. Thank you. Robin says nice. Denise says nice block colors. Andrea says me. Uh, Jackie says bye, Teresa Louise. And Joy T says congratulations, Donna. 
Linda says, yeah, I like shopping the flash sales at Fat Quarter Shop. Yeah, me too. Linda says, yes, I've never had one and would have been nice for my birthday. That's just past. Oh, well, there's still four more to be, or three more to be given away. Hey, babe. Mm -hmm. You know, I am sweating over here. I don't know why, but I am. Okay, let me get this wrap up off my ironing station. All right. Let's start the next portion of this. Sure. Thanks, honey. I'm sorry. Oh, I was two hours. Then. Two hours? Yeah, I mean, for, uh, when you, for your. Uh, oh, the drawing? <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to be sewing some more flying geese, looks like. Okay, so I need a, what size are we using on this one? We are sewing small D triangle to the top of right of medium A, and we're going to make four of those. So, one. Two, three, four, oh. We have one missing. <clears throat> I'm sure I didn't sew two in one. No, nope, doesn't look like it. Yeah, I knocked it off on the floor or something. Okay, I'm heading out. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Happy New Year. Bye, yeah, Nana. you too. And just for if anybody wants to know and all, I may do an improv live tomorrow. Sometime or another tomorrow. I have no idea. I got the day off of work, so I might jump online. Okay. Sounds good. Take care. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Mm. We all got quiet. <laughs> what? We all got quiet. We're all deep yeah. in thought. <laughs> Maybe we need to do something route to rouse everybody up. Mm. Get up and we can take a few shots, Katie, like we did last year. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. Hey, babe. Yeah. We need shot glasses for the crown. Because I'm definitely going to do that. Oh. That's me. Uh -huh. I am missing a triangle, you guys. Oh, oh that's not good. When, I, when I'm missing something, Katie, I always say that I, I put it up and I hid it for myself. I put it up in yeah, a safe spot. It's just laying on the floor and I didn't realize it was on the floor. Or it's, yeah. It's got to be here somewhere. They're usually not missing clue pieces. Not when this one hadn't been opened. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. 
because I never, I usually never ever have one missing. But I've been moving that board back and forth. Well, I can use my oops kit. Make one. I'll let them know if, unless I find it in the next day or so. Hey. Hmm? I need your eyeballs, please. Uh, I can send it to you. Yeah, you could. But that means you have to come over here. See if you see a triangle laying somewhere that looks like that. So I have I have it visually seen. Because your eyes are better than mine. Oh, you can do it. Oh. Oh, I need to get on that. Mm -hmm. No, I don't see it laying up here anywhere. It's just one I'm missing. I needed four of them and I only have three. I thought it would be sitting out there somewhere. Nor I know. Daddy's trying to look for something. <coughs> Okay, all right. What time do you want to take that first shot, Christine? I, I, I'm ready right now. Say the word, girl. I just got to go up and get my drinky yeah, drink. It's Eastern Standard Time, so it's not that late. I mean, not that early. What are we drinking? <laughs> crown? Or I don't know what oh. she's drinking, but I'm going to take a shot of Crown. I'll pass I mean, the Crown, but I will find something to drink on. If you got alcohol, break it out. I'm gonna do a shot. Ready or like soon, Katie? Whenever you're ready. All right, let me run upstairs real quick. Grab something. Okay. Yeah, because I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave Uncle B here to keep y'all company. Yep. <laughs> oh, Uncle B looks like he's had a little bit too much to drink already. Who has? <laughs> the uncle has. No, the bear, the teddy bear, you know, it's Uncle B's clothes, so he's flopped over, but he's good now. I'll be back. I'm going to grab something. Okay. I will raise my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> just, just so that everybody knows, or uh, full disclosure here anyway, or transparency, what do you have to do? I'm not a big drinker, and this bottle of Crown I brought with me last year, right? And I drank some of it last year with Christine on New Year's Eve, but the bottle hasn't been touched since then. Since up. So this is it's black. It's Ooh, it's it's up. It's now that shit is fire. In front of the window. In there. Yeah. Uh, our room. Oh, our room. Oh. Oh, so anyway, that's what yeah, I'm going to take a shot of. You're not going to take it? You're not going to take it? Come on, Walt. That's right. I can't drink too much because I'm going to be walking down there to video the... All right. So whenever... Okay. Any of you who wants to take a shot of alcohol, you should get it out because we're going to do a shot in a minute. And like I said, I'm not much of a drinker, but I will drink a couple shots with my friends. Let's see. Robin says, is anyone going to do the 12 number boxes to finish UFOs? What 12 number boxes? What are you talking about, Robin? 
I'm definitely going to finish some UFOs. That's a plan I have planned. Yeah, I can talk to y'all about that. In fact, I hate looking a piece I lost and finding one. I didn't know I lost. Yeah, Frank. Nikolai's come over here and looked, and it's nowhere to be seen. Okay. Well, oh, moonshine. Oh, my gosh. Moonshine? No, thank you. Uh, uh -uh. There ain't no way I would drink moonshine. I will give it a try. <laughs> it burns like a you know what. <laughs> no, this is the good stuff, Katie. This is um the eggnog little creamy moonshine ones. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, I can't drink that. I mean, they're still a little rough, but not as rough as the real moonshine. So. I think Tammy went to hunt some alcohol, oh. too. Okay. My girlfriend's um, upstairs. She's going to grab something and come down to was went to hunt alcohol? I think it's it Candace. Some. Yeah, I'm I'm not uh drinking any alcohol tonight. I've started some new meds. And so I'm gonna hold off on alcohol until I know exactly how those meds are gonna work. And so it'll probably be March or April before I can even think about even just one shot. Who said that? Me. Timmy. Oh, Tammy said it. Okay. Yeah. Couldn't tell who it was. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking down, so my bad. <laughs> but there's one thing you could do, though, Tammy. Hmm. What's that? Put, put a coke. Put a put a coke on your in the class. Try to take it. Uh, pretend it was. Uh, pretend it's alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm not getting a shot glass, but I've got my my. Soda. Okay, whatever works. <laughs> I got my caffeine. Okay. Um, are you ready, Christine? Or do you want to wait? No, oh, there's Candace. She just got back. Did she walk back out again? Oh, no, no, I'm here. My girlfriend, she's in town from Texas. She's coming down too real quick. Okay. And then well, I'm going to fill my that, shot glass up with a drink. What's that? Oh, that. And then after that, I'm going to go on mute and pause for a minute while I go upstairs and eat. Okay, that's fine. Well, so this just... is the shot glass I'm going to use. Oh, a little closer. Will... Yeah, hang on. Uh, green. This is this is a skein shot glass. Yep. Right there. Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty. We were just there this year. Well, you can tell that. Well, you can tell what you've been experiencing there when you about talk about. Two yeah, we can ways. talk about the oceans. Yeah, that would be a fun thing to talk about because not everybody gets to experience that. All right, I got my shot poured. Anyone else going to join us? You can <laughs> use drinks. You don't have to use uh, alcohol. All right, so. Here's my Hold thing. on. Hold on. He's coming. Hurry up, bro. I was just going to talk for. I just okay. want to say thank you, everybody. This will, I just, I'm doing this in honor of all of y'all because, like I said, I'm not big on drinking. And I like drinking with Christine because she'll join me because she's not much of a drinker either. Oh, girl. Girl, just I'm not on the Zooms. Uh oh, the whole gang might be coming down. Oh, wait a minute. We're waiting on someone. Sunburn. Sunburn. We're waiting on someone. Hold up, everybody. Darius, they're coming down. Oh, the whole gang is coming down. My son. It's coming the in. He's getting All right. So, oh, oh, this, okay. So she is uh, changing. So, okay, we got like six people. So, you got, you got to get sick. She's in the shower? shower? Okay, yeah. we'll do yeah. another one when she gets out. They're coming down. It's the new year. I mean, it is, and we're staying home. No driving. That's so. right. I mean, you know, like, like who gets to take shots with the clothing ladies? That's, That's right. right. This is the year. Right. Well, and you're I not driving ladies clothing people, because I'm sure we got a few. All right. Oh, uh oh, we're down in full force. All Come right. In, Are y'all ready? Cheers. Oh. Cheers. 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 You are not going It's the big shot glass. D. Yeah, I took the whole thing. Ooh, we delicious. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh.
just use the stick. You know, sometimes I think it kind of tastes like cinnamon a little bit. <laughs> One down. Yeah, pick your poison. That's right. <laughs> I love that saying. <laughs> Drink to the new year 2024. Cheers. Yay! Absolutely. <laughs> we survived another year. Yeah. <laughs> and we didn't kill anyone. We didn't kill each other. Uh, well, we would never do that, babe. <laughs> I know. We won't. We get along too well for that. And I wouldn't still be here if that was the case. That is a fact. <laughs> so I'm going to improvise and cut me a triangle out of one of my fat quarters or fat ace that came in my oops kit. Oh, how many people know what an oops kit is? Donna's in here. Hi, Donna. Welcome to the live. All right, let me get this triangle cut. Without messing it up. Okay. Let's Joy's asking if it's midnight there, Katie. No, it's not midnight. It's, uh, what time is it, babe? 11. It's 11. We have one more hour to go before we ring in the new year. <clears throat> so it won't be too much longer. Hey, if those in the Zoom, if you haven't stood up and stretched, you should get up and stretch. Not at all. Well, in the right. chat, get up and stretch for that matter if you're sewing. But it would be fun to walk through on the ice. Yeah. Well, we don't know how much snow is going to be down there in that valley. I just want to get down there where we can get a good a good uh angle so they can see everything. Ice, ice, baby. That's right, there's no snow on the ice right now. Forgot about that. It's all ice right now. Because the wind came and took all the snow away. Okay. Let's see here. I need to backtrack here because I think I missed something. Okay. Frank says he's working on pieces of quilts of, is that 23 inches? Or you're making 23? Working on the pieces of the quilts of 23. Oh, okay. You're working on UFOs. Don't drink. It's safer for everyone. <laughs> Robin, I don't drink enough to be dangerous. <clears throat> Fran says she's got water. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, everyone. Happy New Year, wherever you are. Yeah, Europe's already in the New Year. And we're an hour away from it. Melissa, love oops kits. Glenda says five more hours to midnight here. Frank says, ah, practice. Mar Robin says four hours here. Frank says four hours. Lori says uh, four hours here too. Linda says it's 7 p.m. here in Kentucky time. Joy T, I'm drinking to the end of the 23 is I'm drinking to the end of 23. It was a horrible year for me. The next drink will be for a great 2024. Yes, indeed, Joy. Uh, Robin says, yes, Frank, you live about an hour away from me. And Joy says it's only 8 p.m. here. Yeah. You know, 23 has definitely been rough for many. You know, I don't know how many. I know some of you know about this, but the first the first fir the first thing that happened in our 23 life is my husband's ship 
being crashed into being T-boned by another fishing vessel. Oh, God. This happened in January. You know, um, there have been all kinds of things that were going on with that ship in 2022 between just everything. And then to have that happen, it started our year off roughly. Because when I got that phone call and he told me, I'm like, what? And somebody says, well, you're a wife of a sailor. You know things happen. Not people crashing into my husband's ship, I don't. <laughs> Got to qualify that, know something that happens. <laughs> well, now we know it does because of dummies. Funny thing about that is that six months later, the same ship hits an iceberg. It's bigger than its size. Yep. <laughs> they ran right into it in the same spot they ran into Nikolai's ship with. Oh my gosh. Damaging the same space again. Uh. Same crew. I mean, same officer. I sure hope they fired them all. Because that shouldn't have happened. No, that definitely shouldn't have happened. Have a lick, yeah. I mean, the fact that you could see that the iceberg was bigger than the ship, there was no way they could have not seen it. Sounds to me like somebody left the bridge again. I was uh, yeah. looking. Yeah, that too. I don't know how you miss a big iceberg. That's that just doesn't even come. It makes no sense. Okay, we need four Ds. Can I see Donna come in here? From Handmade uh -huh. Baking? Yeah, she was in the chat for a minute. Did she say anything when she was spoken to? Um... I don't remember. I know she was saying hi to everybody for a minute. Happy New Year, all. There, I see that she said that. I think that's the only thing she said. Yeah, that's the only thing she said. Yep. Aww. She's a sweetheart. Somebody's sleeping behind, yeah, Robin says sleeping behind the wheel. Talking about the chip, honey. Yeah. They were doing something, because I don't see how you could just not see that. They had somebody on board that was on the, what was the aft, honey? Where they videoed that, or took a picture of that uh, iceberg? Yeah. Yeah. In the mid midsection. They were on the midsection when they were taking a picture of the iceberg when they crashed into it. No, it wasn't. They not after, it was afterwards, right? Yeah. Afterwards. <laughs> Joy T says, what was that captain drinking or smoking? <laughs> Where can I get smoking. some? Funny she mentioned smoking. This ship, when it went, they, they took it to um, Denmark to fix the damage to it from where they crashed into Nikolai's ship. And while it was in port, Customs paid the ship a visit. And it was four kilos, right, babe? Four, yeah. So they found four kilos of cash. Oh, goodness. In the cargo hold. They never did determine who it belonged to, so they let them leave. I don't know. Um, I'm sure there was some, they're still investigating it. I don't know what they're doing. Because that's Denmark. But I think Customs probably contact Faroe Islands because they knew the ship was going to stop in Faroe Islands. And so when they got to Faroe Islands, Customs boarded them again and found five? Oh, yeah. They found another five kilos. Oh, goodness. Oh, this gets worse, you guys. After they crashed into 
the iceberg. They went back to Faroe Islands, right? Yep. They went back to Faroe Islands, and someone found four more kilos no. in. One point eight kilos. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, you didn't tell me that. It was one point eight kilos. They still found on that ship. Oh. oh. They must not have found it the first go around when they were in Faroe Island. Someone was determined to get that to Greenland. We still don't know who was doing the sneaking it into the country crap. So even small countries have issues with that kind of thing. But at least it's not fentanyl or anything like that. This one is not cut right. Oh, I know why this is cut weird. It's because I cut this triangle. That's why it's a little strange. So it was pretty, you know, it, it was scary when you get a phone call. And the husband says, you know, our ship got crashed into and he shows you pictures. And I'm like, you know, it was just a few feet above the waterline. If it had been any lower, they would have sunk. And fortunately, because they were, they had just did a shift change. So most of the sailors were still in the galley. And Nikolai and them were all where they were supposed to be at. Because the side of the ship they were on was where they normally work. So, um, and the ship got hit on the other side of it. So, um, yeah, that nobody got hurt. Some people got thrown across the room when it happened, but nobody was injured enough that they required medical treatment. That's so a blessing. Yeah, I'm so thankful for that because it could have it could have been worse. You know, so I think they had just changed the shift, what, 30 minutes before it happened, babe? Uh, we're, we're in the middle of it. We just have to change the shift. All right. My next piece is done. All right. You're coming along with that. So now I'm on to round four. That was round three. <clears throat> Did I find a 99 knee control? Oh, Frank says, I, fa I found a 99 knee control, a 1926 and a 1949, 15 through 91. I'm in love with it. Probably talking about a soul machine, right? Um, Google what it is. It's better if you look it up because it's hard for me to explain what it is. Joyce says, how long ago was that? This it was this year in January. Oh, when they when were they get when were they get going through Prince Christian Sound? Uh, <laughs> it was July when they got caught with all that. But it, it's bad because it makes um all fishing vessels look bad. Because now Customs is going to want to constantly board them, especially if they've come to Denmark or something. And it's going to make it harder for those who did nothing wrong to be stopped and boarded and lose time getting from one destination to the next. Hey, that comment from Frank about the 99 knee control, 1926, 1949. He's talking about a singer. Oh, okay. So that means there's that many he found? <clears throat> One, okay. two, three, four? Yeah. Oh, and Robin Marie, no, this is actually all paper piecing. This is not applique. The, um, the project that I'm working on is a Judy Niemeyer quilt. Um, Are you being serious, Joy T? <laughs> it's not it's not near a, a drug 
problem. I mean, it's not as, I guess, addictive as, say, what's going on these days. You know, these country, this country is way behind on that kind of thing, which is a good thing, in my opinion, because I couldn't imagine having that hot, the really bad stuff here. It would really cause problems. Because um, Greenland has social issues, and number one is alcohol, right? Yep. And number two, or is it suicide and then alcohol? One's in number one position, and the other's in number two. Those are the two main social issues. Drinking too much, and the other, ending yourself. All right, so stop it. Going to sleep. Tammy, they're saying that's gorgeous. Thank you. I uh, the original pattern was done in six colors, and I decided at four that that was plenty. So I'm just glad it's coming together. And this is going to be a tree, tree, uh, tree skirt. It could I could do it as a tree skirt, or I can um, do it as a like a table topper, something like that. I haven't decided which one I'm going to do. Table topper. Mm hmm. It will. Um, I have another Judy Niemeyer or Quilt Works pattern that I want to do, and I want to see about entering it into a couple of shows, but I was a little terrified, <laughs> to be honest, so I yeah. decided to start with this one, and it, you know, it's discontinued, so I couldn't reprint anything, which was a little terrifying, but... I'm kind of happy with it. It's going to come out 60 inches by 60 inches. If it were square, it's going to be octagonal. But Fine. It sounds like a good side one. Yeah. <clears throat> I also, I've got, um, I've got a long arm. It's a sit down long arm. Mm -hmm. And I got it three weeks ago, something like that, maybe four. I can't remember exactly how long ago uh, somebody was selling off. And she was selling it for half the price that she paid for it because she just wasn't going to quilt anymore. She was selling off all her machines, her quilt kits, everything. And so I managed to pick it up for a really good price. And I don't have a lot of experience with it yet. Mm -hmm. So I've got two quilts to get quilted. And I've got a third that I'm ripping stitches on to quilt. Then I'll have this one and at least one other quilt to do that I can quilt and not worry if my quilting isn't perfect before I get ready to do ones for show for next year. Oh, wow. That's, that's fabulous. Thank you. It's kind of been my plan on how I'm going to work it. Now, whether or not I do very good at it, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. I had a call from my daughter. She went back home to college, so heard her her house. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back.
to two red ones two days. Unless I'm doing something wrong here. I better go back and look to see what it Ah, I did do something wrong. Oops. <laughs> That's funny. Do you have to have a date with Jack? Yes, it sure looks like it. I understand now what why I have two red pieces because I used them in the wrong thing. Oops. And that was from the other night, which means I was already tired by then. And I'm probably going to switch to working on that Moda one pretty soon just so I won't be goofing up my PMQ. I found the days that I need Jack more guess who, are the days guess I don't who was just playing me. chicken. I just ran out of bobbin thread. <laughs> oh man, I'm real. I played that a lot. What yesterday. Were you saying, Tammy, before I interrupted you? If I don't put Jack nearby, then that's usually when I need him. If I put him nearby, that's usually when I don't need him. Yeah, I understand. That's how my luck runs. <clears throat> I ran out of bobbin. Which I ran out of Yeah, I ran out earlier and I already pre-wound three bobbins just in case. Well, I have two more pre-rounds to use though, but that means I'm gonna have to do some winding tomorrow or the next day. Well, there's nothing in the New Year's resolutions booklet about not having wound bobbins starting the new year. Yep. It's just boring to have to wind bobbins, man. My but machine will wind as I sew. Like no. it, I can I can set it and it will wind separately while I sew, but I always feel guilty because then I want to watch my bobbin. Yeah. And see, I'm going to be playing chicken with the thread spool pretty soon, too. Because it's getting low. I was about to be doing that yesterday, and then I prepped all of this so that all my first first and second pieces were pre-attached so that I could fly through these. Because otherwise, I'd be trying to figure out how to lay each one for those first and second pieces. So I played thread chicken yesterday and used up the last of that thread spool to get it going yesterday. It's funny how um, how much thread we end up going through when we're really we're really accomplishing something because um, this year I had finished seven quilt tops. Oh wow! And I I've gone through two of these large size um, dubs. And this one that I'm playing chicken with now is my third one. So it tells me that I've been doing something. Yeah. I do not keep track of how much thread I start with. I really need to for 2024. I've started keeping my thread spools. I think. Yeah, I've been using the small ones for like uh, quilting small quilts and stuff. If I want to use the same color on yeah. part of a book. But I'm chiefly used Dove, and I told Nikolai a month ago, I'm like, you know, I need to order Dove because I'm down to my last roll. And then I had bought, uh, um, uh, 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 let me think, Missouri Star in November had a sale on this size spool of Dove. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. It was $30, I think, and normally it's like $45. Ooh, but you see the inside Oh no. Um, and I knew that I might have a problem when, when I pulled out my hardware for my um sewing machine, it has something that's supposed to be put up in here, but I can't get it to seat properly. So what I did is I went onto Fat Quarter Shop's website and they have a a portable um spool spool stand for big okay. spool. Yeah, and I ordered one. They I found one for seventeen dollars, and 
and you can set it down in front of the machine and use it like that. Because I noticed that uh, Tiffany uses a portable stand. Well, I've looked at using a portable stand, but my whole table, my whole machine table that it's on, um, mm -hmm. I can move it a lot of places. So I really don't have a lot of room behind my machine back where the thread would need to sit. I've looked I at it. I have some space back there, even, you know, even if I was in the sewing room, I would yeah. still have enough space back there to put one. Um, and I do right now because we we moved my whole sewing table, but um, so there's always been that one bit of space back there. Yeah. So that that's okay. But I, I understand what you're saying about not having enough space. But I don't know what other alternative there is. I don't know if if you can buy a longer spool that can be mounted up on that thing. I think that there is an attachment because I know that they do it for the embroidery spools, especially the larger embroidery spools. Okay. But not while I was in uh, Denmark, I'd go by the shop where I bought my um, home machine from and ask her about it. I may have to look into it because I'm, I'm buying the smaller spools just because that's what fits on this machine. But I may have to to find other options. Now for my portable machine, of course, I don't want to bring a big spool with me everywhere. So I'll still have the small spools for it. Yeah. Big fun. Is that part two? Yep. Okay, show everybody so they can see it and the inside. Uh, as you know that I saw it with part two and this is how it looks like. And that's so awesome. When you do like this, you can see the interior of the uh, movie. Oh, is that yeah. going to sit on top of the other? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. These creator sets are really cool how you can break them apart without having to tear the whole thing down so you can see what's inside of it because they they get really detailed on the inside. But. I remember him showing us the first part. This is that first part. As you can see, it's that on the first floor. Babe, show, show them that small creator one in there where it opens up like a book. That one in there. That is either the, um, it's one of those sitting over there that are mine, the smaller one. A gingerbread one, I think, that one is. Right. One of them opens up kind of like a book. I think it's one of them, isn't it? That one behind there? Doesn't that open like a book? Yeah. No, that's not it. Where's the one that opens like a book? There's a Carol book. Thing. Is that the one that opens like a book? No. Okay. It was a house that opened like a book. It was a small one. Okay. Oh, I can't think of the name of it now. It might be in my sewing room. Now, do y'all leave these uh, Legos set, set up? Or do you just um, take them apart for a while? The, the creators that are of this town that he's building. We have a big long shelf running across the wall in the bedroom. We're probably going to be adding another one so he can continue on with it. Um, but I think what we're going to end up doing, because he needs more space, and since he plays in the sewing room with me, I'm hoping we can get Permagreen to just close in that window and make it a wall, you know, solid wall. Yeah. Because they got to do the new siding on the outside of that side where it got damaged anyway. And if we do that, then we could put a whole big shelf on that wall. And he could put all of his, you know, more of his Legos out. Because I'm fine with that. I don't need, I mean, I have enough shelves and stuff for my stuff. I don't need more shelves. But, you know, if he wants to put them in there, I'm good with that. Because we, our house is not that, our house is, 
it's a good size house, but the problem, the big, big, biggest problem we have is we have very low ceilings, so you lose a lot of wall space because of that. Yeah, you can't build up. Nope, you can't. I mean, in the sewing room and in our bedroom, we can actually touch the ceiling with our hand without having to stand on our toes. Oh, goodness. You, you can barely get a 60-inch bookshelf in the rooms. You have to tote it in sideways and then turn it where it's laying horizontal. And then you got to slowly lift it up without scraping the ceiling to get it up there right. Oh, my gosh. So it's, it's, there's like this much space between the ceiling and that shelf. Whoever built this house must have been a very small person. <laughs> what about said, do they think Greenlanders are all short? Mm, I don't know what percentage, but there is a big, the older generation, yes. There's quite a few. Um, but Greenlanders are starting to become taller. And that's probably because, as we all know, when food's more abundant, what happens to human beings? Yeah. And you know they're living in bet. They're living better. They have better housing. The whole thing. You know your body uh, evolves more or less. Or you you get a Greenlander will marry a Danish person, and Danes are tall. You had this one. Yeah. No, that wasn't what I was talking about. But you could show them that one. I forgot you had that one. No, it was a house that opened up, and you could look inside of it. It opened up like that. Oh, you mean my Ghostbuster house? No, no, no. It was a small house. It was small, remember? That one could open, too. That one opened up like this? Yeah. Well, that must be the one I'm talking about then, baby. It just didn't look like it. Was it so? Okay, well then, yeah, show them that one because that one's, I like the little ones like that too. And they're not, they don't take like this. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh. Show that to them. That is the coolest thing ever. And it's a creator. Here I am looking for a house and I already have it in my hand. <laughs> Sorry, I saw it. It didn't look like it was the same. Thing is, there's too many this one. Look how it opens up, you guys. I can do it that again, and I just... That's cool. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah, and that's what I like about the creators. The Especially these smaller ones, they open up like that. They're like a little book. So when you open mm. it up, you can see what's inside of it. And I'm and, and I I am sure that everybody's familiar. Oh with wait, them. honey, they want me to make you big. Go back to the uh, Zoom. I'm going to pin pin you because they some of them didn't see what you were showing them. Hold on. Oh, come on, let me pin you. Okay, now they can probably see you. Give the thirty second delay. Front part, side, and back. He's still not the main thing, Katie. Still not on the main. No. Why is it not on? Oh, because there's all y'all? Or do I have to do some? Hang on a minute, honey. Let me see something. You have to do something. I probably have to do something. It's, post it's pinning Greenland quilter instead of Nikolai. <clears throat> what now? Is it was pinning Greenland quilter camera versus Nikolai. Well, I, I pinned. I, or I can move it to you. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Let me unpin this one then, since it's not showing you for some weird reason. Okay, I'll just pin myself. How about that? Okay, now you can show them. As you can see, this is how it looks like from the front or uh, the back door and side and front. I think that's a beach house, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a beach house. They're not going to just open it like this. I mean, it will be... That is so awesome. I that's love cool. this. 
And I'm sure that you you guys are familiar with uh, Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol. Uh huh. This is uh this has been a gift for us uh, of how it looks like, and it, it it's like a a book as you can see, Christmas Carol uh -huh. Charles Dickens, and I can open it like this. Sorry, I can open it like this. And oh, you can have no. some. So have you seen the flowers and stuff, um, Tammy? The Lego flowers? I've seen them in the boxes here in the U.S., but I haven't seen them put together. Oh. <laughs> You're in for a surprise. You are in for a treat. <laughs> Ready? This is just a. Uh... Collection. Oh, those do look gorgeous. Those are the daisies, or the Gerbers. Uh, Gerbers over there. They're right. around there somewhere. It was these. Yeah, yep. this is the Gerber. Look, those are so pretty. And you never have to water them. Nope. <laughs> those are awesome. And you, okay. you, you know what a lupin is, right? I think so. Or lupine. Some of oh, us yeah, call yeah. It lupine. Here's a lupine with all three stages of the flower in it. Whoever That's thought really of this awesome. was had it going on because when they first come out, they're green like the top you see uh -huh. here. They and are. Then as they change the color, they turn to this. Uh, I'm not sure what this color is. And then when they're finished, they turn from purple to bluish purple. Those are awesome. So whoever thought this up was on top of it. Even lavenders here. Yeah, and this is lavender. That's so pretty. And. Um, Legos had recently make some new flowers that is uh roses. Okay. We have some roses, don't we? In there? A it's... couple, uh, I think. We also have that Zen garden in there. That Zen garden's got glass all over it right now. Oh, and uh, Joy asked whether or not I've got a podcast. I think you mean if I've got a channel. I do, but I don't have much of anything on it. Everything is back from 2020, and I really didn't know what I was doing. So I plan to be opening up my own YouTube channel within the next month or so of 2024. So I, I do have that in the works, uh, but it is not ready yet. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I need to unthin myself. Who, who was that standing up? Was that Candace? Yeah, that was Candace standing up. Okay. She flashed across the screen. Okay, let me back scroll because I think I missed something. Yeah, there's a lot of chatter. Yeah, um, that's why I'm going to back scroll and read it. Just had a bunch of fireworks in front of our house, Melissa said. Promises talk. Joy says, so cute. Linda says, so much better, thanks. Tangle says, the little surfaces. That is so cute. Lori says, very nice. Linda says, that's awesome. Grandma D, that's so beautiful. Just joining. <laughs> Uh, Math Geek says, fun, like the Fisher-Price farmhouse and Fisher-Price castle I had as a kid. Yeah, it is similar. Linda says, wow. Linda says, cool. Hey, M says, love it. Beverly says, awesome. That is neat, says Frank. Melissa says, the flowers are so cool. Yeah, I haven't bought the succulents yet, Melissa. Hmm. Um, there are so many different flowers. I cool. like the Christmas carol and the flowers. Um, and then Jean says, good evening, late to the party, but wanted to hop on at least to say hello. Hi, Jean. And then Grandma D says, those are Legos? Yes, they are. <laughs> and Tangle says, hello, Jean. And Jean says, these flowers are amazing. Yes, they are. Right now, I'm on the third, third part of that uh, uh, theater thing. Because I'm about to make the roof part. Yeah. 
Katie, what's your last finished quilt for the year? The one you finished so far. What quilts have I finished this year? You mean the whole thing? Well, I mean your last Just one. Quilt tops. You, yeah. The latest one. Uh probably the last uh yeah, the last one. Which one did I finish last? Because I finished seven quilt tops this year. That's good. Um which one was the last one? I want to say it was my um, Piazza. Uh, I I uh, I finished with everybody else on the the whole day, so except for the border. And then right before the accident in my sewing room, I got the border on it. Um, but I finished several quilt tops this year. That's more than I've ever done in one year. Yeah. So I've been sewing like mad. Did you, uh, you still working on the one you commissioned? You were commissioned for? Oh, you want, I, I have an update about the commission one. What, what did you, what did I tell you the last time we talked about it? Uh, last I heard you were kind of showing what you were going to do, but. That's, oh, that's been a while so you ago. Didn't hear about, but, you didn't hear about getting, getting paid for part of it. And then, and then suddenly I wasn't going to get paid for the other half of it? No, I didn't. I miss, must have missed that part. <laughs> okay, so let me update you a little bit. Um, a year ago when Anda and I sat down to talk, Anda wanted me to make him a quilt top, and he wanted it to be in blues. So I, I used Batik's, actually. And um, I used Becca's pattern, Exploding Star. And uh, it's about... I don't know, 108 by 108. It's quite big. Mm -hmm. And um, about, and I had talked about how do you discuss money when you're doing a quilt? Because we we had an agreement he would pay me 500 US dollars. And when I said that's what I wanted him to pay me, he didn't even flinch about it. So as far as me and Nikolai knew, there wasn't a, a problem with paying me 500 bucks for it. And um, so... I was, I think I was talking either in Teresa's chat or somebody's chat. And I said, when should I ask for the first down payment? And there's, and a lot of people said, you never ask for money up front. No, I didn't, I didn't think I needed to because, you know, Nikolai and Anda has known each other for, I don't know, a long time and they work together. So, you know, they have that thing going on. And, um, so in, it was September when I, was it, wait, it was, uh, when did we when did we start putting money down on Carnival? What month was that? Yeah. Wasn't that June? Or was it September? No, it couldn't have been. Because we're about to hit the sixth month. So yeah, it must have been June. So I got to thinking about, you know, I should ask him for half down because I could take that half down and buy a whole PMQ PMQ uh kit. And finish with everybody else because I'm always behind everybody. I'm always a month, three months behind, depending on the mail. And the mail's been really bad since the pandemic. So I asked Nikolai, um, you were home during that time, right? Yep. So I said, can you can you play translator between me and Anda? Because Anda can't read English, but he can speak English, which is funny. And I said, will you ask Anda if he will give me half down on the quilt? Because, you know, I think you should because I had most of the top done by then. So he contacted Anna and Anna, Anna agreed. And um, during the translation process, when I got the money in my bank account, it was still short a certain amount of money. And I said, he didn't pay all of it. He says, well, what did you tell me again? And he went back to Anna and he says, you still need to put this much more on there. And Anna says, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll add it to what I, I'll owe her on the last half. And I will pay it sometime in September. That was when he was going to pay me the rest of the money for the quilt top. And I said, okay. So I had gotten enough money from him then to have, I had almost all of the money I needed for the large carnival bomb pop lacking like, I don't know, 50 bucks. And so I took the, Nikolai says, just take it out of my money. And I'm like, okay. Or our money. That's what he calls it. I said, okay, so I paid for a full kit while still signing up for one other one that I get by the month because it didn't have 
if I'd have gotten paid all up front, I could have bought both kits when you think about it. So in September, when Nikolai was home, I said, it's time. I want to tell Anda. No, it couldn't have been September, could it? Yeah, because when you went, when you'd go back to see in October, you would have the quilt and toe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I said, contact Anda and tell him that before I finish this quilt, I would like payment of the rest. And I was really nice and kind. I wasn't being nasty or nothing. And when Nikolai contacted Anda, his girlfriend got on the phone and she accused us of lying or accused him of lying. Yeah, I think I'm accusing him. So she accused, basically the accusation was we did not agree to $500. We agreed to $250, which that's not true. So it ended up being a big, huge knockdown, drag out fight between him and his girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. You know, if you're not going to pay me my money, you're not going to get the quilt. Nor am I going, and I told Nikolai, if he asks when he goes back to see, you have to give the other half of the money back. I'm going to say, no, I'm not giving it back because I took some money to buy backing for his quilt because I didn't have any backing. And, uh, so when Nikolai went back to work, Anda didn't say anything. There was no no discussion about it, nothing. It was like what had happened hadn't happened. Then two weeks ago, Anda, so keep in mind when this happened, I'm like, nope, I'm I'm over it. I'm not doing it. I put I folded the quilt top up and put it away because I just I was so aggravated. And, uh, you know, I just didn't feel like messing with it. And um, so when Nikolai came back home and then two weeks, two, about two weeks, three weeks ago, Anda contacts Nikolai and he says, I want to pay the rest of the money I owe Katie for the quilt. So he sent all of the money he owed me plus the leftover money he didn't finish paying me from the deposit part of it and paid it all in full. So now... And there's no stipulation on when I get the quilt quilted. So while Nikolai's gone, I'm going to quilt the quilt and then bind it and then have it ready to go when we get back from the United States. He he can take the quilt to end of then. So Sounds that's like what I'm on. <laughs> Sounds like a girlfriend problem, doesn't it? <laughs> it is a girlfriend problem. She's she's insane. Just say it. She's insane indeed. I can tell you that. She is crazy. The worst part is that every time me and Enda go back to work, the girlfriend accusing him of having a being a, what do you call, what do you call having it? an affair. Having an affair. See, he can't, Enda can't talk to me because even though I'm married and, and y'all we're not drama people, so we don't even understand this drama ourselves or why she says this stuff. <laughs> but if I message Anda and she finds out, she thinks me and Anda are doing something. I'm happily married, for God's sake. Worst part is that uh, if, if she's doing if she's taking an affair, that's totally fine with her. But she if, can have an affair, but he can't. Yeah. So it's really messed up. And Anda, Anda won't put his foot down and say, hey, if we can't have a good relationship, we're done. Yeah, I've tried several times, but they always come back. Yeah, they always come back. And, and there's been violence between them. And, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I could not live that way. And I don't know if he'll continue to put up with it or one day get enough of it and say, I'm done. I think he just doesn't want to be alone. He lost, he, uh, he was married to Nikolai's aunt and she passed away from cancer. I don't remember what kind of cancer, but anyway, that's what happened with the quilt. I thought everything was a okay until September. Well, sorry, you went through that, but at least you're getting your money to recover <laughs> your time. Well, and you know materials. what? Yeah. And 
you know, all of y'all that were telling me, giving me advice and telling me I should do this and I should have done that. I learned a very valuable lesson out of this. And it, maybe I needed to learn that. I don't know, but I learned something. Get my money first and then make the quilt. Well, crafting is the only industry in which everybody expects you to work for no pay. And then they decide later whether or not they're going to pay you. Yeah. I mean, he's get, he got a good deal. I'm pretty sure that the quilt should... I, I I didn't know what to ask for. I just randomly said five hundred dollars off my off my top of my head because I have I don't really know how much you would charge for such a big quilt. You know, it didn't occur to me to go and ask first. I do know that um uh during the summer when I was at work, one of the um tour guides came up to me and says, we saw about you making a quilt for somebody that's paying you to do it, a Greenlander. And he says, how much did you ask for the quilt? And I told him, he says, that's only like, how much did he say, 3000 something? He says, you, you shorted yourself. I said, what do you mean? He said, you should have told him 10,000 kroners and left it at that. Well, and also when you're when you start out pricing your quilts, you you have to decide how much it value you put on yourself. Yeah. To me, asking ten thousand kroners, that's uh how much is that in US dollars, baby? I think it's about thirty five hundred. No, how much is ten thousand kroners in US dollars? That's what I said, around thirty five. Three thousand US dollars? See, and to me, that's highway robbery. Why would I charge a Greenlander ten thousand for a quilt? Now I could see charging between five and eight hundred dollars. You know, that's doable. That quilt was probably worth eight hundred. I don't know, but I did no, it. Because, oh, it was fourteen hundred. Yeah, so ten thousand U.S. dollars. I mean, I'm sorry. 10,000 Danish kroners is around 1,400 U.S. dollars, 1500. almost 1,500. So I would have been screwing somebody out of money, sorry for the language, by charging that if you base it on U.S. dollars. Who charges $1,500 for a quilt? A lot Any of people. Of <laughs> yeah, a, lot of people. a lot of people. A lot of people do it? Really? Yes. Yes. Um, when you think about That's it. a lot of money to me. If if you were Hi, take, Becca. thank you, Becca. <laughs> you, you got it. You got to take into how many hours you spent piecing and cutting and stitching, and then any time you spent with Jack, and then every moment you spend stitching that quilt and pinning it or whatever to quilt it, and then binding. All of those hours do add up. We crafters, me included, typically short ourselves. Yeah, that hadn't occurred to me, you know, and uh, we work for less than the less than minimum wage when we underprice ourselves. Yeah, and I really uh, now to me, I think I made that quilt top because it was Becca's pattern. It was a, a it was a big star basically, so it had big pieces in it. So I didn't have to like it wasn't a bunch of little itty bitty half square triangles. These were big ones, and um. So I, if you talk about time wise, building the quilt top itself wasn't that. It didn't take me that long. What's going to oh, take shit. time? Dang, is it eleven already? Midnight. Oh. Midnight. Oh, you guys, oh, we're going to do it outside. Don't forget to unmute your phone. Step out the quilt. We're going outside so you can watch the fireworks. Okay. Okay. Can you? Can you? Um, Tammy and yeah, and who are still in here? Moderate. Yeah, can y'all moderate while we're outside showing y'all the fireworks? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we're going outside so we can let you see the fireworks, everybody. And I need this phone. I got away with it. Wow, Oh, 
Thanks, Becca. That's the one I'm actually working on today. And I'm paper piecing more sections to it. I think she forgot to unmute herself again. They must have shot off all their fun to work. Keep on walking. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Oh, there's a weird spot, and the moon is in the background. <laughs> Happy New Year from Greenland, everybody. Oh, that's so exciting. So many fireworks. Those are out of one of those batteries. Yeah. Oh, wow. Expensive. That's a full show. Yep, I hear them. That must have been the end of that one, huh? Happy New Year! Happy New Year! I can hear the dog barking through the phone. I thought I was hearing it from the side, it's coming on the phone. Yeah, the camera's picking up the dogs barking every so often. Yeah, I'm sorry about the barking, but I can't do nothing about it. Wow, someone's got lots of big ones.
Wow. In case y'all are wondering, this is not the government shooting off these fireworks. We can go up to the store and buy big batteries and shoot them off like this. So that's what you're seeing is individuals shooting them off. Somebody spent money on fireworks this time. I think she would, Becca, I think she would have had to have pinned it before she went out there. I don't. Yeah. I don't know anybody that's got controls to pin it for us. No, I know. Is, is the dogs going crazy? Can you hear them? Uh, not at the moment. They're not going crazy. They've settled. Seems like they were they trigger shake triggering Nikolai's camera earlier. Yeah. Um, they don't shake or nothing, but they do bark. And I know we'll have to go comfort them in a minute. I think they're more worried about us being out here because from they shooting them on a little bit early, they weren't even moving around. Yeah, it's got a lot of fireworks. Looks like most of it's done. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think we're about done now. Okay. Have y'all seen enough? I think that was a lot of fireworks. Yeah. So now I've got to go in here and comfort the dogs and let them know we're all right. I'm pretty sure that was why they were barking because we left them. The tangle. This pattern is all paper piecing, which is making this star a lot easier to do. Uh, this is a quilt works pattern that I bought a long time ago. It's got this, the paper, the newsprint says copyright 2012. So I don't know exactly how old it is. Um, paper piecing makes it super easy to do. You ought to try it in 2024. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Okay, now I, I got to figure out how to disengage the, I might have to log off Zoom and log back on to get the audio to stay off. See, we're okay. Uh, you all right, Coda? Come here. It's okay. We're all right. It's all right. It's all right. I'm <laughs> Georgie said, don't forget your New Year's kiss. It brings good luck for next year. Yeah. Uh, hang on. I'm going to try to do something about this.
So some are still going on outside, but yeah, I'm done now. What did you guys think about all those fireworks? Go. I know I got to mute. I think I'm going to have to log out of Zoom and re come back in. Well, you're still in as far as what I see. Yo, Patty G said Greenland is lighting up the sky. Joy T said, wow, Greenland does it right. Thanks for sharing, Katie. Oh, you're welcome. Now you know what we, what I mean about big fireworks. First time I saw these when I visited Greenland, I was like, you can shoot off these big ones like this? And Nikolai's like, yep. Because you would never seen fireworks like that going off in Florida. Not unless you bought them illegal in South Carolina or something. I remember you used to get in Georgia, you used to have to drive to Alabama to go get fireworks. Now you can buy them here. but Yeah, but I don't even know if they sell those. The batteries that the, the, the I know you saw some where they went on and on and on, one behind another. Those were in batteries. They're like these big boxes. Oh. They had some enormous ones out there to sell this time. We didn't even bother to buy one because we knew that somebody's going to be down here in the neighborhood to buy one of those. <laughs> yeah, they're still going outside. I'll be right back because I need to take a bio break, guys. Can you help them? Uh. First time she visited, we surprised her like that, big chance. Yeah. But it was fun to see her reaction to the house. Knowing, knowing her that uh, they're not allowed to do that in the U.S., so, but we can hear in this, this area. That was fun. You just have to be careful of where you lit it or how you put it in the snow. If you put it too much and it gets stuck in the bottom of the ice snow, it, it, can't, it won't lift up and it just blow up where, where it was. I've just run several, several like that and uh, I had to flee from the area like unintentionally, like when it happened like that. But you have to learn big time. Well, you give her a good time here. First first time to, to visit me. Ain't that right, honey? Right. Giving you a good time when you visit it for the first yeah. time. You did a whole lot of walking. Oh, yeah. I don't remember how many pictures I took, but I know I took a boatload of them that are sitting in my Facebook and on my Flickr page. Okay, now I'm back. Sorry about that. I realized I needed to... Yeah, I realized it when I went to put my jacket on. I'm like, I don't have time now. Got to go outside. Thank you for all the Happy New Year, guys. So I wanted you to see a little. I hope you um liked the fireworks show. I don't know how much of it you actually could see. But um, I just wanted you to see what we do in Green or what they do in Greenland. And I hope you can hear the, the noise this time. Yeah, I unmuted my phone, so they should have been able to hear all of it because I could hear her talking. I could hear Tammy talking. Yep, I think it was her. It was either yep. Tammy or Candace. That was me. I was wondering if the dogs were making a bu bunch of ruckus in here while we were outside because I forgot about that. 
Yeah, Coda came in and was barking at Nikolai's table. I'm just standing there barking for a few moments. Oh, he could hear it through the camera. <laughs> you hear that funny? Yeah. That's funny. I didn't even think about muting uh, uh, the... Oh, well, I could have muted it anyway. I don't think. Well, he may have heard it from outside and he's just responding to it. They didn't look happy about us walking out the door. I can tell you that. <laughs> They're still... Now, see, Coda settled down. They're still shooting them off. Yep. Like I said, this is going to go on for a while. We've got some people that are a little bit late. Well, they waited to shoot theirs off so they can watch everybody else's, Probably. which makes sense to me. Save yours for after the fact. So you can watch everybody else. Watch me. Mine is better than yours. I wonder if they sold all of them. Uh -huh. um... Some of them were very pricey. I wouldn't pay five hundred US dollars for five fireworks. There was some in there that what was the highest price one, baby? Yeah, that's about five hundred US dollars. That's expensive to just blow up in five minutes flat. See, they do it so that people like us can watch them, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Uh it always it always amazes me, you know, that you can there's you wouldn't believe the smell that it, it gives off. And I didn't know if you noticed when I first turned the camera toward where the moon was at. I don't know if you could see the moon or not, but there was a tiny thin layer of clouds in between the moon and, and us. So we started seeing a lot of white smoke collecting up in that area up there. And that's that, that sulfur smell. Yep. And I think that's what puts the dogs off is the smell of the uh, sulfur. They can smell that gunpowder. Mm -hmm. I'm about to be taking a break here in a minute. Huh? I'm going to have to take a break here in a minute. Okay. The dogs have calmed down. Do you see that? They're not barking, even though there's fireworks going on outside. I don't see or hear them right now. Yeah, they're laying on the floor. <laughs> it was just because y'all were outside without them, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think they were worried about us being outside with all that racket going on. I think that's why Coda wants to go find the person shooting it. I don't know if he's looking for the person or the, mm. where the noise is coming from, but he wants to run down the road and go after it. Like, figure out where it's coming from and put a stop to it. And we didn't, we discovered this because we were out one night walking when he was a younger dog and somebody was, I guess, celebrating a birthday or something. And they were shooting fireworks right up the road from where we were at. And he went ballistic. Did Becca leave again? Uh, don't know. We can see and hear you. They they are legal here in Ohio now and is like a professional display all over the neighborhood. Where do you live, Jean? Lori says, Happy New Year. Robin says, They are a fire. Ha yeah, they are, Robin. You could burn a house down in Florida right quick. Sorry, Jean, I didn't catch that the first time. I know they're legal in Missouri, but I still prefer the professional display with the music. I've never went to a professional one where there was music. Our town shot them over the lake, but um, when I lived in Lake City, but I don't recall music even being played. Maybe they do it now. I don't know. Katie, but remember now I told you my um, my great grandmother lived in Lake City. Yeah, I grew up in Lulu, Florida. 
Yeah. Born and raised there. And then my grandmother grew up in Lake City. My mom spent like her, because she was born in Daytona and spent her summers and most of school breaks and stuff in Lake City. And I spent a good bit of time there, like Memorial Weekend, Labor Day, stuff like that. Yeah, I still got cousins that live over in Lake City. And I mean, Lulu and Fernand, was it Fernando Beach or something like that? I don't know. I don't know what Fernando Beach is. Unless you're talking, you must be talking about uh, I'll think of it in a minute. It's that really huge lake you're talking about, right? What, Ocean Fernando Park. Beach? No. I, I don't know what Fernando Beach is, but uh, maybe you're thinking of the Ocean Pond. Are you thinking about that? No. I don't know. I wasn't very close to them. Most of all my cousins that I was close to lived in Lulu. Lulu. So Because Ocean Pond was out in that direction of Lulu, and it's a huge lake. I mean, big enough that you can, um, uh, what do you call it? Something boarding, uh, waterboarding or whatever it's called, where you um, put your knees on the board and you get pulled by a boat. Yeah. The first time I tried that, that was the last time I tried that. <laughs> I was not impressed. Mm -hmm. I was very young. Somebody talked me into doing it, and I just didn't enjoy it. And probably because I don't think I'm a strong enough swimmer to begin with. I can, pro I can keep myself on top of the water, but I can never save anybody else. Fernandina Beach. Is that what you're talking about? That's it. Fernandina. Yeah. Ah, Christine, or Krista just said Fernandina. Yeah, I've yep. never been to Fernandina. That's it. Have you ever been to Huguenot Beach? No. It's just, it. I forget what part of Jacksonville Beach, it, where it's near, but you can actually drive onto the beach, or you could back then. You had to pay money to get inside, and then you could drive onto the beach. Yeah. Okay. Now, we would go down to uh, Lake City, spend time there, and then go through Lulu to on our way to Daytona and not take the interstate, because my grandparents lived in Holly Hill. Oh, Okay. I will be right back, you guys. Okay. Did Christine leave? I guess she did. She's not on Zoom anymore. Yeah, I think so. I thought she was going to take another drink with us. Wait a minute. She might just... Oh, she did leave. Krista, Krista says it's slightly north of her. Oh, Fernandina Beach? Yeah. Oh, okay. I only went to Jacksonville one time. I took a girlfriend down there to, um, we were, she went down like Memorial Weekend or something with us to Lake City and she had her car and my mom was driving her, her own car and she's like, let's go when we, on the way down from, Georgia to Lake City, we ran into a bunch of like military guys at the gas station. This is when I was like 17 and she was probably 20. And uh, so we, we decided we were going to go off that night and meet them in Jacksonville. So yeah, and I got home, we got home about midnight. My mom was so mad. And then my friend left early in the morning, left me with my mad mom at my great grandmother's house <laughs> after coming home late. I was like, you're going to leave me? She's like, yeah, I'm going home. I got my own mad mom to deal with. I'm like, oh, but. I think the fireworks were uh, a good hit for people in here. Looks like people enjoyed the fireworks, best I can tell. Greenland is lighting up the sky. Boom, boom, bang. And Frank says he can't see both doors at the same time. <laughs> oh, Georgie says you give a New Year's kiss and it brings good luck for the next year. I didn't know that. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, yeah, because it's after midnight now. 
Tomorrow we will be celebrating our 13th wedding anniversary, you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. So we got married the day after New Year's. Yeah, it's. I think it's spelled it's, it's uh, N U T. I don't think there's an E in there. Hugo Knot. Yeah, something like that. Um, we. I. I took my kids a couple of times. One time we went for the Fourth of July fireworks, and then bad weather came and we didn't get to watch them. I'm glad y'all enjoyed them, and thank you for the well wishes. But once this is over with, I'm I've had enough of it, you know. So, and now we're going to be hearing people for days shooting them off, and that's when I get tired of them really fast. He didn't, he didn't shoot them very much this year, though. Maybe people had less money. Well, could be that. Yeah, it could be. Or they just try to save them for the new year. Yeah, that could be it. Those those were definitely pricey fireworks. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen them that expensive before. That's why we didn't buy any because Nikolai's like, no, we're not spending that kind of money. So what's the exchange rate right now? Um, Hang on, let me look. Let's see what how I many USD. Oops, I mean Google to do that with. You're about to draw some in five minutes time you draw. Okay, so for every what is this thing doing? I'm waiting on it to tell me. For every one US dollar, it takes 6.75 Danish kroner. Wow. The US dollar is still up, looks like, babe. It was a bit down. Yeah, it was down for a few days, but it's back up again. You're probably wondering why I mentioned that. When the U.S. dollar is down, I can spend more money <laughs> at a cheaper rate. Yeah. Usually, I, yeah, you know, especially if it comes to fabric. Thank you for all the congratulations on my our anniversary coming up. He's going to take me out to the hotel, and we're going to have ribeye steak dinners. And then the next day, he's leaving. Oh. We'll keep your company, Katie. I know you all will. I'm going to be moping for a little while. But he has to go. He has to do what he's got to do with his family. We both couldn't go. Not without sacrificing my trip to the U.S. And I, re I really want to see my grandkids. When are you coming grandchild. over? Huh? Are you, are you coming over before the quilt con? I will fly into Raleigh to start with, and then I will come down to Florida. But I'm also I'm going to be doing Florida and Georgia when I get when I leave North Carolina, meaning that I'll probably I'll be going from North Carolina down to Florida, wait for him to arrive, and then um, I'm not sure we haven't got the schedule planned out of where we're going to be when, but we're definitely doing Georgia and Florida at the same time. Well, split apart. Yeah. Because he there's a Lego convention and he's going one way or the other. Is that in Jacksonville? Not it's Orlando. In Orlando. Oh, okay. So y'all going from Jacksonville. In yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's and I've been I used I lived in Kissimmee for like ten months. And all okay. I did was work and party and go to <laughs> Disney World. Because customers was giving me Disney tickets left and right. It was funny. Yeah, my daughter wanted to go to Central Florida for that reason, but. <laughs>
that but I only did my partying inside of Lake Buena Vista. I never went outside of that. One of the one of the warnings I got from a friend, he says, You're gonna be living close to Orlando. And back then I was an itty bitty thing, you know, tiny, young, innocent. And um he told me, he says, never ever, if you ever go to Orlando, never go down Orange Blossom Trail. And I said, Why not? And when he told me, I'm like, Oh. So I didn't bother to go to Orlando ever the whole time I lived there. I went to Disney because Lake Buena Vista is right next to Kissimmee. But outside of that, I didn't even go into Orlando at all. Hmm. Yeah, aside from Disney and Universal, we went to Universal last year right after Christmas. For the, I took my two kids um, right after Christmas for a week, but... Other than that, I've never spent much time there. I had a friend that went to um, UCF, but I went and visited her one time when she was still in college there for her. She was about to finish her bachelor's, but, you know. I couldn't remember my way around Orlando. I mean, I lived, I was a child when my, see, my parents, when my dad got out of the Navy, he moved us to Florida, and Orlando's where we went. And um, my friend Myra, she had a house over next to Orlando International Airport. But when I was a child, that airport was called McCoy International Airport. Yep. MCO. And, yeah. And my mother was a waitress that worked inside of one of the restaurants inside of the um airport. So um when I when we went to visit Myra and I heard the I could hear the planes, I'm like, it brought memories of me hearing it when I was a child. I can remember that. But, um, so I know we lived pretty close to the airport at one point, and then he he kept moving us around. He could never, we would never stay anywhere past two years. Was your dad in the Navy? Huh? Was your dad in the Navy out of Jacksonville? He was out of the San Diego. Oh, okay. My dad was San Diego and then went to Jacksonville, and he met my mom in Daytona on break. My mom was... well. He met my mother in Fort Lauderdale while he was in the Navy. Okay. My mother was a waitress in Fort Lauderdale somewhere. Mm. But when he um, got out, it was from uh, San Diego. But I was born, me and my middle sister was born in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. And um, But I've never seen my birth town, so it's on my bucket list. So when we come in 20... 20 I don't know. We're either gonna. I think. I think we're go. We're doing the trip this coming this year, which is now twenty twenty four. I got to start thinking like that. <laughs> and then um, we're gonna do a very big trip in twenty twenty six because I I want to um. This is what we want to do. I want to do several things I have on my bucket list and on his bucket list, and one of them will consist of me going to see Charleston, South Carolina. And see the Navy base because I was born on the Navy base. Okay. And the hospital is now some kind of um, administration building from what someone told me. So I know I won't be able to go inside and see it, but I can see it on the outside, you know. And um, then we're going to go see our friends in uh, Syracuse, New York. And if we can plan it right, I'm hoping to get all of my family up there. At the same time, my kids and my grands and all of us crossed the Canadian line to go see the uh, Niagara Falls on the Canadian side. And then when they uh, when they go back home, babe, we're going to have to do another. Is it 1230 yet? Oh, we need to do another drawing, too. And then um, when we get done with Niagara Falls, we're going to fly to either fly or drive to Chicago and get on the Zephyr train. And take the Zephyr train and go all the way to San Francisco from Chicago. Oh wow, that's a long ride. <laughs> yeah, it's two and a half days, but he will get to see more of the country that way. And since I've never seen that part of the country, we'll both. It'll be a nice trip where I don't have to drive. Yeah, because he doesn't drive. I got dealers. All right, I need to set up another drawing, you guys. It's twelve thirty. Drawing number three. And I am back now, Katie. Okay. 
Hang on a minute. Don't don't put anything in the. Oh, oh no. What? Things falling down. It's the effect of that brown whiskey you drink. <laughs> you drank one shot, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I know Time for you another. Like you just keep on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only had one shot, thank you very much. Well, that's because you're a light drink. Well, I might have another one before it's over with. Okay, we are going to set up for another one. And I will tell you when to start posting the um thing. So give me a minute, please. This is something I need to definitely work out so I don't have to do this again like this. Because no. I'm gonna have to either hit up Becca or hit up Sean or somebody that knows how to do this. Greenland Clipper. Okay. All right, you can now put in exclamation mark GQ fun. And I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. So make sure you get your um, posting in there. Okay, so it's active now. Exclamation mark GQ fun, everybody, right. that, including the, the people Zooming. And where's my phone to set the timer? This is drawing number three. Got that song on your brain, don't you? It is a good song. Oh, come on. Please don't say that one. <laughs> I'll be... I, already, I, I have managed to go a few hours without even bringing it up. <laughs> You're having entirely too much fun with that song. Oh, yeah. Oh. I wish I could remember the name of that song that had to do with the semen that um, my grandson was listening to. Uh, I know, I know the song. You remember the name of it? Frank, you may want to retype. It needs to be exclamation yeah, Frank, G Q fun. Yeah, Frank, retype is supposed to be exclamation G Q fun, all one word. Now let's make sure I got these blocks right this time so I don't have to redo this again. Okay, so we're supposed to have two of them that look like this. There you go, Frank, you got it. All right. Yep, we don't want you to miss out. That would be bad. There's supposed to be four of these. Oh, I need to fix these other two that I didn't fix. Oh, my bad. Mm. Let's see, it's going to be this outside one. What iron do you use, Katie? And I just started using this um cordless to fall. It's called a to fall free move air. Oh, the T fall thing? Yeah. T E F A L. I just call it to fall. Oh, um I've I've had 
to be honest, I've had it for in a box for like a year because I was lazy and didn't want to switch. And then I, the iron that I was using, which was a Brom or something like that, um, it kept leaking water, but I kept using it anyway. And um, then I right before the thing with the, the, the accident in my sewing room, I was pressing something and then I went to stand up and show somebody something and I knocked the iron on the floor and it landed face down near the hot part onto the carpet and the carpet's made of some kind of plastic stuff and it ruined the iron. Oh no. So I guess it was my cue to get rid of it. Yeah. So I need to get a new one. I'm not I'm not finding this one all that fun. Because the cradle, you have to make sure you set it down in the cradle. And um but I think I finally figured out some of what I was doing wrong, but um, you know, about making sure it's staying hot and stuff. And it makes this beeping noise, and I didn't know what the beeping was for, because the instructions that came with it was all in Danish, and I just was I just hadn't got around to looking it up on the internet and getting the English version of it. Usually, I don't even bother to read an iron handbook. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, I need to get another one. I don't know. I bought this. I I just started quilting in this year, twenty twenty three, and. I went to Quilt Con and didn't buy an iron, but I did at um, the Quilt Fest they have like the next month over here in Atlanta. And I bought this, but evidently this is the wrong bottom, so it doesn't stay hot at all. So it's kind of like it it's not very good. Yeah. So best is actually this one from um this is my mini iron from Cricut. But that's uh -huh. only good for little bitty seams, you know, but it gets really, really hot. It's great for that, but yeah, I need something else. Candace, if you're looking for a really hot iron, the Alisos. Yeah. These are the ones with the feet. So when you set it down, you literally set it down like this. You don't have to set it up and set it back down. So it reduces your strain on your wrist. They're very heavy. Um, and I know several of the other YouTubers are using them, uh -huh. um, but they really got hot. Okay. And they right. and they the auto off it does auto off for after a while, but all you have to do is grab your handle and it will get back hot and it doesn't take very long at all. I also bought an Aliso uh, travel version of it um, to take with me so I didn't have to keep carrying the big one. Okay. Last call for exclamation mark GQ fun, you guys. And then we'll get back to talking about irons. Last call. You got one more minute and then I'm going to draw the next person. I'm just making sure anyone that's dragging behind got a chance to put their it looked like the channel had slowed down now. So I won a Panasonic 360 cordless um, back in uh the end of February, but I can't use it over here. So it's been sitting in California all the time. Yeah, I think that's the good one that has the what is it, ceramic plate? Yep, it's yeah. an expensive one. Yeah, that's what I want for my stronger together. Okay, so you can't get an adapter, huh? You can't use an if you bring it over there, you won't be able to use an adapter for it. If I spend a, a good hundred and something bucks to buy one. Oh wow, they're that expensive. I know when I go to Europe, I used to travel they're, a lot. They look work. like they look like a mini um power bank. Oh, so not like Europe. We go to Europe for travel and it's a small little box. That small little box you cannot use on curling irons and irons. You will melt them. Oh. oh I, gotcha. did it on, I did it on my wedding day when I was trying to curl my hair with my curling iron. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's kind of a fun memory. <laughs> <laughs> it melted all over the top of his desktop computer. Oh, no. Nice. Uh, on top okay. of it. So KM have, has won the giveaway. Congratulations, KM. Yeah. Let me get my email. I hope you're still here. 
Oh, you are, because you had to put that in the channel. <laughs> Never mind. That was a stupid comment. All right, let me get my email. And what I need you to do, I'm going to um, highlight you so you can see my email address. Wow, what's the deal here? Waiting to see KM come back in the chat. They shouldn't have left unless they put it in and then left. Yep, there she is. They're there. They okay. Said, Yay. Well, congratulations. And I'm about to send you my email address in the chat. You need to email me. If you don't, then I have no way of contacting you because I don't know who you are personally. So I can't just up and say, oh, hi, on Facebook or what it, wherever. So, yeah. I want to make sure you email me so that I can give you your gift card. And I'll be giving it to you from Fat Quarter Shop. Okay. All right. This was uh, drawing number three. We still have two more to go. And uh, there's the email, KM. She lives in Gainesville, honey. Hmm? She lives in Gainesville. Yeah. So I don't know what I want to do about the iron. I mean, it's not, it's not even been took out of its box, blah, blah, blah. It's sitting in a closet in California. I mean, I could, I probably could try buying a power bank. Is it worth the cost of the iron though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll end up turning the iron into a $200 iron. I don't know if that's worth it or not. Yeah. Well, you could always run a giveaway from the U.S. while you're here. And give it away so you're not paying expensive shipping if you if you're not going to well, use it the problem is if i did that i would actually need to fly to california yeah okay gotcha because if i if i want i i have things that i need to be mailed to me here in greenland and getting a kid to do it it's been like yeah pulling teeth <laughs> yeah we don't have time we're too busy blah 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 I got and a twenty-year-old. I understand. <laughs> some of some of it was already ready to be sent that I pre-packed before I left, and you know I've had money to give them, but they just, you know, I don't know. I thought about me and Nikolai. If my son can take a road trip in three days, maybe we could rent a car and do the road trip in six. Oh yeah, you, you know, can get from you can get from uh, Georgia to California in six days. Yeah, I, I mean, well, what I mean is it took Thomas from California to Georgia in three days, so we could make that trip in three days. Oh, yeah. And then spend a couple of days in California and turn around and come back. And mm -hmm. it'll save paying. Why am I hearing an echo? I was just because I found the song that you want. The single is Nathan Evans. Oh, well, That's hang good. on. Let me finish my thought before I forget. I have considered thinking about just taking a rental car and us do the road trip. And that would be a road trip that Nikolai would definitely enjoy. And there's a couple of places, there's a couple of national parks that we would be going through that we could stop and see and spend a hotel here and there, you know, because they're cheap on that highway, you guys. The first place that uh, Thomas stayed at, it was 55 bucks. And then the next two was, one was 60, one was 63. And then the one in uh, Little Rock was, uh, I want to say, seventy. So it wasn't. It was nowhere close to that hundred dollar mark. And I pre-booked them through booking to get the the discount on all of them. So it's possible we could do that. Nathan Evans Willemans. Is that what it's called? Is that C Genji? Yeah, it's a C. So you guys. Baby, type the name of the song and who sings it in the channel and people can go listen to it on their own. Because they can't play it in the live. So I was talking to Thomas one night um, and I could hear music playing in the background and I'm like, who's listening to that kind of music? And Thomas says, Blaze is. I said, Blaze is listening to that style of music? Yeah, Mom, why? I said, you know, I would have, it sounds like music that sailors would listen to. He had heard that song 
on some game he was playing. I don't know what game. And he got in his brain and he had to keep listening to it. And that's what he was doing. Repeat listening to it. <laughs> he likes it. Joy is asking which iron is the best. Joy, I think that's personal preference because I know I love my Lisos, uh, but I know you know the chords get in the way the way for a lot of people. So I think that may be personal preference. I think it's what you can, from my standpoint. You know, when I was in California, I bought an iron so I could sew at my daughter's house, and when I went to Walmart to buy one, I could not believe the price of irons. Mm -hmm. And it used to be you could walk in a store and buy a $10 iron walkout. Done. But they were so expensive. And the cheapest one I bought, I bought a little brawn or something. And it cost 25 bucks. And it was a piece of garbage. It really was. It didn't have that heavy metal uh, that you heat your iron, that your, you iron with. It was some kind of thin metal stuff they used. So I think what you should do is see, get what you can afford and what you think you might like. And I, I would take the time and go look at different styles of irons and see which one, when you pick it up, do you like it? Take it out of the box and look at it, you know, before making that decision. Um, one, thing, one thing she can also do is if you have a local quilt guild or a local uh, group that sews, um, Go try out whatever irons that people have yeah, and what they bring. That's a good idea. That's, that's a great way to find the one that you're going to end up liking in the long run. Unfortunately, they don't sell Olisos over here on this side of the pond. But I can't seem to find them anyway. And finding a good iron is just as bad. It's weird. How about a long arm right? at no, uh, the end of November? It's a sit down long arm, but um, from a quilt shop like north of Atlanta. And uh, a week after I got home, then they have an advertisement like if you buy a machine, you get a free seven hundred dollar Laura Star, you know that lift Laura Star thing. Oh gosh! And I'm like yeah. seriously, <laughs> really? Oh. I should have got a free Laura Star as much as I spent. <laughs> yeah, that's when I would have gone back and gone. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I'll return it and rebuy it if you'll include the Laura Star. <laughs> yeah, return it, and turn around and buy another one. Yeah, that's a yeah, but that's a lot of work just to get an iron. Yeah, hopefully I'll find something. I don't know if I can hold out till uh, QuiltCon. I want a small. I want a little small hand one too, and I remember seeing the small ones when I first moved here. But when we were in Denmark this last time, this last time I didn't get to go to all the stores looking for it. But I looked in a couple of places, and I couldn't find any irons like that, the little small ones. Yeah. Because it would be great to use it right at the sewing table, you know? I mean, I don't have room for a lower star anyways. I take up too much room. I'm, like, moving my la thing to, well... To cut on my table in here otherwise i do it on the kitchen table i got a family member gonna stay with me probably for about six months starting january and so oh, I look what Meth geek said about the aliso she said yeah. the aliso is a heavy iron so it probably requires less effort but i use a panasonic now and that and love that is cordless hope that helps yeah that's really good input yeah the aliso now I can turn, you can turn the, the feet part on and off. So when I really want that extra heavy press, I just turn the feet off and just set it where I want it. And it does require a lot less effort. That makes a lot of sense because you're not having to mm -hmm. constantly around to do what you, because you're wanting a flat seam. You're not looking for getting all fancy pressing about it. Now, I will say... The, this Aliso I have had, this is my new one. My husband, uh, he's former Marine. So once a Marine, always a Marine. Yep. And he presses his jeans. He presses his casual shirts, everything. So he fell in love with my iron. So I gave him my old Aliso and bought a new one. 
because he fell in love with it so much. That's wonderful. But we are definitely an Aliso family. <laughs> well, I wanted to buy one just because everybody's talking about what a nice iron it is, but I just can't find it over here. Uh, and I, I have to get Panasonic over here. Yeah. You, which is surprising to me. Yeah, that's one thing you have to consider is, you know, being able to to get it where you're living and being able to use it. Yeah. I've done the research about why the curling iron melted, and it was because curling irons and irons use more power. Mm -hmm. And those little adapters that we use for our cell phones and things like that, cell phones and stuff will require very little voltage. But when you yeah. put an iron that drives from heat or drives heat, it uses a lot of power, and that's why I melted my um, curling iron. Yeah, that's I mean, the adapter just couldn't handle it. I wonder if a hairdryer would do the same thing. Probably. They both use his hair. Like the app, that would be like plug, plugging a American toaster oven into it. You would probably blow it up too. Because yeah. um, I had a nebulizer machine I brought with me, and we used it through the adapter, and it blew it up. <laughs> so things that uses energy to I guess what do you call it uses energy to make energy is a uh, wrong kind of adapter for it but they do yeah. sell them the adapters okay. are the big adapters are just expensive and and I'm I'm questioning how the heck am I supposed to charge it on a regular basis and someone says well you'll have to have your electrician put in a special kind of port in your in in your power source so that you can recharge it unless you use solar to recharge it that sounds like a lot of hassle for yep. one appliance he <laughs> has a lot of I don't want to bother with it you uh, Americans use a 110 voltage while we use it a double double yeah, it's 220, right? Yeah, we, we, are, we are using 220 volts of steel. The Americans have to do everything always weird. Metric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah, what, what is metric and how do I use it? <laughs> we only get so many weeks of metric in school and then that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. you, you should see there's been times when I'll say to Nikolai I, I'll come in there and I'll say Nikolai how much is uh, how how many deciliters is in a, a liter because I don't know how to change the yeah convert it, it, yeah. <laughs> convert it because it's still metric and metric is not my strong suit now, I will say I use metric when I design quilts and I'm working with a lot of different size pieces. Um, a lot of people, when they move, for example, they'll draw out their floor plan and they'll measure their furniture and uh, cut the furniture out and then move it around to play with it and see how they like their placement. And I learned that as a kid and I've moved a whole lot, so I've done it tons. But when it comes to placing quilt pieces, I'm trying to fit them all into this one spot. And I've done a couple of t-shirt quilts and that's where I've really used it. But I've taken my measure, my English, my English measurements, like the inch and half inch and all of that. And I've converted it to millimeters, then printed out my size in millimeters <laughs> and done the, the Django with it because it's a lot more accurate. It's, it's when I was in Denmark to buy um yard I wanted to buy a yard of fabric from one of the fabric stores I stopped at in the wherever it was I was at. And I said, I want to buy a yard of fabric. And she looked at me with a blank look like, what? What the yard? Mean, you mean a meter? And I'm thinking, well, what's the difference between <laughs> the difference between a meter? I know that three yards is one meter, but you still have that little what, two or three inches or something different yeah, it's, it's not exact yeah it's not exact when you're looking at it from an american point of view versus 
those people who have lived their whole lives using metrics. So I had to think about that. And then I, you know, I'm, I'm like, well, okay, is this a good price for a meter of fabric? Because, you know, when you do it in U.S. dollars, okay, so if something costs $11.50 a yard, are you getting the same value by buying a meter that might be three inches bigger than, like, yeah. You know what I mean? I would have a whole reference chart packed away in my purse just to pull it out and figuring that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I work for a pharmaceutical uh, vaccine manufacturer, and I work on a system, a, a electronic system, um, and everything's a metric and a military time and everything. So it it took, well, I've been in the industry for 15 years now, but it took a while to get used to everything. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> taken me a while to get used to using military time too. Yeah. And writing our dates where you have the day first and the month next and then the year. Yeah. That really confused me. Yeah. And sometimes I still, without thinking, Nikolai will see me do it, I'll say, oh, this is for uh, June the 1st when it was actually January the 6th. <laughs> well, they always spell out, it's always the three first digits of the month in, in like the medical industry, or at least manufacturing anyway. So it's always like the 31st DEC and then the year with hyphen in the middle or either all ran together, but it, they always do the month, I guess. So because you know, in case somebody was trying to, you know, put a month as a digit rather than, you know, spell it out, they would always know it's December or not. Is that 12 the day of the month or the month, right? Yeah, that first through the 12th of the month makes it confusing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robin just posted, she says a meter is 3.9 inches larger than a yard. Something else about when you buy yardage in Denmark is not the 42 inches you and I are used to. It's actually uh, it's more closer to that 60 inch size. Huh. I agree, Joy. They don't make them like they used to. Uh, Robin said she, her mom has an iron she's had for 30 years. I can't believe it. You can't read the name on it. My grandmother has one like that that is so insanely old. But it's so worth it. But yeah, you, you can't find them like that anymore. Well, they got cheaper looking. Are they use cheap plates now? And except for the more expensive ones, anyway. Yeah. I never would have thought an iron could cost two hundred dollars. That's crazy. But I seen one recently where I guess it's the newest one that Kimberly's using currently on the lives that makes that noise like it does with um jordan fabrics one of those machines are astronomically high priced that's that laura star that they were giving away at the uh quilt place i bought my long arm at <laughs> base starting is like seven hundred dollars but then yeah. it goes all the way up to like i don't know two thousand dollars if you want the board and the water reservoir and all this stuff i'm like wow i'm like why would you pay seven hundred dollars for an iron yeah, I'm, I would never pay that. I would just rather buy cheapy irons and just go through cheapy irons over 10 years. Yeah. Even if you replace a $20 iron, if you can find a $20 iron, that's a problem. Yeah. I got one of those Rowentas or something like that, but that's one I've used for clothes. But now that I work from home for the last couple of years, I don't really use it. But it gets nice and hot when I'm doing big things of fabric, I will use it. But um, And I think I got it at Costco for like maybe... 40 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. It wasn't crazy because I would have never paid that much for an iron. That's crazy. Yep, definitely. Somebody is texting me. Ah, I forgot I had this other phone in here. I can look at it that way. Boo. Oh, it's Kristen. How many colors of yarn do you have? Why is she asking me that? What do you mean?
Piney Talkie, Tina um, asks, what is everyone selling tonight? What are the requirements for the drawing? Um, Katie is doing those, doing five drawings total tonight. She's already done, what, three? So we've three, got two yeah. left. And yep, what she will do, she'll let you know before she's about to do a drawing. And you've got five minutes to put your, your little code thing in the chat. And then she will do the drawing. And all you've got to do is let her know that you're here. And she'll give you her email address. You email her and she will get you your gift card. She's giving away $25 gift cards to Fat Quarter Shop. Yep. And I'm jealous. <laughs> I haven't gotten one yet. <laughs> yep. There's still two more to go. You might get one. Okay, so now I have four of these. One, two, three, four. So are you going to survive without quilting while you're over here in the U.S., Katie, for a while? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. When I was in California, I sewed because I bought a um, Janome, a small Janome, and I sewed on it to, to make things. And, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Because I'll be over there. I'll be over there for a while. I did think that maybe I could make some content by going on a fabric shop hop or something. Ooh, that'd be nice. I mean, I'm going to have content um, for quite a bit, like for I'm uh, definitely making content for Quilt Con. And I'm going to do mine a little bit different than what I've seen others doing. Some have been going live. And um, the problem with going live is the video is not that great. Because the, the where, wherever the convention centers are, your, your um, internet, you know, like, uh, yeah, it goes goes in and out. So when you're doing a live trying to show people those quilts, it's pixelating the quilts. So I think what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be there for four days, I'm going to probably spend one whole day just and go straight to where the quilts are at and video in parts, like maybe row by row, do it that way. And I want to stop. And when I stop and do the video of each thing, I'm also going to try to catch what's being written about the quilt next to it or either take a picture of it. One of the two, I haven't decided yet, or do half video, do half pictures so I can write a blog. But every quilt, I want to make sure that I get who did it, what it was about. So I can, And then I'll make several videos and break them up into pieces and share them over time. Or I don't know. I might take a poll and see how y'all want to see it done. I just think that going live is going to be a pain. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Make sure you take pictures of the about information. Yep. Because I really like to know when somebody's designed something. What? Yeah, me too. There's some of that. Designed, that's, uh, why, why they made that quilt? Why? Why did yeah. they choose to make that? Yeah. Why? It, or what? 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 You know, interested in them about it to make to want to make the quilt. Exactly. So, uh, Tiny Talkie Tina also asked what everyone is sewing tonight. Um, I am working on this uh, feathered snowflake tree skirt. So, I am doing additional paper piecing to put more pieces up on my board. Tangle says, doing, wait, 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 I gotta go back up. Did I miss something here? It's from, uh, what are the requirements for the drawing? It was the rest no. of what she'd asked. Math Geek said something about genealogists. And then Tangle but, but says, oh, they must be talking about the date. Doing yeah, the date were. first and the rest in order is too logical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I find it annoying, but, you know. I'm getting where I'm getting better about writing it in the order they like to see, but there's sometimes I still don't do it. I, I write it backwards and I can't help it. What is everyone so okay? So what you said you were working on, what is Candace working on? I just finished my last quote for the year. With the okay, on what it. was it? Oh. Um, it was some pattern by the Erica Ar Arnett. She's the Confessions of a Homeschooler. This is her pattern, some jelly rolls, and then some yardage. Uh, this is for my daughter's best friend. 
for her birthday coming it. up in March. I and love it. I'm just pre-cutting uh, fabric starting for next year's project, one of these. Kind of more prep work for next year than anything. <laughs> oh, well, that's 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 awesome. Um, hi, Fallon. Welcome back. Um, what am I working on? I am still messing around with this PMQ that I've discovered has a couple pieces missing, and I'm not griping. So nobody say anything because I never complain because I know how good Cotton Cuts is about replacing pieces. I did do um use my Oops kit to cut the bigger triangle, but yeah, I think I'm going to stop for now because I think we should work on who wants to do this Moda Love block? Anybody? I'm excited to see yours. I'm yeah, super so excited. I'm going to put the PMQ aside and take a break from it for right now. And I think I want to work on a Moda block. The Moda Love block. So I'm going to need this. And this needs to go over here. Instructions right here and the cutting board and a lure. Okay, so I'm going to try. I'm, I'm trying to think how the best way you can see what I'm doing. Good night, Glenda. Hang on a minute, you guys. Oh, okay. Nothing to get better. All right. So I'm going to do the six, six inch, and someone suggested, and which is a great suggestion, of making four of these, and then I could make a bigger block like that, doing four loves. So each piece, this is what it looks like on the front. When I'm doing paper piecing, because I am easily confused, I will fold one after I fold it along the lines. I, I while it's in a folded position like this, I run my pen down that fold, and then I label the back so that it matches what's on the front, and I do all the pieces that way. Make sure I've done all of them. Yep, I've done. And then I also mark this quarter seam here so you know where it's at and then there's this outer seam as you can see there's a line here I don't know if you can see it or not can you see that faint line that's where you want when you get ready to trim these blocks you're going to trim to that I think yeah because this is going to be your quarter inch seam right here when you start sewing the blocks together so you want to do the pieces in the order that it tells you to do it in. Because if you don't, you will mess up. This part of this V is the part that's going to be the color part. This, this, and this will be the background. Now, I want to show you something about this E. This E can be very confusing when you're looking at it. This is actually, wait. Hang on a minute. I'm going to get myself confused in a minute. Let me look. Yeah. Okay. So this long piece here is the long part of the E. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I'm going to have to make a line or I will mess up. Okay, so you're going to see I put an arrow here. This is how I keep myself from getting confused with this E because I find it, I don't know why, but it challenges me. Okay, so this is the, the back of the E, and then these legs are the other parts of the E. So everywhere that's not part of the E is going to be a background. So this will be a background, 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 and background. So when you do it on the back, when you're sewing on the back, you need to make sure that you do that. 
otherwise your E is going to look weird. As you can see, there's this piece here, and it will definitely confuse you. The rest of them, the love part, you're going to do this part and this part, and then this is the background, and this is the background. And on the B, I probably already showed you this one, sorry. You're just going to do the color part of the B, and the rest of it will be background. Okay. Anyone want that doesn't have the link to the Moda Block? Head and need me to post the link so you can do it, or are you just going to watch? Is that Moda Block at five? Moda Block at three. Oh, okay. Because I was doing five, and I'm like, I thought it wasn't starting back till tomorrow or Tuesday. <laughs> okay. This block, no, this is Blockheads three, Block five called Love by Bridget Heatland, and I know I'm saying that wrong. Because she's from over here. It's by Zen Chick. She's the designer of the block. Okay. And the block is going to look like that. And then you're going to sew all four of the uh, blocks together to create the love. That's cool. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. It, the E is the trickiest part. The rest of them I'm okay with, but I have to pay attention when I'm doing the E. And more than likely, I'm probably going to do the E first. Probably, maybe. I don't know. We'll I always see. Do the, I always do the hardest part first. Yeah, because it gets it out of the Because yeah. if I wait and save the hard for last, by then I'm brain tired. And yeah. that doesn't create a good scenario of, you know. So it does, in the instructions, it, it does give you instructions on the uh, size of strips and everything you need to cut. But I don't bother to follow those. <laughs> Sorry. I just cut strips and I make sure the strips are big enough to go all the way around. And actually, she does have a drawing here so that you can see how that letter should look when you put the colored fabric in the right position. I wonder if she's got the letter E like that too. Let me look. This, I find the E to be super duper hard. Do you like foundation foundation paper piecing, Katie? Uh, I like it enough to do it every now and then, but I don't know that I'm in love with it right now. Okay. So here's a picture of where she colored the E in the other one. I like it okay, but I don't think I'm good enough to make an entire quilt that way and I don't know that I would I don't even know if I would have patience to make an entire paper piece well I don't know I can't answer that question I guess the only way I would know is to make a, a whole big quilt now I've made this love block so many times I kind of enjoy making this particular block because I I'm familiar with it and I've used it inside of other blocks because I think it's fun to do that to it Oh, I was going to show y'all a picture. Hang on a second. Let me go find the picture first. And then I'll share my desktop to show it to you. You're about Hang to on. do the Ursula's minor soon, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, that one's, that one, every time I think about that one, it scares the crap out of me. Yep. Because that's a big one, that one. It's not just a baby, it's the mama too. I'll be doing and thinking about it just scares me. <laughs> well, I signed up for Shannon and um, Stephanie Stitches has a class in Jan mid January or the twenty first or whatever, and um, where she's going to teach a foundation for paper piece. And so I'm going to I've take I'm signed up for that because I've only done it one time for the Moda Blockheads. They had one paper that I did, and that was it. And I was like, eh, it didn't turn out terrible, but it wasn't that great. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, I could take a class from Yvette. I just, I ha and I love Yvette, so it's nothing to do with her. I just don't know if I want to pay high price for a class. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I can't explain my attitude about it. Some, some, some of these, some of these classes to me seem expensive, and I'm I not talking about just pay. her. Wait, what? I did an entire quilt, all paper piecing, and let me tell you, when you get to the entire quilt level, <laughs> it's, it's not any harder, 
the, the more difficult blocks you get, it's definitely just a lot more time consuming. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's probably about as time consuming. I, if I had to rank what what would be time consuming in the world of making quilt blocks, two things rank up in the top two categories. Wait, let me see. Let me make sure that I'm ranking. There, maybe there's three, but the two that I'm going to mention, one is paper piecing because there's a lot involved in it. And like I said, I'm not bashing it. That's not why I'm saying it. Secondly is half square triangles. Especially when you have a quilt full of them. Yeah. Now, I did a mystery quilt along where I needed to make 480 half square triangles. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and I chose to use um, triangle paper because you can lay a whole sheet out of the color you plan on doing for whatever part of that, because there were several colors I used. And I knocked out all 480 half square triangles in one day. But then there was 484 patch blocks to make too. And it took me two times longer to make those four patches than it did me to make those half square triangles. <laughs> so four patches kind of rank up there with square triangles even though i did it in strip sets and cut them apart you still when you cut them apart you still have to turn one the other way to make the four patch and and make sure it lines up in the center properly in both directions which requires more time somebody wants me to send joy you want me to send the um moda blockhead pattern right and then I'm going to show you the picture of where I used the love block. Okay, here's the link. Okay, I mean, what size? What size does that love block end up? Uh, Debbie says it would make a nice little wall hanging by itself. Yeah. Okay, so let me share my screen. I need to get some rid of some windows real fast. Hang on a minute. Got to find the darn picture again. I seem to keep losing this picture. Oh, okay, there I it is. With you that those four, every single yeah. team four times, I agree. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see if it'll let me do it. And I'm going to click on the one thing I'm going to share. This is... Can everybody see it? Yes. Well, do you yeah. see what... So the flower part of this is a Lori Bolt seeds quilt pattern. And she had empty space right there in the middle of that flower. And I stuck that love block right in the middle of it. I made this for a swap partner and she's got it hanging on her wall. She loves it. That turned out really cute, Katie. Yeah, I mean, I had more trouble with this outside part here. Not the, not the um, hourglass. It was this part of the block that I was having trouble with. I had to rip them out twice. And then to make matters worse, I had my leaves upside down. <laughs> <laughs> really tested me. But I didn't give up. I, I mean, I, I went back and I fixed them. And then um, I don't know if you can see the quilting on here. Let me see if I can make... How to, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit where you can see the quilting I did on it. This is the only time I've done actual free motion, and I didn't. Use, I didn't set my um, uh, machine to free motion. I just moved it around under the foot. But can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Good job. You did do and a good this job. Is the first time I've done this, and then I'll I'll take you up to the flower so you can see what I did with the love block. So right here. I only went on the outside of the love so that I can make the love puff up because I felt like that if I quilted this part of it, it would have faded to pink. By doing all of the quilting around the outside like I did, it brought the pink out more. And then this is the outer side of the outside of the flower. And this is 
this is the first time I've ever done this. Just messed around and, and tried to be a little creative. And I was worried that my partner wouldn't like what I did, but she loved it. Um, I do have a picture of the back. <laughs> let me find the, let me download the back. It's not going to hurt for people to see my Facebook, right? It shouldn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is what the back looked like. That's as much as I can zoom it without downloading it. It's still showing the front right now. Okay. I'll wait till it catches up. You hadn't caught up yet? No, I'm I'm looking at the Zoom, which should be live. That's not caught up. That's odd. Have I gotten logged off or something? Oh, oh I know. Wait. I know what I got to do. Hang on. Okay. I think I need to take this and say I got to share this part too, right? Probably. Stop. You should be able to see it. Hmm. Okay, you guys, I'm not sure why I can't see it. So let me go ahead and download it and try differently with this. If I can see the download. Things are in the way. Okay. For some reason. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now let me see if I can go look at it that way. I think I have to tell it to... All right, I'm going to unshare this screen. Everybody's seen it, right? Yep. Yep. And then I have to reshare again. So let me stop this. Stop share. Go find the other picture. And then share again. Share screen. And share this. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the back. So sorry. This is there the back. And of course, when you take a picture with a camera, it looks like it skews it and makes it look all wonky looking, but it wasn't wonky. But let me, um, I like the label too. I love that. <laughs> that's perfect. Yep. So that's what the back looked like. And then I used this really dark blue binding to make it look like a picture frame. That's why it has that dark color on the outside. Okay, so uh, that's, that's what that looks like. So see, you can do all kinds of things with that love block, you guys. Tangle says her first free motion turned out 3D. Oh, that sounds awesome. I need to set this thing back. Okay, there we go. But my swap partner lived in Canada, so she was really happy to get it. All right. Okay, so let's get on with this love block. What does ICARC, I K R stand for? Oh, I know, right. Never mind. Yep. <laughs> Oops. Did we lose somebody? No. Huh? Oh, Denise is still here. Did you see? Wait a minute. Did you sew it to another piece? Like sewing two pieces when you're. Wait, I can't see that. Is that question for me, Denise? I sewed, uh, 
Well, see, the center of the flower was just a square block. You know, you cut a piece of fabric that's shaped like a square. And what I did is I made the the smaller love block, which is the six inch, and it just happened that the block that was required to be in the middle as a negative space was the same size. So it got sewn in with the rest of it. So it's part of the regular piecing of a quilt block. I hear you, Tangle. She said it was her uh, first attempt that ended up 3D, was not intended to be 3D. <laughs> I've had quite a few projects like that. <laughs> yeah, but did you like it in the end? Uh, that's the question. As long as it looked good. Free motion on a treadle. Wow. I am quite that's impressed. Cool. Yeah. All right, let me get some strips cut so we can start on this block. I don't think I have the coordination to run a treadle. I don't think I would either. That would be a lot of work trying to do all of that at once. Something I need. Oh, I need a rotary blade. Let's get some background cut first. Debbie, this pattern on my wall is the feathered snowflake pattern from mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, Judy Niemeyer quilt works pattern. It is discontinued. Um, my papers say it copyright 2012. Uh, so I don't know, I don't remember when it got discontinued, but I still had it hanging around. So it was time to do it. <laughs> I need to put the a little bit. I think it looks great, uh, Thank you. Thank you. I want to do a Judy Niemeyer one. I want to do that um, called Autumn something. The one that I'm going to be doing after this one is Prismatic Star. Uh-huh. So that is, once I get this one and my Bonnie Hunter done, uh, Prismatic Star is one of the three that I'll be working on. Because I always have three quilts, go three projects going. But I also want to do a New York Beauty quilt, too. I bought both the books. I just haven't got around to it. So I'm a little bit thinking I need to get more better at my skills first. I Bonnie Hunter patterns are really good skill builder patterns. Her mystery patterns. Um, you can download them while she's working on them even if you can't start them immediately because really? you, have, you have to get your seams just right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise things don't measure up and don't match, but she always recommends you try one of the uh, building block pieces that she's having you do. Try one, make sure you're making your seams match and keep trying until you get that, then cut the rest and sew the rest. That makes sense. It's a lot of cutting and sewing, though. <laughs> she works a lot with scraps. Have you seen some of her patterns, Katie? Yeah. I've got a few of them downloaded. And that was one of the ones that I had. Um, I'm doing on Ringo Lake. Like I said, I can't remember what year it was. It might have been... 2017, 2018, 2019, I, I, just, I don't remember. <laughs> I know it says on my papers. I miss my pudding table. Does it fit you perfectly? Yes. This is for the birds doing it this way. He built me a cutting table. Yep. A big one. Yep. And I can stand at it and cut and not have back pain. And uh, 
I'm lost without it right now. I can tell you, I will be hurting tomorrow. We are still at 8.33 p.m. here. Yep. We're at 1.30 a.m. now. It is 1.30 in the morning. The fireworks have finally stopped, thank God. Somebody was cracking off fireworks. What was it, 5.30 this morning, babe? Yeah. I couldn't believe my ears. Someone's cracking off fireworks at 5 a.m. in the morning. Well, they weren't going to be around to do them tonight. So. <laughs> I don't know, but it annoyed me because it woke me up. I don't bet. I mean, I just finally got to sleep. I've been having trouble with sleeping. It's been going on for a while now. And for people to shoot off fireworks because they're feeling whatever. And basically, you know, the dogs hear it, so they bark. Then you got to go in there and calm them down because they're thinking it happened in the bedroom. When 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 that mm. storm wrecked the sewing room, you should have heard them. Because I was asleep when it hit, when that tramp hit the side of the house. So when it woke me up, I thought I heard a bomb. And they were barking like crazy. <laughs> Let me see what the temperature is in my studio now. We're down to 68 finally. We're getting there. I'm cutting up fabric, you guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing. Let me see how tall these need to be. So I got some strips cut. Now all I'm going to do is um I'm I'm gonna go ahead and press the leftover strips so that I can use them in the smaller pieces of the E and the O that needs the background on it. And uh, then I will pull out some colors and start picking what I'm going to use and start cutting them also. How far along are you on your next piece, babe? Oh. You're looking strong, but I'm making the strong. Okay, so step away for a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm going to keep cutting some fabric. All right, let me see what I want to pick for the colors. <clears throat> I want to use some. Let's get color. Oh, we got some nice colors in here to pick from for this petite scrap. This one, and we're going to use. I'll show you what I'm going to use in just a minute. I'll cut some strips. Some of that. A little red. I want to use some turquoise and purple. Or either maybe I'll use a pink instead. Let me see what I can use here. Are you going to go with four colors? Yeah. But have the same background. Okay. They'll all be the, that same color. So let's do red, yellow, and oh man, this kind of looks like purple and blue at the same time. But it doesn't seem to be as vibrant. So let me find a different one that looks more vibrant. Because this red and yellow is definitely vibrant. 
Oh, that might work. This definitely might work. Okay, and then all I need is a, let's get a purple out of here from, if I can find the right color purple. If not, we'll choose a different color. Let me see here. What am I going to use? Hmm, that might work. Seems to be a bit of that. Let's try that. Okay. So oh, I'm going to use okay. a turquoise, a purple, a red, and a yellow. Uh, let me show you the colors that I'm going to do it with. There's this purple. Okay. And then here's some turquoise. Okay. And here's some red. Mm -hmm. And some yellow. Mellow yellow. Oh, yeah. Did that purple have gold uh, gold on it? Yeah, it, it just... it's got like uh, specks of... Uh, hang on, let me put it up closer. It's not exactly gold. It's more like different little specks of colors in it. That is pretty, though. I like that. It's a good choice. Yeah, I think so, too. I'm wondering Especially against I'm... that background. Yep. I want to know if I have enough of that red, though. I might have to go hunt something in my stash. See, I could, I could use, oh, wait a minute. I could use this red because it's just as vibrant as this. Look. Oh, well, I agree. Yep. I like the swirls in it, too. It's got hearts and stuff in it, too. What better okay. choice for the word love? Yep. Okay. Right. This over here. Now I'm going to need to cut. Now I got to decide what is going to be what color. Love. Be in here. How do I want to line this up? Okay, so I think I'll do the love in red. And we're going to do the O in the turquoise. And then we'll do the V in uh, purple. And we'll do the E in the yellow. That sounds like a good combination. Yep. Okay, let me back up and see what I missed before I go over here and press this. And start trimming strips. This looks like some people said some stuff. And I want things to come in more. Is applique easier to do than front or paper piecing? I don't know. I know how to do reverse applique, and I find reverse applique easy actually. But um, I don't know. I've never done regular applique, so I can't answer that question. Maybe somebody else can. I like to free motion with a friction pin, iron away kind. What were you going to say? Um, on the applique, easier to do than uh, foundation paper piecing. It just depends on your style, uh, what, what you do better. Um, I prefer foundation paper piecing to applique. However, I do have an applique quilt in my plans, and it will be a lot of applique. <laughs> So it just it just depends on what you find more relaxing yeah. or jo enjoyable. Let's see here. Um, Tiny Talky Tina. Ah, first time I've seen her. Welcome. I like to free motion with a friction pin, friction pin iron away kind. Okay. Joyce says, I'm usually up till 3 a.m. I don't know why I fell, th fell this way. <laughs> Maybe I need chocolate. Oh. <laughs> Tangle says, says a good part of the problem might have been 
I was trying to free motion on a treadle machine. Okay. Tammy said, Tammy says, what pattern is that star you're on your wall? Uh, that uh, was for that, you. Yeah, that was the one I answered earlier. Yep. Um, Robin says, chocolate is always a good choice in my humble opinion. Uh, Tangle says, it looked awful. I kept it for a bit. So anything I did after that, after would be an improvement. Joyce says, yes, chocolate. But remember, we be, we be been on all day. I started at eight with Sean, two with Ian, and then with Katie. And I think that we're there most of the same time. <laughs> yep. Um, I have a bunch of patterns, but don't think I have that one. Joyce says, I love it, Katie. Bonnie says, have three books I want to get. Must be talking about either, G either the Judy Niemeyer or the... Yeah, she, she's Bruce talking Katie. about the Judy Niemeyer, yeah. Yeah. I, I, was have, watching, I don't have any of Bonnie's books. Uh, I was watching Candace's cat, Debbie Dunn says. Math Geek says, be right back. Robin says, love the purple. Math Geek says, the turquoise is amazing. And then she says, okay, now I'll be right back. Have to get some fresh air. Debbie says, happy New Year's, everyone. I have to get up early tomorrow. So I'm off for the night. Thank you for coming, Debbie. And I probably, she's probably already gone by now. Okay, so I'm all caught up. Let's get this pressed so I can start cutting strips. Well, Robin, I, I do not have any of Bonnie's books. I thought about them, but I pattern hop so much that I just, I haven't. So. Oh, these are some of the 10 inch blocks I cut off of some yardage I bought. That's why I have these 10 inch strips or 10 inch block. So we're going to be fun cutting. All right, let me look at a little. I think I can get away with it. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me in Zoom. I'm just glad you gave me the opportunity to come hang out. Well, there's going to be more opportunity because it's a way for me to make friends and give everybody a chance to participate. Because I'm all about how we can learn from each other. And I definitely have plenty to learn. Um, let's put this at the period. Oh, I need to find my um quarter quarter what do you call that ruler? I have yeah, one. Add a quarter? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we have one. I need to find it because it's going to come in handy for this. And I think I have it in my drawer in here somewhere, I hope. And not in my sewing room where I can't find it. Because everything got missed. You're, 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 you're definitely right, Robin. Bonnie does do small quilt blocks. Me? Uh, Bonnie. Bonnie Hunter. She she said that she has three of Bonnie's books, and then she oh, wow. came back and said that Bonnie Hunter does small quilt blocks. I love it. Um, my nine patches will finish at three and a half inches in the quilt, so she's not joking. Bonnie does do some small stuff, and she works mostly with scraps, so you don't have to necessarily buy yardage to be able to do any of her quilts. You just work from your scraps if you have scraps. Uh-oh. I don't know what, oh man, I really don't know. It must be in the sewing room. That means that I'm going to just have to use a regular ruler. 
because I'm not going in this morning room to look for it. I thought I had one in here, but maybe I didn't. Okay, so we're going to improvise. I'm just going to use a regular roller. That's just how it's going to be. Okay, now I. I am going to change the foot on my um sewing machine as soon as I oh there it is I was looking for my sewing machine kit because I changed the foot I'm going to change the foot on my sewing machine I don't use the same foot and I also like to one of the things is I like to use an acrylic foot on uh paper piecing. I noticed that, that the room, the um, foot slides to me better. So when you say acrylic foot, are you talking like a foot with a plastic? Yeah, plastic on it. So I'm okay. thinking, that, I'm wondering if that's not in the sewing room. Oh no. Oh, I found it. Never mind. I was about to have a bit. <laughs> Let me show it to you guys in just a minute. Okay. Yeah, it's a little plastic. Okay. Uh, it's like a... Um, and it's open uh, toe, so there's nothing here to get in the way so that you yeah. can see the seam. Yeah. And I, I like using this on paper piecing and on triangle paper. That makes sense. To get, it, it, it doesn't block your vision of uh, the, the line that you're supposed to be sewing on. Okay. And on my um, machine, my Janome, when I was sewing the blocks earlier I, for the quarter inch, I can set my Janome to do quarter inch. But when I'm doing paper piecing, I set it back to where the needle is in the center. Yeah. And uh, and then I'm going to reduce my stitch length to around 1.5, somewhere around there. That's what I use on mine. I, I use the straight stitch plate. Um, and I, uh, I use my quarter inch foot, but it's a straight stitch foot. So okay. I just make sure I line those, the lines up with my straight stitch. That makes perfect sense to me. I, um, what was I going to say? Could you be talking about? Um, let me think of it in a minute. Can you repeat what you just said? Me? Yeah. Um, okay. So when I paper piece, I, I'm using my quarter inch foot. Uh, it is a straight stitch foot and I have a straight stitch plate on my machine. And so I just line the, the lines up with my straight stitch foot because it points directly towards that needle. Oh, okay. Um, what kind of machine yeah. do you have? Uh, this is a Bernina 770 quilters edition. And then I also have a Bernina 350 patchwork edition. That's a Ricky Tim's edition. Um, that, that's the one I travel to groups with or whatever. This machine is just so big and hard to carry. Yeah, um, my Janome has an HP system on it, but I don't know how to do it. And the videos that are online about it, they don't have the camera where you can see what they're doing. And um, because from what I understand, if I if if and when I ever switch over to the HP system on my Janome, I probably will never go back to it because it keeps everything you're sewing accurate. What, hey, what, oh, sorry. Go ahead. What What's the HP that you're talking about? Was it? It's called a high performance system on my Janome. Okay. It's, just, it's got a uh, my Janome came with three presser foot plates. And one of them's called an HP system, and there's okay. feet to it and everything. I love uh, watching. Yeah, let me read these six so we, we're not leaving anybody out. Bonnie yeah. Hunt does small. Yep, you read that one. Yeah. I love your idea about videos at QuiltCon. 
I like to read about quilts on description cards. Teresa says, Katie, I don't know how you stay up so late. It's not <laughs> even 8 p.m. and I'm ready for bed, laugh out loud. Because I'm a night owl. And I became a night owl because of my son. Um, he never slept after he was born. And then when we discovered he would stop breathing when he did sleep, that was why he wasn't sleeping. I learned how to catnap so that if I heard him make a certain kind of gurgling noise, I would get up and wake him up and make him breathe. And I did that for six years. So now I'm a classic night owl. Well, I'm right there with you, Teresa. I'm not, it's nine o'clock here and I'm not normally up this late. <laughs> I can't help it, you guys. <laughs> the caffeine is helping. That is it. <laughs> the, other, the other is done. You finished it? Oh. Are you going to show them how you can take it apart where they can look at it? Yeah. I mean, the levels. I mean, you know what I mean. I'll show the interior. Joy T said, "Little Lol Teresa, it's ten fifty three, and I feel the same. But it could be the wine. <laughs> I didn't get around to even getting another shot because I got distracted. <laughs> so that tells you how much of a drinker I am. Not much. <laughs> okay, so I sewed that first seam. I sewed uh, A one to A two." And I just use one pin to keep it from moving when I'm doing it. Now I'm trimming off the excess thread and take the pin out. And this is what it looks like on the back. And now I'm going to open it up. And I'm just uh, finger press it to start with. So you can see what it looks like. Now we got two colors on here. Now I'm going to go over to the cutting board and I'm going to trim this part of the block. Robin said maybe caffeine is what I need. Chocolate didn't work. Well, chocolate has some caffeine in it. I didn't know chocolate would keep you awake. <laughs> Depends on the person. Let's see if I make a mistake first, Sage. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Well, then we need to celebrate because it would be your first mistake of the new year, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay, Maybe now. I need to make the mistake so it's the last mistake of the old year. <laughs> yeah. Well, I made a mistake earlier, as you know, when I put those two pet triangles on the wrong sides. I think that was before um, the. I think that was before the fireworks, though, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yep. Okay. Now then, we need to also trim off I am definitely glad I prepped all of these. Okay, so now we're going to cut. We're, I'm trimming the, the pieces off so I have it done right. And now, this is what it looks like. So I've got the first color on. So A1 and A2 has now been sewn on. Now I'm going to sew a three on, which is the bottom part right here of the glove. So I'm going to get another piece of my fabric of the red, and I'm going to line it up on that quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to gently pin it on so it doesn't go anywhere. And Katie Tangled said, oh, that poor baby, you worked extra, extra, extra. I did. The, the reason he would stop breathing in his sleep was because his, ad, he, first off, he was born with asthma like I was. Secondly, after, it wasn't until he was six years old when we had an emergency or we had to call an ambulance to come because he wasn't breathing at all. And he had, he scared me so bad. And, you know, I was trying to get him to breathe in. And they hurt my son up at the emergency room. It was a nightmare. 
But um, come to find out, finally my pediatrician, because I kept telling my pediatrician, you need to send my son to an ears, nose, and throat doctor. There is something wrong with him. He does, There's a reason why he stops breathing. And they wouldn't listen to me to start with. And then when the ambulance thing happened and I took my son in to see them, I said, I told him, I said, you got to get my son in to see a specialist because I never, ever want to see a hospital hurt my son the way they did that day when we were up there. Because after that, they would have to strap my son down. Every time he was hospitalized, they would have to strap him down to get an IV in or anything. Every time he saw a needle coming, he would start screaming. And um, so we were sent down to uh, Shan's teaching hospital in Gainesville. And we saw, oh, no, I needed to move that further. Okay, I just made my first mistake. So anyway, they sent me down to Shan's Teaching Hospital to meet a um, ears, nose, and throat specialist. And they did an MRI on him. And you guys, when they come out and told me what the problem was, I was like flabbergasted. Um, you know, when babies don't breathe, it causes significant um, learning problems and stuff. So we didn't know how much damage over time this issue was causing. Because, you know, he would never sleep. So when they got the results of the MRI back, the MRI showed that his adenoids were blocking 75% of his airway. 75%, you guys. Goodness. And being asthmatic on top of that, that was insane. It was why he would stop breathing, because when you laid him down, it would clog his airway up where it would where he couldn't breathe at all. And um, so they scheduled a surgery for him. And um, when you have that kind of surgery, it's all the membranes inside of that area where the adenoids were at, because they removed his adenoids completely. Um swelled and he ended up in the IC unit, ICU unit for uh, I think 24 hours or something like that because they were literally having to sit him up and say breathe because it was, it was so swollen up his airway was still being blocked because of the swelling from the surgery but my when, when he got over the surgery and and he could sleep at night he was like this different kid. I mean, he went bit from being a child that didn't want to sleep, was, you know, keeping me awake at night. Well, he kept me awake because he wasn't sleeping. And because when he did sleep, he would stop breathing. He totally stopped having bad asthma attacks like he was having. It was an amazing thing to see my son breathing normal like most kids his age should be breathing. But all of this could have been avoided if they had done something when he was smaller. And so now he has a learning disability because of it. It's, it's a minor learning disability, but it's, it's enough that it causes issues when it requires him to read and understand what he reads. But he can do math like nobody's tomorrow, and um, he could do square roots. When he was in the second grade, I got a phone call from the... Um, teacher and she says I don't understand this your son can't read but your son could tell me the square root of all the way up to a hundred and not miss one of them what second grader can do that I'm like I don't know I said I could tell you the square roots all the way up to 100 she says yeah but you're an adult I said yeah but I could do it when I was a child numbers you know seem to be his thing and the other thing is, is he could put anything to get when he saw you put something together and he only had to watch you do it one time. And then after that, he would do it himself. He was always he was always tinkering and taking things apart. And then he'd come in there and say, Mom, I took this apart. And now I can't put it back together. And it would be things that I couldn't put back together. <laughs> But he was taking them apart because he wanted to see how they did. 
So, you know. Get, get my charger. I'm going to take a quick break here in just a second to change out headsets. Um, Sound like you're getting so tired. A, huh? Sound like you're getting a little tired. Oh, I am. I definitely am. Robin said, actually, after supper, she had a coffee and the second ice. And she was on her second iced green tea already. She's had too much chocolate. She's just exhausted and maybe she needs a Mountain Dew. And then she said, if my grandkids had this much sugar, they would be ba banging off the walls. Yeah, Mountain Dews will definitely do that. Joy said, it's New Year's Day in Puerto Rico now. And Robin said, Happy New Year, in Puerto Rico. Look, you Happy guys. Happy New Year, Joy. Oh, that's adorable. Okay, now I got to get the other background on it. Okay. All right, I'm going to meet myself while I change out headsets. Okay, sweetie. I'm trying to make sure my dog's not laying up under me somewhere. Ready to go? Get down. No. Down. She's trying to get his attention. Yeah. Oh, thank you. They have an hour to go in New York, and the first one will be going off here directly. And I bet I'll lose all my East Coasters then. Okay, let's get this sewn on. Happy I mean, New Year to all of us. Yep, they have about an hour left to go. I'm going to go. But Lynn. Lynn is on Eastern Standard Time. They have another hour to go. Because we're three hours ahead of them. So when they hit midnight, it'll be 3 a.m. our time. And we should, what time is it now? Four, At 2.30, we got to do another drawing. Four, and it'll be five. number four, right? Okay. Make sure I don't lose count here. Okay, so now I've got that other background strip on here, and I'm going to go over and press it and trim it. Okay, Katie, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. I got it swept over. I'm having to use a wired headset while my other headset charges. I think that's the longest time I've ever tried to to use that wireless headset. Do you always use a headset when you're on a live Zoom? It's just easier for me. I notice you're not the only one that does it, and I'm wondering if there's a reason for it. Well, I don't have, like, all my audio is coming into my ears, so the audio that, um, like, I don't hear any echoes or anything like that. Oh, okay. So... You know, when you're talking, it's not coming back into the microphone. Oh, that makes sense. I used to work uh, for a company where I used to work for several different companies that I did phone tech support. So if you had a problem with either your computer, or your cell phone, or whatever I was tasked with fixing, uh, I would be the one sitting there. Oh, that's adorable. I'm loving those blocks. See, they're, they're really, uh, they're not, the only one, like I said, is a pain is the E. Gotta the rest of e. them are, yeah. yeah, the rest of them are doable. I mean, yeah. look how quick I did that. It's super that's cute. It, yeah, it come out, I should have did the E first so you can see how long it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you get your bang for your buck with the small blocks. That's right. So, the big E was going to be the yellow, I think I said. Yep. So yeah. let's go ahead and do this E. Let's do the, let's bring on the pain first. I will tell you, yellow is one color I do not have in my sash. Why? I am not a fan of yellow. 
That's interesting. I can't wear yellow without it looking like I don't washing wear yellow. me out. I just, I don't, I don't typically use yellow and I don't use brown a lot. I really don't use green a lot. So this, this thing behind me, I had to buy this green. There was no way I had any of this in my stash. Um, but I don't use, I definitely don't use yellow for much of anything. So like if, if I want yellow, I have to literally go digging through my stash and hope something has yellow on it. <laughs> And what's funny is the first quilt I was ever gifted. Um, I'm the first quilter in my family. My grandmother that taught me to sew didn't quilt. However, back in the 90s, she got these panels for us to color. So we colored them. And the quilt she made me, my favorite colors have always been pinks and purples and those kinds of colors, those cool colors. Uh, mm -hmm. The quilt she made me, all of my blocks that I colored are bordered in red, which is also a color I don't do much with. Then it's sashed with yellow, and then she bound it with green. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they're just not the colors I would ever use. I like, I like using yellow within other things. I, I don't specifically have, like, a yellow and green or something like that. Now, um... I wish I could show it to you, but I'm afraid if I mess with it, it has glass on it. That's why I'm afraid to mess with it. I remember that comment I made about making a mystery quilt that had 480. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Well, all those half square there, triangles. Yeah. I used a, I used a, um, I, in fact, I'll show you. I might have a piece of yellow come to think of. Um, cause I have scraps from that fat quarter bundle. It was a Batik's fat quarter bundle. And it was, uh, it had blues in it, and it had turquoise colors in it, dark blues, and it also had different shades of yellow in different, in, in different formats of yellow. Like okay. with this one, it was blue and yellow mixed up like that. Can you see that okay? Oh, cute. Now that I could handle a lot better than just a straight yellow. But now there was this straight up yellow in it oh yeah that would be but I would I would, I would struggle <laughs> yeah but when you use when you use it with um the that it was part of this bundle and when I started I was like I don't know if I like that because it's a more orange than it is yellow to me it's like a it's like a uh uh the orange part is more laid in the yellow than the yellow so it makes it look a little funny but when you put it with these colors that were in that quilt, it's beautiful. And you're thinking, wow, that really came out. And I, you know, I was really frankly surprised at how it came out because um, when she gave the final instructions on how to put the blocks together, and when I went to put, when I put it on my design board, I just didn't love the design of what she was trying to do with it. And I thought, hmm. Let me see what happens. So I took it all off the board and I started with one block and I started working like from the top side of it and from the bottom side of it with all my other blocks. And before I knew it, I had this big, huge design on it. And when you looked at it, you're like, hey, this might not be conventional, but it sure looked cool. And when I showed it to, to Diane and Krista, I said, what do you think about this? Because now D Diane was also doing that same quilt mystery and so hers was more closer to the directions and when she saw that she says Katie that really works leave it like it is and so I did and I love it it's going to be beautiful when I get a back uh find a backing for it and get it quilted it'll be really pretty I one of our ladies and one of the quilt guilds I'm in here in town made a beautiful beautiful yellow and blue quilt but I could not look at yellow and long enough to have made those same color choices. I, I read somewhere that a lot of quilters don't like making any quilts that have yellow in. And I don't really, I didn't really understand why that was. Because if you look at a lot of quilts, you don't really see a lot of yellow in many of them. You might mm -mm. see minute amounts of them, 
but you might not, but you're not going to see an excessive amount of it. And the no. other color is purple, which I find surprising. That it, I don't see a lot of purple quilts. You're right, but purple is my favorite color, so I do That's a lot with purple. Too. I don't understand why you would not use either color. I think purple isn't used frequently because it is a divisive color. So either you like purple or you don't. And I think yellow is that same reason is either you like it or you don't. That's interesting. Because there's no, there's no middle ground. It's not a, a shade of something or, or whatever. I mean, either it's a yellow or it's not a yellow and either it's a yeah. purple or it's not a purple. You can, with reds, you can get pinks, you can get orangey reds and you can get all those variations. Same with greens and blues. You've got all those color variations, but, and you can have different shades of yellow and different shades of purple, but they're always different you shades. Like those, yeah. Um, yellows, especially you, you have different hues and shades and, Sometimes those hues or shades, you're like, mm, I don't like that one. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty selective on what I do like. Now, that particular yellow that showed up in that back quarter bundle, to start with, I wasn't really going to use it. And then I got to looking at how the half square triangles were looking as I sewed them. And I'm like, you know, let's see what happens with this. I took a chance of, you know, just get a feel of it. And then when it started... Because you weren't, you're not using it all the uh, with this mystery. You didn't have an excessive amount of every color. I mean, the color was like strung out, but it blended together to create this effect that you know because it was all half square triangles and four patches. Gotcha. And it had an interesting effect where you're you weren't being oversaturated with any one specific color. And I used a, a turquoise as a background instead of a white. Okay. So that I think between the turquoise, it was a really pale turquoise uh -huh. and it gave that hue to it that set that, that I think calmed down any yellow that might've been a pain to look at. Yeah. And it, 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 it yeah, it, I was really happy with it. I, I'm really proud of that one. I look forward to seeing it once you get it quilted. Yeah, um, I I want to get get it quilted and then get get it outside where I can hang it up somewhere where you can see the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, I need to back up here and see what we have missed while we were talking. Oh, good, good call. Right. <laughs> you know, I don't want anybody to be left out. Okay, we're gonna go. Um, 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 um. Robin, let's see. Okay, so it's New Year's Day in Puerto Rico. Happy New Year's Day or New Year's. Robin says 59 minutes to go. Joy says Happy New Year. Joy, no wonder I didn't know any of these bands. I thought I was just old. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <clears throat> Terry says Happy New Year. Joy says Happy New Year. Um, Robin says, Joy T, what bands? And Joy says, wow, poor baby. He's talking about Thomas. Okay, so that was the conversation. Then Matt says, Happy New Year, Joy. Michelle, the culture, Joy T, no problem. We have an hour to go here in New York. The bands and singers on Dick Clark, he says. Uh, Joy Cheek, Happy New Year's, everyone. That's somebody I haven't seen in here. Hi, Joy Cheek. I'm sorry I missed your initial hello. Robin says, so does Joy T. And Math Geek says, still four hours to go for me. Robin says, wow, Math Geek, where do you live? She says, near Seattle, Washington. Tammy, your audio is much louder than it was earlier. Nice. So yeah. This, this headset just does not feel as comfortable, though, for long times. <laughs> I have to work Tammy on that. Said, yeah, and then Terry says, Tammy, you sound better. And to, Teresa's like, what? Yellow is beautiful. <laughs> and she's got uh, a, an emoji with uh, hearts in the eyeballs. Then uh, Tammy says, you should get a small amount of yellow just to highlight your work. And Teresa says, yeah. one of my favorite quilts is blue and yellow. It's so pretty. 
Joyce's. I used yellow grunge as a background for a southwestern style quilt, and it turned out great. Uh, Joyce says to Math Geek, do you have snow there now? Terry says, yes, blue and yellow quilts are beautiful. Math Geek says, no, it's almost 50 degrees Fahrenheit here today. We usually only get snow once or twice a year. If that is warmer than usual this year, too. Teresa says, I like all colors. However, I don't use solids or grunge. Yeah, I don't like grunge. I want to make pants out of them every time I see them. Because they remind <laughs> me of stone washed jeans. Um, let's see. Joy says, I always thought it was cold and snowy there. And <laughs> Robin says, I loathe gray. Tangles S says, purple used to be very stylish. I think may, may, we may have purple burnout. That makes sense. Um, then, Joy, then Math Geek says, no, it's very moderate here due to winds coming from the southwest off the ocean. There is a lot of snow in the two mountain ranges that are to the west and to the east of the Puget Sound. Eastern Washington. Washington gets a lot of snow, though. You've been getting those atmospheric rivers, though, haven't you, Math Geek? Tangle says, an orange, for a long time, you really could oh. not get <laughs> orange fabric. Now, I like certain colors of orange. Andrea says, it got up in the mid-70s here today, and it is beautiful. Math Geek says, so true. I just stay home when I can if it snows. There are just too many steep hills. And Diane says, get her done, Katie. I am getting it done. Um, Math Geek says, also, many people here grew up in other parts of the world where it never snows. Katie, can you put the closed captions on? Oh, it's off again? What happened? Oh, I forgot to turn it on. That's what happened. Oops. Oh, you should have reminded me. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to put a sticker on my monitor. Turn captions on. Okay, let's see if it's working. Hello. Yep, it's working. Okay. I'm so sorry, Andrea. I forgot to turn that on. I just turned it on, Joy. <laughs> okay. Math Geek says, wow, Andrea, that sounds nice. And I wonder if it's a way to tell Zoom to just leave it on. Andrea says, yes, it was. I live in southeast Texas, close to Galveston. Math Geek says, yes, but atmospheric rivers just bring rain unless the winds shift and come from the Fraser Valley, B.C. Katie, can you turn closed captions on, please? Yep, I turned them on. It's funny because up there it says subtitle, subtitles and closed captions unavailable. Yeah, that is so when I go to the Zoom, it says captions unavailable, but it was showing them... It's showing them in uh, um, the live. Um, yeah, it, it's showing them on the screen. It yeah. just said that they were unavailable. I know. That's so weird. So it is at the bottom of the screen, Joy. It's for uh, Andrea. Andrea's hearing, hearing impaired, oh. and I forgot to accommodate that problem. It's not a problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anytime that you need closed captions, definitely let your creators know. Yes. She told me we yesterday to I didn't know she was hearing impaired, and I forgot to turn it on today. So that's my mistake. I need to put a sticky note on my monitor. Turn on captions when live, or turn on captions. Uh, Andrea, can you have closed captions on pre-recorded ones, or do I have to set it on my recording while I'm recording it? Do you know the answer to that? Uh oh, there's that first yawn. I wondered when that was going to happen. I've been waiting on it. Well, if you, if you hadn't know, said something, you, I wouldn't know about that yawn. Yeah, well, the thing is, is I, I, I go through yawns like three times a day. And I, I haven't had one today, have I? So this is the first one. Hmm, that's interesting. You should have had two by now. 
Daniel says it's fairly new, right? I've only seen caption on lives in the last four or five months. Oh, I wonder why. They weren't doable or something? You two probably didn't think about them. They should. Because they definitely should. I mean, they're in the business to be do this. They should already have done something about that. And Teresa Louise said you can set it to default in the setup, Katie, for a closed okay, captions. Okay, I'll make sure I figure that out then. Oh boy. I'm glad you came across this. I'll need to know this for my. <laughs> yeah, because this is the first I've been. It's the first time somebody said anything. It didn't occur to me. And now I know. And I don't want anybody feeling left out. That's not my goal here. My goal is to get everybody engaged. All right, now I've got. The first part on. Let's get the next part. Let's see if I can use some of this leftover stuff. Teresa Louise said it's been around for a while. Well, I've seen some closed captioning, but I ha I hadn't really given it any thought, and that's my mistake for not giving it any thought. Yeah, this headset's already bothering my ears, but. Are you, like is, me, you don't, are you like me? You don't like the pressure of headsets? No, I don't. And I've got the my glasses go behind my ears, too. So then I've got the headset pressing on my ears and pressing on my glasses. And I'm very pressure sensitive. So this chair that I'm using, if I did not have this chair, I would not be able to do nearly as much sewing as I do. I, I, I just could not handle it. I suffer from pain, and there's a lot of things that causes pain you don't even think about because of having pain. And one of them is headsets cause pain. Yeah, I, 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 guess. Um, I have uh, one of my diagnoses is fibromyalgia, and I ended up with a sensory storm uh, when I was working. Uh -huh. So basically I went from, I was fine to almost migraine level constantly. The lights would trigger a migraine. Uh, other people talking into their headsets would cause a migraine. Uh, if other teams played music, that would cause a migraine. Uh, people walking by after having just eaten, I could tell you what they ate for lunch. Uh, smells would cause a migraine uh, and it all started because the temperature um, controls in the building I was working in got broken over one winter and they had temperatures up to 84 or 86 degrees at my desk and I had uh, two fans pointed on me and now I can handle temperatures up to about 70 degrees and beyond that I start having brain fog and mental problems my studio earlier got up to 69 i had to open the window it's 28 degrees outside it is now finally down to 67 degrees in my studio um, my neighbor downstairs likes to blast their heat and so of course heat rises and therefore my apartment gets really toasty i think i would have to complain about that so i i I uh, started having oral migraines while I was in California last year. Oh gosh! It, it was the I see. I had pain, and I ran out of my pain medicine because I was in California longer than I was supposed to be. So instead of trying to go to a doctor and get pain medication, I chose an alternative way of dealing with pain, and I thought that that was what caused the art. The first one I had. And come to find out that had nothing to do with these orals. But um, I've been having a lot of trouble with my eyes. And so they sent me to a specialist in Denmark. And he said that um, they, they found a couple things that relates to my eyes. But the orals are not caused from that. The orals are caused by something in my brain. Yeah. And um, that's going to require more follow-up if it gets worse. There's sometimes... Um, now, I haven't had one in, I don't know, three or four weeks now, but 
um, la I think it was last month, there was one day where it lasted three hours instead of the usual 30 Ouch. minutes lag. And you can't do nothing when your eyeballs are seeing psychedelics in it. No, you can't. You have to just sit there and, and wait, wait it out. It doesn't hurt, but it's very... I noticed right here on the front of my head right here, I feel like this there's pressure here, but it doesn't hurt. So I don't know if this is related to the oral, but it's it's very disorienting because you have to sit there and wait it out. There, there's no way to speed it up. No. I um I had my first complex migraine when I was working for the company, the last company I worked for. Um and they were trying to get me go to go via ambulance to the hospital because I I was non-responsive. So they were like talking to me or whatever. And I was looking at them and I remember them saying words to me, but words didn't make sense. Um, and then when I did get to the hospital, they, of course, treated it. Um, I don't know what meds they gave me. I can't remember. But that was my first complex migraine. But I've had several since then. And your fibromyalgia was probably caused from one of those because fibromyalgia it comes from something catastrophic. Something it catastrophic happens to you, which triggers an over use of your nerve endings. And um, mine was probably not only physical trauma, but um, I suffer from severe migraines well i actually already had fibromyalgia before that um mm -hmm. and i was actually using a service dog at the time um and he was he uh that service dog his name was bones uh he is still alive he's kick up and kicking still i think he's 16 or 17 this year uh, mm -hmm. we, we found a, a home for him where he thinks he can, he's still working, uh, cause he would not, he would not stop working. Mm -hmm. That's why we, I couldn't hang on to him because he would get stressed with me leaving the house without him. Uh, but he just, he wasn't up for continuing to work. Um, but he actually got up from underneath my desk and walked down the, the hallway basically, or down the aisle to go get my boss and wow. he never did that but he did it for that um my i had a back injury in 2010 uh, while i was working for a retail company and i was lifting shelves over my head and in all different angles i mean i'd done it you know for over nine and a half years at that point so it was nothing new but i turned in my two weeks notice and i was on one week left and I felt, I heard something pop. I didn't feel it, but I heard something pop. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't hurting. And then a couple of hours later, I'm in the manager's office because I was uh, assistant manager. So I was having to close the store that night. And I felt something pop. And after that, I could not use my legs. I could not lift anything. Like I was in so much pain and they ended up sending me to workman's comp and I think workman's comp stopped at like six weeks, but I'd been not been at the company for like five weeks at that point. Uh, but that was my, my catastrophic that started my fibromyalgia. I went to neurologist or I went to a rheumatologist from my original doctor. They'd already sent me to pay, uh, physical therapy three or four times and then they sent me to a neurologist and he ran every test he could find that he could run. The only thing that they've never done to check to make sure it's not MS is a spinal tap. But with as severe as my fibromyalgia is, it's been suspected enough that I've had multiple MRIs to check for lesions uh, to make sure it's not MS. Um, of course, all of those have come back negative. So the only diagnosis that they would give me at that point was fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. And then recently I've been diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. So I now have that in addition to fibromyalgia and all the other wonderful comorbid challenges that come with fibromyalgia. <laughs> okay, I need to interrupt for a minute. Sure. Um, I need everybody, you have five minutes 
to put in exclamation mark GQ fun because I'm doing the next drawing, number four. Five minutes is the time limit. So try to get it in. Make sure your chat is setting to live so you can keep up with everything. Where is my little timer? So put in exclamation mark TQ fun. Yeah, Terry, I my my dogs absolutely love me. They they're not concerned at all normally. He was actually trained to go get help. Uh, my current service dog is not trained to go get help. He doesn't like strangers, and he just moved my camera for me. Um, but he's not trained to go get help, but he's trained to mitigate some of the challenges that make my fibromyalgia worse. Okay. I may have to set my headset down to go adjust my camera. He's laying up against my tripod. That's the dog's favorite spot. Lay where they're not supposed to be laying. Exactly. That's what ours does all the time. I think mine are a little confused that we're spending so much time in the living room that we usually don't use. They're like, why are we not in the sewing room? But we're out here. It's odd. Can you, um, I think I need to eat. Boom, boom. No, I was thinking, could you gently warm up that meat, not on high, but on very low? Put it in there for like a minute and a half on extra low in the microwave. And I'll finish eating that red meat. Protein would be good right now. I'll have to put it in a small saucer or some in the drawer. Wait a minute, this needed to go away across. Uh-oh, I about did a boo-boo. Like I said, this E is very challenging. Or it's a pain in the butt, more like it. It's not challenging, it's just a pain in the... You got Sean on the chat? Hi, Sean. How are you? Uh, about the bot. I'm doing it the hard way because I can't figure out how to do it the easy way. Okay. Hang on. I'll, let me go get a refresh train. Type exclamation GQ fun to be part of the drawing. You'll get a $25 gift card from Fat Quarter Shop. Okay. Now that looks like it's supposed to look. Now I got it done right. I'm glad to see you, Sean. And yes, I'm still kicking. Still kicking. And ticking. Okay, now I'm officially back. Okay, welcome back. Thank you. I had to explain to the hubby. Why puppy was getting kicked out. <laughs> yeah, Sean has made it to the channel, baby. Woohoo! I wonder if I want to take a chance of this not being wide enough. No, I do not. Let's get another piece of yellow. I'm not chasing it. Where's my yellow? Teresa, I do, uh, Teresa Louise, I completely agree. 
Um, I, for a while, had to give up on doctors uh, for my fibro because they really don't know what to do. Um, when I, I really got diagnosed, think they, yeah, I don't think they have a clue what to do. Well, they, when I got diagnosed with uh, psoriatic arthritis, one of my general practitioner who diagnosed me started trying to get me into a rheumatologist and he tried, I think, five or six different rheumatologists and my case kept getting declined because the rheumatologist would see fibromyalgia in my chart and they're like, well, we just refer those to pain clinic. And I'm like, well, I'm not being that referred for fibromyalgia. And I actually had to argue with the rheumatologist office I'm currently going to for that same reason, because they didn't want to see me. They just wanted to refer me to pain clinic. Joy is asking if Robin left. I don't know. Um, I haven't well, seen her in the chat a one while. More, one more minute. Get that exclamation mark GQ fun in. So that I can draw a lucky winner for that back quarter shop uh, gift card. Sean said that he's good. He didn't. He was sorry he didn't answer earlier. He ended up taking a three-hour nap. <laughs> I have a hard time. We have a, we have fiddled with that damn new microwave, so I cannot figure out what. No, I was talking about the old one. Really? Oh, they're sinking away. Sorry, it's cold then. Oh. Math Geek just said that uh, she thinks Robin is still here, but she's been re busy wrestling with the dog. Okay, I need to back up here. I'll give I'll give y'all one more minute on the exclamation mark PQ fun. Oh, I was hoping she would be able to get to it too, but she's off with the dog. I'm sorry, but I don't know what to do with people that have fibro. I was diagnosed in 1990. Yeah, I mean. I don't even talk to these doctors here about it because it'll just get ignored. But my husband, sometimes he'll poke me on the arm and I'll say, oh, that hurt. That's fibro. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even poke me hard. He just lightly poked me. Yeah. So I have algae spots in the weirdest spot. So I found out that there's certain kinds of clothes that I can't wear that causes pain. I'm the right there with you. I'm, I'm good. Sorry, I didn't answer. Ended up taking a nap. So now you're going to be awake for a while. Joy says, was wondering what the most challenging quilt you ever. Are you asking me that, Joy? I think so. I was wondering, what's the most challenging quilt you have made? Uh, if that's for me, it would be my sugary do. And you guys can answer that same question if you like. <laughs> I have two in the works uh, that I will be doing that are going to be more challenging than anything else I've ever done. One, once I pull it back out, it, I'll have to get back to you on that because I don't know of a good way to explain it without showing part of it to you. The other is going to be the one everybody here locally calls me the crazy quilter for, I am doing a one inchy project. I am literally taking one inch squares so they will finish at half an inch and I will be making a full size, full to queen to possibly king size quilt out of them. So hey, if Tom, do you want to join us to sew in the Zoom through the, the YouTube? Because I can send you the link for that. That would be and awesome. Nikolai, Sean asked you a question. Because I can't see. I know you finished one of them. Oh, the theater's completely done. It only had three floors. Mm hmm. He's got the theater done. You are not getting any, Nora, so stop begging. Sorry, but you already had your meal. Joy, it would be my sugary dew quilt. Um. Oh, Joy Cheek hasn't ever seen it, probably. Hmm. Let me see if I can find that. Hold on while I go look for it. 
it's easier to show you in a picture without the border on it because right now it's got the border on it and there's no way I can show you the entire thing without making a mess of it because I need to get it. I'm going to oh, send it. No. I'm going to send it to um, Tiffany for quilting. And I think that while I'm in the United States, I'm hoping to find a backing for it because that is the reason it hasn't been sent to her because I can't find a backing I want to use on it. <laughs> so hold on while I go look for a picture of it. No, Nora, you're not getting any. Uh, give me a sec, John. I need to put this here, and I'll show you the what I'm working working on. Sorry for interrupting you, Tammy. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. Mathgate yeah. came back and said uh, that that's an ultimate postage stamp size. It absolutely is. <laughs> yeah, I haven't made a tiny one yet, but I would like the challenge of it, I think. Just because. I think it would be fun. Oh, and I'm still supposed to be drawing a name. Okay, I've been <laughs> wasting a couple minutes here. Um, one more time. Put in... Uh, exclamation GQ fun for a $25 gift card. And then I'm going to share. Oh, wait a minute. No, not yet. I don't know why that one keeps coming up. Goodbye. I don't really. It's bothering you. No, I accidentally closed the window. I didn't want to close. Darn it. Nora, enough. enough okay, enough. now I'm going to share my screen so I can show you the sugary do. Share screen. Oh, wow. This is my Gosh. sugary do. This was a year long uh, Bernina sugary do quilt along. And, um, I'm going to point my mouse at different, you should be, can you see my, me moving the mouse around? Uh-huh. Okay. So this was month one and this was started in January of 2020. I had never done this style. I did fine with that one. And then month two was, which one was month two? I want to say that the Tetris was. Uh, that was month two. Month three was the half circle reverse appliques. That's what this is, is reverse appliques. Month four is the delta row, and this is what nearly sunk me. Um, every time I would sew one triangle to the next one, they would not sit flush like you see here on this quilt. And after about six times of trying and being in tears and, you know, I, I, I just, I didn't think that I was skilled enough. And so I wrote in the Facebook group that I was having trouble with the Delta row and that, um, I'm going to stop. That's what I said. I was going to give up and, and two ladies messaged me and says, um, we want to give you our email and we want you to write to us and explain what is going on and um some of y'all know that i'm a visual learner not a read the pattern learner i mean i can read the pattern but I, um i have to see things being done and i couldn't exactly see what um irene was doing when she was sewing the two triangles together i was missing a key a uh, key bit of information that i was not getting and it wasn't her fault. It was because I wasn't seeing it. And so I told them what was going on and what had happened. And they wrote back and they wrote, they had drawn pictures. They had written out instructions step-by-step step of how to make this point line up with this one and this one to line up with this one in order to sew it together. 
well, they're, they're sashing in between it. Yeah. So it was, yeah. Okay. If that makes it, because actually there was a outside border on the triangle. So you're technically lining up this point to this point. So she told me to take a friction pin and on the back side of every one of these triangles, uh, mark a quarter inch all the way around. And it was for a reason. And she wanted me to do all of them and then take the first two triangles. I didn't start with this when I started with this and this. She said, take your pin with the triangles facing each other and go through that point at your quarter inch where the two lines meet. And then when you come through this point, you're going to come through that same point on the back. Then come down to the bottom, start at that point down here, and then go over here through that point. And then once you have that done, uh, gently um, pull the two triangles where they're laying flat against each other, and then pin up the side. And then sew a quarter inch from where your pin started all the way down to the other side. And when I done that and I opened it, guess what? I had triangles lining up. So I'm not only am I a visual learner, but I'm also angle challenge. So this nearly put it into all of it. And um, there's paper piecing. There was paper piecing here. This is reverse applique as well, the circles. This was just strip sets being sewn and turned two different directions. The arrows were also paper pieced. This was strip sets being sewn together a particular way. This one right here was, she had it where all of the, whatever these are called, I can't remember what they were called, were going in one direction. And I got a wild hair and decided I wanted them to go in two different directions. So that was my doings. And then up here, the X's was also paper pieced. And then up here was uh, piecing and cutting and at a, you know, at a diagonal and sewing all this into one piece. So that's, this is an, this took an entire year to make. There, I think there was about 3,000 people who participated in this sew along. Um, I got an honorable mention from Bernina, but I didn't win the sewing machine, but somebody else did. And, I but I, think. this is my proudest piece because I could have given up and just said, screw it, not do it. But because two people in the quilting community took the time to tell me how to do this in a way that my brain understood how to do it. And I pushed through. Am I past being angle challenged? Heck no. I still turn triangles the wrong way. And, you know, I think I'm always going to have that problem. Did it stop sharing? Yeah, it stopped sharing your screen. It's showing okay. you now. Okay. So that was my first and I'm, I'm, I believe this was my first quilt top I put together as well. But it's not um, quilted because I can't figure out what kind of back I want to have on it. And that's why it hasn't been sent to um, Tiffany. But I talked to Tiffany the other day and I'm probably going to bring it with me. And I hope to go to a quilt shop where I can find a back I might like. We'll see. Are you going to ask her to quilt it live so you can see her quilt it? No, I don't think so. Because I don't know if she would do that anyway. That hadn't occurred to me. I don't know. Let me ask her and see what she says about it. That I'd be, I'd love to see how she, what she decides to do quilting wise. Yeah, because I want her to quilt it because I think that she would make it shine. She does. She would. She does a really good job. Mm -hmm. From what I from what I've seen. Yep. All right. Do we need to do that drawing? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hope everybody put their little thing in because I'm about to draw. Thanks for reminding me. I'm excited. I want to win. win. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Luan Lewis. Congratulations, Luan. Congratulations. Let me get my email so I can give it to you. Um, in order to get the gift card, you're going to have to email me at the email I'm about to provide you with. And make sure you send me the email because it's the only way that I can buy you a gift card on Fat Quarter Shop as a e-gift card so that you can go spend 25 bucks at Fat Quarter Shop. Congrats. All right, Luan's commented. Woohoo, thank you. You're welcome. So let me get it Congratulations. in here. Congratulations. I'll tag you so you can see the email. Oh, Linda, I understand. <laughs> Happy New Year's to you, too. She said, oh, well, no win and cannot stay up for last one. So Happy New Year. See you tomorrow. Yep. Happy New Year, sweetie. I'm glad you stayed as long as you did. John, before you come here, I was working on this one. That is, that is a theater. I finished it. After I finished it, I was starting with this, um, what they call it, assembly square. I well, started now for, I don't know, for an hour ago. About an hour ago. I'm, I'm probably finishing well after this is done. After the lap is done. Happy New Year, Eastern Standard Time. Yep, it is that time. Yep. I'm sure they dropped the ball in Times Square, right? Or it's dropping right now, anyway. Uh, about five minutes. Nine fifty-five. Yeah, it's got about five minutes there. My clock says it's two. Oh, you're right. It's two fifty-five. You're right. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought my clock said something different. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to. All right, let me move this laptop out of my way because I won't need it for another two hours. And let's get this pressed where I can uh, cut it properly. Mm -hmm. I got the last piece on this this next my section. Dog. Yeah, my dog is sitting here begging for my leftover. <laughs> She's not getting any of my food. She can hang it up. She's already had their dinner. My dog's favorite food that he gets as a treat other than cheese is carrots. Oh, and my dogs love carrots, too. He does not like peanut butter, though. And yeah, I've checked my, all my peanut butter, so all my peanut butter is dog safe. But he will turn up his nose at peanut butter and walk away. He doesn't like peanut butter? He does not like peanut butter, and he has not liked it since he was a puppy. I had to give him medicine as a puppy. The vet was like, of course, you know, just put it in peanut butter. I'm like, that's fine. All my other dogs have always liked peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Never expected that I would have a dog that did not like peanut butter. <laughs> I've tried to offer mine peanut butter, come to think of it. Just make sure it has no xylitol in it. Yeah, I'm xylitol, aware of it. Yep. Yeah. I'm a little leery about giving them anything that's been processed to any extent, especially with Totem, with the problems he's got. Yeah. Well, especially because now he's fully on the overall diet, and I really don't want to, I don't want to break what seems to be working with him right now. Uh, when you find a diet that works for your dog, definitely don't break it. And it's extended his life. We thought we were going to lose him last year. Um, I don't even know how we got him through it, because it was, it was bad. He could sit stand up. Nikolai had to get him on his feet so we could get him outside to use the bathroom and it was just horrible. His eyes were all droopy so you knew he was dehydrated. Yeah. Because everything he was putting in was drinking or, you know, even after we, you know, what we didn't give him any more food and um, he was still drinking and then he would bark it up. And, um, yeah, it was, it was very, 
I told, and the fact that he looked like he did it, it really scared us. We thought we were going to lose. Him. And I told him, I told Nicholas, and that's why we're um going to be looking for a puppy, uh, another Dotson, because yeah. Nora is so attached to Coda that if something were to happen to him, because we we I experienced something with her that I wasn't even aware of until it happened. Uh, Hanifa came by and she she only wanted to take Coda out. She was going to nature and she wanted to take him. She wanted to leave. She didn't want to take Nora with her. She wanted some time with uh, Coda and her. And I'm like, okay, I didn't think anything of it. The whole two hours they were gone, Nora howled and panicked. It was like she was freaked. And, you know, like you've heard me say many times that well, some of you have that they, when they sleep together, she sleeps on him sometimes, or mm -hmm. she'll see her spooned against him or her head between his legs. And I think that if he were to pass away before we find another dog, we're going to have a problem. Oh, my, uh, my boy is an only dog, but he gets along with all the other dogs so well he can play with any other dog that he ever comes across. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're aggressive, doesn't matter if they're timid and shy and submissive, you know, doesn't matter what the other dog is like. He has not found a dog he cannot play with, but we have not ever had another dog in the house because he gets so insanely jealous of any attention we give to any other dogs. <laughs> it's always a competition with these two, but I've only ever had two dogs at a time. I, I just, when me and Nikolai got married, you know, I had just lost my other German Shepherd. What about six months before that? Or something? Yeah, it was. It was like five or six months before that, I think, when he passed away. And so Ichi was by herself. But I don't think Ichi. I don't know if Ichi really missed him or not because he stayed outside more than I didn't let him. You know, when you live in Florida. German Shepherds want to be outside. Uh huh. Even here in Greenland, if Coda had his way, he would be outside. They, they love like nature. All the time. They're not a house dog. They're working dogs. Uh huh. And um, yeah. So I'm sure she missed him. She, you know. And then when we got when we got Coda, you know, after we had, I had moved here, we got her. We got him when she was, he was either four or five, I think. And, um, you know, he, German Shepherds are pain in the butt when they're puppies. <laughs> they want to they be all up in everybody's business, including dogs' business. And he would mess with her and, and you know, pick at her, want her to play with him. And she, when she had enough of his stuff, she would put him in his place. And I was worried that he might accidentally bite her or something, but he he respected her. And yeah. um, when I got Nora, when we lost Ichi, and we came home, and Ichi wasn't because we were in California when we lost um, uh, Ichi, and when we got home, we discovered a whole lot of reasons why we lost Ichi, because at that time it was somebody else taking care of our health and. Uh, it was oh, no. a problem that happened, and um, Oda was acting really weird. And I told Nikolai, I said, "I think he misses her." And and Nikolai says, "I think you're right because he 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 wasn't himself. This dog would be all over you and bothering you constantly, and he wasn't doing any of that." And when I got home, because I got home before Nikolai did, because he had gone back to work from California, um, domestic violence happened in our house while we were gone. Oh, no. And the only reason I knew that it happened is because I found a note on the bathroom door apologizing for the damage to the door and that they would pay for the damage. And I'm like, that's why Ichi passed away. Because Ichi couldn't handle... Um, that kind of thing because she was born in the middle of a forest fire and so she was very sensitive to loud noises and fireworks and thunder and people slammed if you slammed a door she would just 
be this big mess of nerves and you know um she just couldn't handle all that and i have a feeling they were so busy arguing that they didn't notice that she had stopped eating and drinking and by the time they did notice all of her organs had already started shutting down and that's when they bothered the, that's when they contacted me and says we think Iki's going to die and i'm like what you doing and when they told me i'm like and when I looked at her, I said, let me see her on the video. She was dehydrated. You could tell because of her, her black hair had this ash color to it. So I knew she hadn't been drinking. And I yeah. said, have you tried to give her anything to drink? Well, I tried, but she keeps having seizures. I said, when did she start having seizures? Earlier today. I said, have you noticed whether she's been drinking water or not? Well, no, not exactly. I said, not exactly. I mean, have you not been filling her water bowl? Well, her water bowl is full of water. And when she said that, I'm like, wait, she's not drinking water? Why isn't she drinking water? Because she was perfectly fine when we left. And um, come to find out, it was because she couldn't handle what was going on in the house. And I think the reason that Coda was acting weird was not only the loss of her, but what was going on in the house. Yeah. Because he... He wasn't used to it either because me and me and Nikolai, we don't fight. We don't argue. We don't scream at each other. The loudest, the loudest noise that might happen in this house is sometimes we might crank music up a little bit. But now the dogs don't mind the music. No, because your your emotions are stable. Yeah, yeah. So they weren't used to this kind of crap going on in the house. So that's probably what caused all of it, the whole thing. Oh, I don't know if you can see this because to me it seems like it's not very dark. That white kind of bleeded it out, bled it out. Oh, that looks cute. So the E is now done. Yay! The hardest part of this. That now is awesome. Move, yeah, now I'm going to move on to the O. And that one's going to get done in turquoise. And Happy New Year to everybody on Eastern Standard Time. Yep. Yep. They've been in the New Year all of five minutes. Yep. All right. Let's see. We're going to need a... I really should eat, but I kind of don't want to eat for some reason. Because a certain person, four-legged person, wants to eat my food. <laughs> As soon as she hear me, hears me mess with the fork, she's right there like, come on, Mom, give me some. It's me too. You're not getting any. Give them a um, dental stick, babe. That might get her off of me, maybe. I'm not holding my breath. She smells meat. That, and you're on a live, so therefore she's going to act out. <laughs> of course she is. <laughs> oh. I was tossing treats to my boy underneath my t table so the table that I'm using for cutting is actually my sit down long arm table and mm -hmm. I ended up he has a dog bed in the living room and in our bedroom and he did not have a dog bed in my studio because we didn't I had one for him and then he shredded that one because he didn't like it apparently and I finally found him one that I thought he would like. Put it under my table. He loves it. It's, so funny, it, dogs. it's funny with dogs and dog beds and stuff. Sometimes you have to figure out what it is that they like. I, I built a box for him and bought a dog bed and attached ties to it. And I drilled holes in the box so I could tie the bed in place because it was more like a pillow bed. And he loved to take, pick those up and toss them around and play with them. Like they were dog toys. Mm -hmm. So I tied that one down and that has mostly curbed him trying to shred his dog beds. Well, that's not all, good. Not all of them, <laughs> but that, that worked for most of them. Thought about buying um, them a um, sheepskin to lay on, but I think Nora would turn it into a boy, and 
shred it because it smells too much like animal for her. Well, I can't buy Paladin any stuffed toys because stuffed toys are automatically shredded. Mm -hmm. That's the problem I have with this dots and she tears everything up. Except for this ball that I got her. <laughs> Speaking of the ball, I should have asked her where her ball was. She eat her treat already? Yep. Nora, go get your ball. Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Hey, go get your ball. Go get your ball. Go get it. It's in there. Go get it. It's in the foyer. No, it's not under my desk. Don't you remember? Go get your ball. Go get it. Babe, you might have to show her. I don't know. Go get your ball. Go get your ball. Your ball. Where's the ball? I've got this uh, ball at um, the pet shop in Nuke. And you can put um, treats in it. And it, you know, make, it makes your dog mentally busy for a while. Mm -hmm. I discovered she could be mentally busy without any treats in it, come to find out. <laughs> but she'll play with it even if it doesn't have dog treats in it. Where's your ball? Where's your ball? You didn't find it? I find it all right, but I'm going to. Go get your ball. Nora, get your ball. Hmm. She's too busy looking at something else, I guess. Me. The daddy has food. Mm -hmm. And I would rather book him for what he's eating. Because I'm going to miss something. Silly dog. I'm over here trimming, you guys. I'm not ignoring yet. Although I think that chat down there has gotten behind. Let me see. Okay. Now let's get this other turquoise one. So right now I'm doing the O, which is the turquoise. So let's get this other piece on here for number three. Teresa Louise said, Katie, I now have you on the big screen. Big smiley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of scary, Teresa. <laughs> Joy T said, had to go outside and bang some pots. Lots of fireworks and crackers going off. Woohoo. So long, 2023. Hello, 2024. Happy New Year, my quilting pals. God bless you and your loved ones. You know what I wish would happen with 2024? I wish it would go in slow mode. I swear 2023 went by really fast. Well, when it's a rough year, that's what you want. <laughs> no, I know, but what is wrong with it? Something. Oh, uh, I see what the problem is. My straight pin is in the wrong position to be. Nope. That the ball of it, the head, was making it not lay right. When you're here in the states, Katie, pick up some of those flower head pins, the ones that lay flat, and that will no, help with your paper piecing. I know, but if you can't, if uh, the little straight pins I'm using, uh -huh. I don't know if they, the flower head ones make these itty bitty, they're tiny. Oh, gotcha. Because I prefer them over the big one. Yeah, I, I'm not particularly fond of the flower, the length of the flower head ones. It's, but... the, it's the diameter too. I want as thin of a diameter as possible. Yeah, so the makes, yeah, yeah the, it, pen, the pens I normally use are, are the extra fine pens with the glass yeah. head. So I understand. So, and I don't think they make them on the flower ones. I don't know. All right, let I me that, take my uh, thing out. You know the ones that has these tips on them? Hang on a second, I'm going to show you. Can you see yes. that? Yeah, I haven't bought any of those yet. I like those. Well, too. I have these in the long ones too, and the long ones... They bend, I mean, fast they bend. Oh, I wouldn't like I mean, that. So I'm like, I'll just use the short ones and bypass that and long ones. 
too much of an annoyance. All right. I still, ha I still have long pins, and I do use them. Like I use them on my um design board when when a quilt gets to a, a certain size. Uh huh. Um, I will. Uh, oh, I missed something over here. Right. I will um put a, a row of pins in the top right at the top of the design board through the quilt top so that when they're hanging up there, all that weight is not being pulled on the, you know, from the design board and the pins are holding the whole quilt because I have the pins evenly distributed out. Yeah. Of it. But, and they come in handy for that because they're strong enough for that. As the versus these short little thin pins, they, yeah, it's not a good idea for those. Well, I've got my next one done, so I'm pinning it up or pinning I up what to, I can. I need to look at that picture real quick when I saw the O to make sure I don't put that or the O on the wrong side. Because it does matter. Are you okay. trying to see if it's you're about to sew on the front or the back? Yeah, I'm sewing on the back, but I want to make sure I'm not putting the saw the the turquoise on the wrong one. Oh, because versus your background. The side. Yeah, gotcha. I'm, here I'll show you. Um so on this O, do you see how one side has the background and the other <gasps> side? Yeah. So if you go and put that solid on the wrong side, you're gonna goof it up because when you join these together it matters. Yeah, it does. I can see that. That's awesome. You have to be that, that's a good catch. Yeah. So you got to make sure you're not sticking it on the wrong side. And this is where being a visual learner comes in because you can look at the picture and it shows B4 needs to be that solid. So now I know which side it's supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. That way I don't make a big goof up. I thought nothing else about it. That's another song. Hey, I, just, I love that song by Metallica. Which song? That's a good song. Nothing else matters. I may have to go play it. I don't learn my song names when I'm listening a, to the it's radio. A good song. You know, I I learn songs by going to look them up and then listening to them. Then I was having this discussion with Diane. And she. She messaged me later and because she saw the discussion that we had about music in the live last yesterday. Because uh -huh. I can't believe that you didn't like um, Led Zeppelin. Hmm. And I was I was young. See, there there was four years difference between me and my first husband. First of all, mm -hmm. so um, you know, he had a lot of Led Zeppelin albums. Secondly, I was having to sneak music into my parents' house when I was younger because rock and roll is Satan. So we would buy, I would, my very first rock, which they called it, some people don't call it rock, but it's more like pop. It was my first 45 record was Elton John's Crocodile Rock. <laughs> that was my first one. And when I heard that song, and then he, uh, I'm trying to think what the next song came after that, but it was one hit behind another hit, and I was in love with his music, and I still am. My my Out of all the Elton John songs that I love the most is Crocodile Rock and Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. Those are my two most favorite songs. And then I started hearing... Um, Music by Sticks and by Foreigner, and I was sneaking them in the door, you know. So I had quite a forty-five record thing going on because what I was doing is I was buying singles that were in the top forty hits that was being played on the radio because I could listen to. He couldn't control what I listened to in my car. Yeah, you know, because he wasn't sitting in there, and so I would. I had uh, when my Q, my uh, radio station on ninety-four Q or one of the other. Uh, soft rock pop music places and then it was foreigner and then it was i mean it 
it went on and on. And but my music taste kind of blossomed out. I told her it morphed. But I couldn't deal with Led Zeppelin because I had a roommate. And this is before my first husband, before I got married to my first husband. And um I rented a I was one of his roommates. And every night when he would come home from work, I would be just about asleep. And he would crank up some Led Zeppelin music. And it wasn't the Led Zeppelin music you could sing to. And I tend to like music I can sing to because I love to sing. And it really burned me out listening to all of that because I just, I didn't like it at the time. I was young. And yeah. it's, it's a heavy rock yet. I mean, I had to, I think that the older I've gotten, the more I, I have started to lean toward heavier rock or, you know, like Metallica, because I couldn't stand Metallica when they first came out. I tell you who else I couldn't stand. I couldn't stand Guns N' Roses. And now, my God, I want to listen to them all the time. You know, I don't, I was, I, I was young and I just wanted to sing with happy music. Well, Katie, I'm going to go step and get some food for dinner, but I'm still only my camera on. I have gotten that next section done and pinned up on the wall. See you when you come back. Okay. Robin was asking what I'm working on. I'm doing a lot of cutting for this. I was wondering, you're so quiet, you're not talking. I know. And you know, Led Zeppelin and stuff was a little before my time. What was? Led Zeppelin. I don't think I know, like, I mean, I'm sure I've heard you guys, songs, Have you but... ever heard the song Stairway to Heaven? I thought that was like ACDC or somebody. <laughs> no, that, that's actually Led Zeppelin. See, yeah. I'm not the only one that didn't care for Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I, well, I, I, mean, like, I was a teen in the 90s, so. Yeah, but I like uh, Stairway to Heaven. And there's some other, some other music by Led Zeppelin I like, but I don't love all of it. Yeah. I had two and, teenage sisters. My sisters are quite a bit older than me, and I remember stuff they listened to, but that was like Michael Jackson and Madonna and stuff because they oh, were teens. Well, see, I'm a Madonna friend, and yeah. I'm pretty sure that's sacrilege coming from me because <laughs> I love Madonna. And I have uh, the Thriller album, and on the inside of it, I wrote all of the words he won that night from that album. Oh, really? Yep. And now people don't want anything to do with him for what obviously yeah it's sad when you do things you shouldn't do when you're a superstar oh my gosh this is right on that scene that is not good do I want to leave it alone mm, it might be okay nobody's going to be stretching it but I'm not giving it, this one away Okay, which one is the more narrow? This is the narrow, that's the wide. Okay, let's get this pinned on. So anyway, it made me realize just how much, you know, my music taste has changed now as an older adult. Because now I'm listening to things I didn't used to listen to when I was younger. And I'm actually appreciating some of the music. I will never warm up to hip hop or um rap. Rap. I Your just favorite? no thank you. Why you didn't need to get angry? Huh? My cat keeps jumping up here. <laughs> and I'm definitely into the scorpions thing a lot these days. can't believe they can still sing as well as they do. They are amazing. Scorpion, sings, Scorpion and Queen wrote a lot of music that were ballads, and I think that's the reason I like them so much. And Elton John also writes ballads. And it tells a story, and, it's, and I think that's why I like them so much, because they're telling a story while they're singing. First time I watched a Madonna um, concert on, on um, I don't know, it must have been on MTV or something. It was that uh, Like a Virgin one, I think. 
I, I was kind of shocked what she was doing. But <laughs> she, she opened the avenue for a lot of women by doing what she was doing. I like Aerosmith, too. I still like, oh, Poison's a good rock band. Susan says she likes Led Zeppelin Stairway to Heaven. I think a lot of people do these days. It keeps reappearing in other things. I'm not much of a Led Zeppelin fan either. They were overplayed. They overplayed Stairway to Heaven, and I do like Kaz Kashmir though. And yeah, I love Fleetwood Mac. Oh my God, my first forty-five of Fleetwood Mac. Y'all are gonna laugh. The first two. The first one was uh, Musk, and the second one was Sarah. <laughs> there was something about that cave music that had me, oh, I kind of like this. Foreigner. Oh, I mentioned Foreigner already. Didn't know what corner was until I came over here, did you? I don't know. Some of them don't know who they are. Didn't know who they were. Oh, that's interesting. I find it interesting that Journey and Corner wasn't over here. They make them from time to time, but not that often. Now I I know some of the taxi drivers when they're listening to whatever radio station they're listening to, yep. or maybe it's a uh, uh, internet music station. I'm hearing them playing Journey. Okay, we're about to get this last color on here. For this, oh, y'all are going to love this one, I think. It's pretty. I don't know who Eddie Winter is. Do you know who that is? Nope. When someone said she likes ACDC. You know, I didn't used to like ACDC when I was younger, but now I like them okay. It's so weird how your music changed. I mean, I, I love all the music I loved when I was young, but now I've added to my repertoire of things I like. I think I got your hook to Scorpions, huh? Yeah, you know, I, I, I remember hearing Scorpions when I was living in Florida. And I, I know that I liked quite a bit of their music. I just never got around to buying any of it. And then being with you now, I just want to listen to them all the time. Especially when you listen to their lyrics. Journey is touring again with their new singer, but I am totally biased towards Steve Perry. Yeah, nobody sings like Steve Perry, even their knockoff. And he does a good job of it, I grant you. Um, but it would, I wish they would do one concert with him and them all together, like a you know, they don't have to tour with these tour with each other, just do one concert together, just one. I want to see Bon Jovi in concert. You guys, you might find this shocking. I have never been to a live concert in my whole life. I've never been to one. You missed out. <laughs> Too expensive now. Huh? I said you missed out. They seem to be very expensive now to go. I know. I think I, I had a chance to go see Dick, the Mr. Roboto show, but I it was while I was down in Kissimmee and where the concert was at was down in the middle of Orlando and I couldn't find anyone to go with me because I didn't want to go by myself. It wasn't about going to the concert itself. It was about going into the middle of Orlando by myself. And, um, yeah, years later, I'm like, I should have went anyway. I should have been brave because I would have enjoyed the heck out of it. But the, my most favorite of their album is the one that has Come Sail Away on it and um, Sweet Madam Blue. I love those two songs so much. 
Look, you guys. Which way is this supposed to be looking? Hang on a minute. I need to see how it's supposed to be posed. Okay. Here is my O, you guys. Nice. Terry says she's not going to make it until midnight. I'm going to bed. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, Terry. I'm Hi, glad Terry. you came to hang out with us. So these O's are supposed to be butted up to each other. Okay. Try your best, Terry. You tried. Yep, you were here, and that's good enough for us. You came and you stayed for a while. Tender lips of an angel. Hmm. Yeah, I've never been. Diane says that is just. Oh, she's in the channel. So Diane says never a concert. That is sad. It is sad, Diane. Probably don't get many in Greenland, do you? <laughs> no. And I keep hoping I'll see something while I'm in the United States that I'd want to see. Well, I've been to the Greenland concert. That was before I met. No, he, yeah, she was asking if there had been a concert. Well, there, yeah, but there is some, but there is rarely here. But what band was it you said came to sing here? In, in New, what was that one? Or was it here? Who was it that came to sing here from the United States? Uh, Bonnie Tyler. Yeah, that. Bonnie Tyler. She sang here, you guys. Can you believe that? She country Bonnie or something? Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. You would have not thought, I would not have thought that she would have gotten on an airplane to come sing in Greenland. But people amaze me sometimes. And this is probably going to tease me, I think. I think I've got the blade on here wrong. Ooh, let's not. You need to be on here first. Yep, you need to be on top. And then the purple needs to go on top. Did she do all her business earlier? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Yeah, we haven't really messed with them today, have we? We've been at it for a long time. Bruce Springsteen shouted out for us Jersey girl. Yeah, I'm not a Bruce Springsteen fan. I have some of his music. Yeah, I think you do, don't you? I have I have never bought any of his music. And I have it for I, I think it's just a reason why I haven't. Have three albums with his uh, E Street band. I think we just sing this thing down because it keeps moving. My first concert was Elvis Presley in Hollywood Stadium. Wow. My parents loved Elvis Presley. I didn't. I didn't understand the fascination.
Oh, Hollywood, Florida. Okay. <clears throat> Math Geek says she's been to four Springsteen concerts. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, I'm jealous of all your people been to concerts than I have. Oh, 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 woman. That was nice. Oh, just be surprised. Make sure I didn't do this wrong. Oh, stop. You're not missing anything, my love. Have I missed anything? I'm back. No, we're just talking about music. Ah. And Teresa's saying Elvis was dreamy. She says, are you blind? Nope. <laughs> he just didn't. He, yeah. No, thanks. Yep, I'm rolling along. I'm getting somewhere. It's because I made the comment that I did. I wasn't a Elvis Presley person either. I'm not a huge fan of Elvis. My uh, youngest mother absolutely loves Elvis though yeah my parents, did, my parents did too and I don't get what the deal is I like some of his music some of his music's nice but I just can't yeah it's it's not his music necessarily it's just the whole fan clubbing over him I think is my, <laughs> where I draw my line <laughs> yeah I think uh, I think sometimes we get colored by that or we get colored by a band's politics that they might be. Katie, hey, do y'all do a traditional um, New Year's Day meal? Yeah, we ate ribeye today. That's your traditional New Year's Day? Yes. Normally, I would have made a roast, a big um, ribeye roast and done the whole work. But I went and talked myself into a... 12 hour New Year's party thing they said. He said he was okay with it, so that's what we did. Um, I'm doing the black eyed peas and cornbread for tomorrow. And my husband had to go out and buy cabbage because we'd forgotten the cabbage to go with it. And uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I've already made, I also made for, for Christmas, I made a, I always make the desserts. For Thanksgiving, I made a think uh, pumpkin pie and pecan pie topped brownies. And then Christmas, it was going to be a little bit smaller a party, so I made a Jello mold with raspberry Jello and raspberries and cream cheese and and all of that. And my husband loved that so much, he wanted me to make it again, but with strawberries for New Year's. So I made that. And so while I'm out there eating dinner, he's like, well, you know, when are you going to fix the cabbage? I said, I'm already doing the black eyed peas and cornbread. You can do the cabbage. <laughs> yeah, husband, you know, um, before, before I moved over here and before the kids all got out on their own, I, I for New Year's, I usually made ribeye roast for all of us. I would make a, or you get like prime rib. It's the same thing regardless, but um, that's what I did, and I, I would make a really nice meal. Christmas would be ham, but mm -hmm. it was Thanksgiving that I always went all out for because I really love Thanksgiving. Oh, that's what I did for my cooking. My husband is the decorator, and he is also the party person as far as celebrating holidays and such. So, I mean, if it were just up to me, it would be turkey sandwiches, but <laughs> it's, it's not just up to me. Um, so he, I do 
certain dishes, but he does the others. And our everyday life, he does all the cooking. So it, I don't have was, to cook. It was, it was difficult for me because um, it wasn't about the kids or anything. It was about the lack of tradition when I was growing up. Because, well, especially in my teenage years, because my parents got involved in a church, which forced of all, all of their kids in with it. And there was a lot of things that the church didn't do, and one of them was Christmas. Oh, so, when I, so when I left the church, I didn't, and had my first child, I really didn't know whether I wanted to do Christmas at the time. And um, and there was things that I wanted to do different that related to Christmas, too. And... Um, so I made my own way of doing Christmas with the kids and they never lacked for anything when I did it. But um, New Year's, I don't think there was one time in my 21 year marriage that we did anything on New Year's Eve. My, first time, my first time doing something special on New Year's was my first husband and I were still married. Uh, but our marriage had basically dissolved. Uh, I'd already asked for the divorce and he'd been abusive. So, you know, I'd already moved out. I, I don't even think I'd moved out yet, but I actually went to my first New Year's Eve party at a bar uh, that year. And I think that's the first time I ever did anything special for New Year's ever in my life. Wow. Somebody says they hate black eyed peas. Oh, Teresa does. I hate black eyed peas. I like fresh black eyed peas, but not dried ones that you have to soak. Um, whoever asked about sound sound garden, yes, I like sound garden. Math geek, yes. The Eagles, yes. Black eyed peas is good though. I like fresh black eyed peas, but not dried ones. I'm talking about the musician's black eyed peas. Oh, pea. the musician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot about them. They make good music too. <laughs> they are on the borderline of rest. Well, my husband's not a huge black eyed peas, the food person either, but I have convinced him of a way to eat them that he is finally happy with. And as long as I'm the one making them, he'll eat them. My mom used to take black eyed, fresh black eyed, fresh shelled fat black eyed peas out of the garden and fresh cut okra from the garden and a ham hock, hock out of the freezer. And she would um, bring that ham hock to boil and put those fresh peas in there. And as soon as they came to a boil, she would will gently lay all the okra across the top and, and season it. And she would let it simmer on top of the black eyed peas as they were boiling. And let me tell you what, that was some good old eating. People says, oh, it's so slimy. No, it wasn't. Because the okra was, the skin of the okra was never broken by doing that. I... My mom will not eat uh, boiled uh, okra. I don't know how she ever had boiled okra, but she won't eat boiled okra. But I am not a huge greens fan. So like turnip greens and collards and yep, all of that. I'm, I've never been a fan of those. Um, I have started eating fried, uh, like breaded fried okra recently, but it's still not one of my favorites. I take fried okra or okra to fry, and what I do is what my mother did. She would take a, a half flour and half cornmeal and mix them together. Mm -hmm. Then she would mm -hmm. um, go ahead and cut the okra into slices, seasoning it with salt and pepper, and then she would um, bread them with that uh, cornmeal flour mix, and then fry them in a thin, thin in a cast, a big cast iron skillet. At, with a bit of oil in the bottom of it, and and she would cook it till the um, okra. Ooh, ooh, I hope I didn't do what I just think I did. Oh no, I'm okay. Woo, that was close. 
Um, then she would um, let it turn brown on the bottom before she would turn it over. Uh -huh. So they would be crispy. On, it, it basically was okra, mostly soft. Oh, look what Becca just did. Thank you, Becca. I can't really. Yeah, thank you. You're so sweet. She's paying me back for all the times I've done that. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. That's so sweet. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you. Anyway, um, it would be crunchy, but it would never be slimy or nothing. So if you eat slimy fried okra, it wasn't done right. Robin's asking, how do we go from music to food? Did I miss something? <laughs> I think we're just jumping topics, Robin. We're just talking about all of it, I guess. Well, because somebody mentioned black eyed peas. I, I think I did. I think I'm the one who mentioned black eyed peas. I know, peas. but there's, it's also mentioned up in the channel. Someone said I had black eyed pea cakes one time. Yum. Ooh. <laughs> I'm the one that I Thank you for being here, Becca. Go ahead, honey. I'm the one that I'm the one that uh, added the machine black eyed peas. Yeah, the that's right. That's how. <laughs> Joy's yeah. asking how I cook my cabbage. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, go ahead, sweetie. Um, she's asking how I cook my cabbage. I boil it, and I am definitely Southern. I add a lot of butter, uh, a lot of butter, salt and pepper and butter. I don't add a whole lot to it. I don't know how my husband cooks it. You might have to ask me after tomorrow. Well, yeah, oh, so after tomorrow. <laughs> He's he's get he's got the cabbage this year. I you have know, everything like else. To, he has the cabbage. You know what I like to do with cabbage? Mm. I like to cut it in thin ribbons, and then I take a carrot and cut a, cut them like julienne style. Yeah, and um, then I take uh, butter and salt and pepper, and uh, I melt the butter in a, a big fry pan, and then. I uh, melt the yeah, get the butter nice and ready to go, and then I drop the um, mixture of cabbage and um, carrots in it, and season it with salt and pepper, and I cook it till it's just it's still um, crunching, but it's cooked at the same time. It's not soft yet. It's got that crunch when you eat it. It is so good when you cook it like that. Kind of like stir frying it. Joy said it's Tammy's fault this time. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. Okay. I don't mind. I'm about to get this V done, you guys. If y'all heard a horn honk, that was outside my apartment, so I apologize. I've got my window open again. The temperature started climbing. I didn't oh, hear goodness. it. Was it a car horn or something? Yeah, yeah there's a car horn. I it's right it. next. Did it's right next to it? my camera, but my my audio is through here. Yeah, we didn't hear it. I don't think anyone. Well, they might have. I didn't hear it. Did you hear it? Huh? Yeah, so that Zoom is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're right about the kind of thing you said. I took the photo. What did she say about it? The kind of we give them to, to them. Yeah. I'm the one that took the photo. Oh, I didn't know they were talking about it. No. You mentioned that uh, things that I'm taking the picture. Now just confirming it to her now that she's here. Yeah, Nikolai did take the picture while he was at sea. Hey, Becca, have you found a spot for it yet? Just curious. <laughs> I agree, we Teresa. See. If they are cooked right, they are good. Zoom is reducing your background noise. You all good, Tammy. See? Thank you, Becca. So I did the settings right. Now if I could just learn how to operate this stupid bot. <laughs> oh, it's giving me grief.
this looks so weird like this when it's not been trimmed all the way. <laughs> it looks like a mess. But I'm about to trim it. And then it's going to look beautiful. -E Becca said that they had to put some wire on the back of the canvas to hang it properly. Going to do it sometime this week. Hey, I'm excited to find out where you end up putting it. I did see that photo. That was gorgeous. Yeah, now that I figure out what y'all are talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's a full of um, we had sent We sent out two of them. One to Florida and one to Becca. And I'm, I'm, and I'm sure that Becca was totally big surprised to see this big box, huge box, knowing that you like to receive small boxes, small gifts. Look, you guys, I got the V done. Yay! My favorite color. I'm loving it. Okay, so now the next thing I got to do is line them up for sewing together. Oh, you got the O done while I was gone, I think. Yeah, the O is this. I didn't know if you saw it or not. No, I hadn't seen that. That's gorgeous. I love it. You did so good. Thank you. I just got to make sure I put them together in the right manner. All right, let me look at the picture. Make Becca, sure they're... Becca make said sure... it's going in our front room above our couch, I think. Otherwise, we're hanging it in our hallway on the bedroom level. I'll send a pic when it's hung. Thank you, sweetie. I was th I'm so excited that you that you like it. Thank you so much for that. All right, you guys, I'm about to sew this whole thing together, and I'm debating on if I want to tear all the paper off or just some of it. I wouldn't tear any of it off until it's all sewn together. Yeah, but I don't know if I want it. I don't know how hard it's going to be to take this off. If you've used a one and a half stitch length, you should be fine. Okay. It's going to be so pretty. I never take my papers out before I sew my full pieces together so you, because you so don't you know leave if it's going to So you leave the paper on the outside of the seam? Yeah, I leave it everywhere until everything is sewn together. And then I just sit there with a pair of tweezers or hemostats to help my hands. And I just pick okay. at the paper. And some paper is easier than others. Yeah, this is printer paper, unfortunately, because I didn't think to go find some. I do have some paper piecing paper, and I didn't think to go look for it. And I don't want to waste printer paper, so, you know. Because yeah, no, we have, I would, we I would had a problem printer getting paper. printer paper, haven't we, babe? Yep. We used to yeah. get printer paper any. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask you about that, Becca, um, because um, we were, yeah, let's have a discussion. So that I can take care of something. So the polar bear is going to be ordered. Wow. You guys. The legit kit. Polar bear. Mama bear. And baby. Yeah Becca. Those hemostats save my life. Especially when you're hand piecing. Or hand quilting. Or hand attaching your binding. And I do not have good control of my fingers. Like I used to. And those hemostats, they have saved my rear plenty of times. Where did you get, so do, do they sew hemostats in a quilt shop or did you just mm -mm. buy them from a local store? You, you can drop, buy them usually at a, you might check a drugstore and see if they have them. Um, paramedics use hemostats. Uh, so the three sets of hemostats. Yeah, the doctor's oh. office might be able to tell you where you might see them too, um, at least in your local area. I don't know where I got mine. I want to say I stole them from my husband at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've I've had my pair for I don't know how long, and I could not live without them. I don't think I have any hemostats here. I think they're probably in my storage unit in something. You can order them from Amazon. Um, I don't know if they'll ship to 
ship to you, but no, probably not that. But, I mean, they ship books and videos, but they don't ship anything else, which is so weird. Well, you might be able to have it since you're going to be coming to the states. You might have it shipped to someone that you're going to be staying with. If it's yeah, going I'm going to go to the U.S. So I probably can go up to a, a medical store place and buy some. Oh, look what Joyce said about the cabbage. She says that I mix with mix it with noodles. It's a Ukrainian Polish dish. I will have to try that. That is definitely different. Math Geek said I think that quarter shop has them for this hemostats. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought they got some in a um in a the felt the back quarter shop. Uh, ooh, you guys look. Here is the bottom half. Yay! Those look amazing. Becca said, I uh, buy them from a medical supply store, but they'd be cheaper than from your local quilt shop. No joke. Yep. I think there's a lot of things that we could save money by buying them from the actual place they originated from. It's like those um those little, what are they called? That, um, shoot, the, uh, what are they called? Dang it. Their little store thing, your storage thing, where you can put your seam rippers in it. And it stands. It's, it's got this little um, plastic thing that holds them up, and you can stick pins in it. Pins like writing pins or anything like you know that has a point you can stick down in it. Those little patty things. Those actually originated from a health and beauty a health and beauty shop thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a lot of things that once they figure out that it could be marketed to quilters, they market it specifically to us, and then they raise the price. Yep. To pay for their marketing, I guess. That's the thing I don't like about uh, um, specialty, you know, crafts and stuff. They take advantage of the consumer by doing that kind of thing. Here's the top. Nice. Okay, now I I do think I should take this side one off in between so that I can press this seam open. Maybe, maybe not. It might not let me. Because I'm getting ready to sew the top to the bottom. Robin said the fireworks have finally stopped and she's sleeping. Now I can relax. Math Geek said looking good, Katie. And Robin Marie said stationary. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to press these seams open in the middle so that I can get it to lay down flatter. That's usually what I do all the time anyway because uh, these there's a lot of seams coming together right here and I want to make sure that it lays down properly. So I'm about to press them and then I will sew the next, the last seam together. And we are going to have a love block for you guys to look at. All right, Joy, I've got to know more details. She said, hemostats, one new quilting tool I have plenty of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me give this press. Honey, let me know when it's, our next one's at 4.30, right? And that'll be the last one, right? Okay. Oh, we're already at that point? Oh, gosh. We did four already, right? Yes. Okay. I have them written down, but I'm looking at the paper right now, baby. So we have one more to go, and that's at 4.30. And then the live will end at 6, unless everybody has already vacated the building. Elizabeth, the boat. Who did you come up with that saying? Robin said, Nico, how are you doing? I'm good. He's surprisingly still awake. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I guarantee you, when that head hits the pillow, he will be asleep in two minutes flat, and I'll be sitting over there like, Really? 
I've never seen anybody can go to sleep in two minutes flat. It just makes me so jealous. Lucky hound. No woof woof this time? Oh, oh you didn't hear what I said. Lucky hound. <laughs> well, Math geek. Math geek said, ooh, almost midnight central time. Robin said, Math Geek, you have two more hours. <laughs> but they're not staying up as long as we are. That well, was a specific time. Theirs uh, will end quickly at yeah. midnight. Yeah. I'm in Mountain, Everybody else is mountain Standard. So yeah. I'm an hour before Pacific time. Yeah, I, my, you know how you talk, everybody talks about muscle memory? My brain mm -hmm. got so used to being five hours ahead of Pacific time, four ahead of Central Mountain time, three ahead of, now it's more. It's an hour more. <laughs> and it, it really screws with my head. Because we Wait. didn't fall behind everybody. Joy said, Katie, cook your way, but mix with wide noodles or extra wide noodles, I believe. The heart's in the way. Oh, yeah, not extra wide, she says. Oh, not extra wide. Okay. Yeah. You found a way to move that heart, didn't you? No, but somebody somebody told me to ask somebody and they could tell me. And I, now I done forgot who it was I was supposed to ask that question to. Uh. Uh, someone in an email told me to ask somebody if I see him in one of my chats or go over to Kathy's what's the name of her channel? Kathy's Quilt and something? I don't know. I'm not familiar with that channel yet. Somebody in here knows who Kathy is because I see her in all the channels including Mom and Pop. Apparently somebody that visits Kathy's channel a lot that knows how to get rid of that part. <laughs> that is right in the way. I don't know why they parked it right there. It's YouTube. Is there a reason for anything? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> you know what? Something is wrong with this picture. No, well, maybe not. Maybe I'm overthinking it because of where I started this at. Well, I think I'm to the point where I'm honestly not thinking I'm going to finish this completely. In this well, I'm gonna have the lob block finish. <laughs> well, this well, this will this is round four. I think I'll have I think I'll have round four finished, no problem. But I don't know how much of round five I'll get done. Yep, I understand. And round five is that outer round. And then tomorrow when I get up, I am joining that stitch in heaven live that they've got going. And it's going to be here on YouTube. And I am making the New Year's Day mystery quilts. Sounds like fun. They did a... You're going to get finished with it on New Year's Eve? Oh, no. I mean mm -mm. You just get enough... You get... They, they make sure that you know how many blocks you need to do to make the basics of it as you're going. Mm -hmm. So it's really paced well so that you can get just a minimum blocks done so you know how to complete the rest of it but no it, nobody finishes it during the live the live is only about five hours long it's from uh 10 to 3 central time if i'm not mistaken on the times yep happy new year central standard time happy new year i got one more hour to go all right, let me go over here and press this. Well, I need to get this paper off here first, on the center at least. That's why she's prancing around bugging me. She's like, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy. There's no fireworks anymore. Uh, so and Becca said. So Becca said it's Kathy's quilts and crafts. Yep, that's it. Someone in her chat that goes to her channel knows how to um, turn that part off for lives. 
Joy, do you know if you can get them in store or do you have to order them? She said Walmart hemostats is low as five ninety nine. Oh, that's cheap. Yeah, it's not not expensive at all. I know the Walmart site sometimes shows you things that are online only. Well, aren't they supposed to honor it even in the store? Uh, well, it's whether or not you can actually pick them up in store. So they op they offer you products that aren't available in the store. Oh, oh I see. So you can get like a, I got an electric scooter that I ordered through Walmart for being able to walk the dog. Because there's just no way I can walk as long as he can. And I definitely can't run. And so I got an electric scooter and I ordered it through walmart.com, but there's no way they would have them in store. So I couldn't just go pick it up. How much did you have to pay for shipping for that kind of thing? Uh, I think shipping was free because it was over a certain amount. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. And it was actually cheaper than what I could get on Amazon at the time. The only thing I don't like about it is the user manual was awful. And so I don't know if there's a way to turn off the backup beeping on my scooter. And it is so annoying. I cannot handle the beeping. I guess they want to make sure you don't run over somebody. The reason they put it on. Maybe they've had accidents in their scooter. The reason that's on there now. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it a, it's a safety feature. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's definitely a safety feature to have the beeping, but it's just so loud. And then if I have to back up into the elevator here, which I can't do a full circle, so I can't turn around in the elevator in my building. If I have to back up in the elevator, it's so loud. I feel so bad for all my neighbors. I'm not sure that Becca knows how to get rid of that part. Because I think her still has the heart on it. We are re reading the comments, Robin. I apologize. We might be a little bit behind every so often. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a little distracted because I'm trying to tear this paper off. And I keep finding, yeah. Mm, that's because, yeah, I know why that's there. And, and wow. uh, Becca was sending us to uh, Kathy Quilts and Crafts, I believe, for that heart issue. So, yeah. Somebody over there knows about it. Somebody somewhere knows something. <laughs> yeah, because it, they said go to her channel and ask about it. She would direct yeah. me to the right person. And Katie, once you figure it out, you need to teach me. <laughs> yep. It's definitely annoying. I don't know why they had to park it right there. Maybe they didn't realize it was in the way... If you're on your phone, what does that heart look like? Oh, it's in the way. <laughs> I was wondering if it was in the way on a phone. Yeah, it's in the way of that very first comment or the the newest comment. Because I don't watch lives with my phone. I've got, well, I've got a live going. I've got the live going on my TV, but I've got it connected to my phone so that I can actually comment because I cannot comment on my TV directly. Yeah. So I, I, a lot of times I'll have my laptop and the TV going. All right. Are y'all ready? Nah. Because now I have, ooh, ouch. That hurt getting up. I've been sitting too long again. Check it out, you guys. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. I didn't realize the V was so far out on the original. Yeah, it is. There's a, uh, a, a spacing. I like how it kind of looks awkward, but it isn't awkward at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I think it's supposed to look like that, actually. Looks nice, Katie. Thank you. Becca says, okay, to remove the emojis on the live chat, you just have to turn off live reactions on the actual video in YouTube studio. Okay. I need to, like, copy and paste that so I can look at it tomorrow. 
because I will forget what she said. I think I was home when Vicka wants, wants to buy you that uh, pull up your kid, right? No, you weren't. You were at sea when I had told you about it, remember? Because uh, the this comment about the polar bear happened during a uh, virtual retreat. Anyway. Becca, Becca said you can turn it off right now on this video, Katie. I can? She said it's just unchecking a box and clicking save. What box? The YouTube has to go to the YouTube studio, edit the live. Oh, oh, all right. I got to be in the live stream. Okay. And just unchecking a box. Edit the live stream. And then. Dang it, I can't see what she said. Navigate to customization and uncheck live. Okay, customization. And then uncheck live chat. That's what she said. Um, oh. Uncheck live reactions. Live reaction. Ah, there it is. And then click save. Yep, I did. Yep. Oh, there, there it went. Thank Yay. you, Becky. <laughs> All right, now you guys won't have that blocking the way. Thank you so much, Becca. Joy T says, what art? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Joy. Thank you, Becca. Now that annoying heart is out of the darn way. Georgia says, yay, it's gone. Did y'all see my love rock? Because nobody said anything. Oh, I did. Did I they? love it. I don't know if they saw it, but I, I did see I it. Think they saw it. All right, I'm going to reshow the love block again, you guys. Why do I see daylight in there? So, what does that finish out at? Huh? I don't what know. Size I have to measure it. Out? It's supposed to be a six inch block. And then they have one that's even smaller than this. It's a four inch. That'd be super tiny. Yep, real tiny. Teresa says, yay, the heart is gone. The chat designers must not use their own system. Probably not. No, <laughs> they don't. But they wouldn't have put that thing right there for nothing. At least I would have hoped they wouldn't have. That or all they want is uh, the reactions versus actual getting chats. Yeah. Getting actual conversation. Becca says, laugh out loud. I think some YouTube employees <laughs> need a refresher <laughs> course in user <laughs> interface design. Laugh out loud. Yes, they do. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Joy said, very nice, Katie. Really, D says, really looks nice. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure everybody saw it. Because it's finished, except for the paper being ripped off of it. It's so pretty. Right. I should make three more of these and turn it into a big block. And then make a wall hanging out of it. I think I should have used a darker yellow. What do you think? Yeah, it doesn't stand out very much against that background. No, the background kind of made it bleed. I wasn't expecting that to happen. And I wouldn't have known that without doing this. You know? When you go to quilt it, you could quilt around the E with a darker color thread. Yeah, and it'll make it pop. And it'll make it pop. It'll give it some more definition. That's a good idea. That's, that's the last minute save I would use. 
Joy T says, take a pic with your phone. Okay, I'm going to post it over on, do you want, I'm going to post it in the group and then I'll also post it. For those who don't use Facebook, if you wait for a minute or two, I will post it on my community tab so you can have a better look at it. So give me a minute to get that done. Because I know there's some that don't use Facebook. Some use Instagram, which is, I use Instagram. But they will have to look for my other name. I haven't set up an Instagram. There is some, oh, that's a blue piece of thread that keeps teasing me. I thought there was a blue mark on the fabric. But it's the thread not wanting to get off. That's strange. All right, where's that other phone? There it is. I don't know why this keeps keep dimming. It's weird the way this phone does. I don't hardly use it anymore because I keep my United States phone number on it, but it likes to. Uh, lighten the screen so it's not using much energy. Maybe it's the lighting in this room because when I use the flash on the camera, you can actually see the yellow. That's interesting. Babe, I'm going to edit it and then send it to you, okay? Mm -hmm. That way I can get it off your messenger to get it onto um, it's, uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. What's this? this? Oh, there's the rotate button. I was going to say, what in the world? Joy said Becca rocks, and Georgie said absolute joy. Absolutely joy. I'm sad I didn't say the dang heart. Well, <laughs> from joy. And Becca, I agree with them. You rock. You do rock. That's why everybody comes to you asking <laughs> questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? You're a good teacher. And we love you. She has entirely too much patience. She puts up with us. I love that she has this kind of patience. That's what makes her a good teacher. Mm -hmm. You know? No disagreements here. Yeah. That's what makes her a cut above the rest. Take a surprise to my wife. All of it, kid. I decided I had to give it a try. Oh, you're so, I, uh, you know, yeah, honey, you always know how to make people's days. You just made tears come in my eyes. Oh, this is what he does. He gives without wanting anything back. He just does it because he can. Okay, I've sent it to you. Now I'm going to swipe it from off my laptop so I can put it into the Hey, some crazy woman just sent me a big picture. Oh, I wonder who the crazy woman Ooh. is. Do I know her? Uh, no. <laughs> you sure I don't know her? Yeah. I think I know her. Oh. No? I do. <laughs> some crazy person? Yeah, some crazy stalker person. <laughs> She's stalking you. Yes. Oh. I agree, I Becca. She's got to keep her. Yep. <laughs> Yikes. I'm a, I wanna I'm I'm in a dangerous territory right now. You are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> she gets stalked on Instagram on a regular basis. I'm not kidding about that either. 
he needs to start reporting them and, and walk them. All right, let me download this thing. Oh, it does look nice. Hey, you guys, I didn't trim it around the edge on purpose. So when you see that I didn't, that's because I've done that on purpose. Okay, now let's go to my community tab. I'm getting to love this community tab because I can put anything I want on it just about. It's just a matter of getting everybody to go look at it. <laughs> All right, let's say Happy New Year, everybody. This is one of the things we worked on in the live. Okay, so if, if you want to see the block it, with a picture, I have just now posted it on my community page, and then I will post it again over in my Greenland Quilter group, and I will put it over, if it's okay with Becca, I know it is, so I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to go put it on Becca's too, so everybody can see it, and on Instagram. Wait a minute, I need to see. Am I missing anything right this minute? People talking? Um, yeah, I've Becca's been... talking to Teresa. Matthew commenting in. Joy's commenting in. <laughs> yeah, because I had to move the window so I could go do this. Becca did say, well, I was going to say, why would you even ask? Just post it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put it over there. Because it's oh, so cute. Robin said, Joy, I'm good without a heart. Because <laughs> they're still talking about the heart. <laughs> oh, are they? <laughs> they are. <laughs> it was annoying as heck. It was. It was always in the way. Yeah, you're trying to read somebody's comment and that big old heart right in the darn way while you're trying to read. Yeah, you got to wait make until somebody else makes a comment or you got to make your own comment. Yep. To be able to read. Or if you want to pin a comment and the heart's in the way and you hadn't figured out how to pin it with the heart sitting there. That happened. It took me a while to figure out how to get around it. Okay. Groups. Okay. Let's get this photo posted. Uh, of course, it's going to. I forgot I had my VPN on. It's not seeing where I'm at. And then go over to Beckles. Put it over there. The picture does make the yellow look better. I'm going to have to go take a look. You can actually see the yellow and the design of the yellow. Okay, they're posted where everybody can see it, except I haven't done it on Instagram yet. I got to do it over there. I haven't done it there yet. Till the next drawing? Okay. Wow, we'll be doing the number fifth one. And then that's going to be all of the giveaway cards. I hope I find five emails in my email box in the morning when I wake up. Yeah, you're right. 
I see about that that E, Katie. You are absolutely right. It definitely shows up much better. Yeah, it must be the lighting in this room. Is it maybe look, there's too many lights bleaching it out? It's possible. Yeah, either way, it does look better that way. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I mean, yes, I should have used a darker yellow. I agree about that. And probably, I don't know, maybe I'll do different colors for the next other ones. That bee looks so strange, doesn't it? Let's see. Oh, I need to tag people. Who? Uh, well. Um, let me see. I'm wondering if Diane is still in here. Because she was the one. Hurry up. She's funny. I love her. She's turned out to be a really good friend. Krista must have went left. I didn't. Did Krista say anything when she left? I didn't hear her say anything, but she's been gone a, been gone a while. She may have fallen asleep. I may not have been here when she left. Oh. <clears throat> okay. And you could not share? Please try again. Why? I've been having trouble with my Instagram lately. It's not letting me post couldn't be shared. It's because I put tags on it and it's giving me trouble, which is kind of weird. There must be something wrong with their tag. Might have to do it with my phone. I don't like using my phone. See, it shared it when I didn't tag people with it. So that's odds. Luan said, I love that block. I will be making one soon. I'll just put another feature from the Instagram. Uh, block block what did you say, Tammy? Luan commented that I love that block. I will be making one soon. Yay, I'm glad. I really like the block because well, you can do anything with it. It really is flexible. Yeah, I made I have made several um, mug rugs, rugs where the love is on one part of it, and then there's some design on the other side of it, and and it makes cute little mug rugs too. Okay, let me see what I missed while I was posting those pictures or that picture. The fracture looks healed, so I'm not sure why it still hurts. I see the dock again. It may hurt just because it's still tender, Rita. Uh, so, Becca, my sister broke her knee when we were younger, and she complained of knee pain for what seemed like years. I hope you don't have the same issue. I hope you don't either, Teresa. Do you elevate intermittently during the day? You can put ice on it when it hurts on and off, too. Sometimes the muscles done heal at the, don't heal at the same rate, and fibromyalgia can mess with our pain signal. Yep. Even though the fracture may be healed, Teresa, it takes a while for the muscles to go back into place, and even longer for the nerve endings to heal. It's because you're using it all the time. Hey, Diane, I posted the picture so you can see it. Now, let me eat a piece of this meat. It's been sitting here for a while. I may have to go close my window in a minute. I think the gentleman downstairs. Oh. Yeah, I think he finally turned his heat off. 
and it is 26 outside and 66 finally in my room. So, yeah. They're running when it's 66 degrees? Oh, no, there it's 26 outside. Oh, that's cold so, outside. Yeah, so they are, they're running the heat for good reason, but I seriously think this gentleman has got his heat cranked up to 85 or 90 degrees. Man, that's too uh, hot. How can he even breathe? I don't know, but I want to say that my husband saw something on his door at one point that said oxygen in use. Um, oh, so he no. may have some kind of health conditions that make him more susceptible to getting cold. Um, the only good thing about that is I have put my heat on a total of three or four times this winter. That is it so far. So it's saving you money. Yeah. So even during the, even when we had snow on Thanksgiving, I didn't have to put the heat on. I mean, granted, we were cooking a turkey and using the oven, but I didn't have to put the heat on on Thanksgiving. And that was one of our coldest days. And we've had a little bit more cold since then, but I mean, nothing below zero or anything. So like this, I'm not having to put the heat on. So let me go close that window real quick. It's not unbelievably cold outside today either. Like it had been last week. Last week it was frigid. Yeah, the the temperatures here have been like hoodie weather during the day. Just petting um, a kitty looks like. Say again? Candace, they're all commenting that you're too quiet. She is very quiet. Getting close to bedtime. I'm wore out from cutting for hours. That that's the worst thing is cutting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Nicole. Okay. I need some ketchup. Nah, you don't. Ketchup for what? To eat on this cold steak. She's um, eating the last of that ribeye she cooked earlier. Yeah, I'm trying to finish this meat that I keep messing with. Maybe some A1. It's cold, so it's not as good cold. It should be. We have a new microwave, but we've got to figure out how to operate the dang thing. Here go. I am not a steak person. I I'll could eat. eat I could eat ribeye steak seven days a week and be perfectly happy. But you, you don't. You just don't, don't want to eat potatoes every day. No, I don't. Potatoes don't rank at the top of things to eat every day. <laughs> You just got to find new ways to cook them so they don't always taste like potatoes. That's true. But I also like, I could probably also eat barbecue chicken seven days a week too. So go figure. <laughs> well, you could, um, I don't know. I remember your trip on board with me across the big pond? Yeah. Oops. 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 Uops. Thursday, you were just tired of the potatoes. Oh, my God. <laughs> they weren't just tired of the potatoes every darn day. It was the amount of food they were consuming. I ended up, because they eat at 6, and then they have a snack at 9, and then they eat at 12, which is a warm, hot meal. Then they snack at 2, and then they have the cold, yeah. cold table. At six, and then a snack at nine p.m., and then a cold table at midnight, and what two a.m. again, or three a.m. Three, yeah. And so then three hour. Yeah. So by the fourth day, this chick was not eating breakfast at all. I couldn't do it, and I barely could make it through dinner. And I stopped eating the snacks altogether. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. My appetite's not like his. I had stomach surgery in 2016, and so I can't eat a whole lot at any given time. 
and I'm like you, right? There's no way every three me three hours I could eat a full meal of anything or a big meal of anything. I could eat two or three bites every three hours, but that's about it. Yeah. This is one person they go all day and not eat, which is bad, of yeah, course. Yeah, that's not, that's not the healthiest option, unless you're intending to do it. Nope. It's a habit, of, a weird habit. Not a habit. Um, I wasn't like that until I got married to my first husband. And he wanted me to be tinier than him, and that was just not possible. So every time I would put food in my mouth, he would make a comment. Yeah, you gotta... So instead of letting me eat normal, which kept me skinny, I would go all day and starve myself and then eat it, not, you know, eat that one meal. And basically the doctors told me that the reason between being on prednisone for seven months and not eating proper meals every day, that that's why I have a weight problem. Robin Marie came back. Are we back to food? <laughs> <laughs> and Teresa Lee said, I could eat pizza every day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Robin, we, we are. Yeah, Robin, we are back to food. That's what happens when you get on a live for 12 hours and you, you get punch drunk and caffeine and chocolate aren't doing it. <laughs> I behaved and not put too much sugar in my mouth tonight. Oh, I've done better. I've got, so my candy of choice is Gobstoppers. Do you remember that mm -hmm. candy? Or do you, do mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Well, after the pandemic, when things started becoming scarce, Gobstoppers is one of those candies that you can't find in most local stores. Wow, like really? You used, you used to be able to find them in Walgreens. You used to be able to find them uh, at Walmart. Um, CVS, all of those, they used to all have gobstoppers, but that's one of the candies that they don't stock anymore. Like I searched everywhere where I was living in Alabama before we moved, could not find them, got here to what Casper, Wyoming, could not find them anywhere. I literally bought the last three boxes we found when we visited Casper the October before we moved. Uh, have you so checked on Amazon too? That's where I have ordered them. And I you can order them by the case. So you get 12 boxes of gobstoppers at a time. Mm -hmm. So I actually take, I've got a reusable bag with a slider on it. And I stuff this full with three boxes of gobstoppers at a time. And once it gets empty, then I'll open my next three boxes and put them in. And yeah. So I have gobstoppers. I have 12, 16. You know what 12, I like? 15, you know those 18 Reese's, boxes left. Uh, Reese's Nut, Rage, Nut Rages bars. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, my God. But they are so hard to find. And those are high in sugar. These gobstoppers, I can chew on them while I'm sewing. Mm -hmm. And I don't eat them fast enough to raise my blood sugar. I mean, I don't have blood sugar problems, but I can tell when something is too sweet yeah. for my system, and gobstoppers just aren't. Yep. I can't eat you chocolate that You don't have to be a tonight. diabetic to want to watch your sugar, because we all eat excessively too much of it. Yeah. I need to cut back on my Dr. Peppers for that same reason. <laughs> well, at least there's no sugar in what I'm drinking, but still. Hey. Mm -hmm. You know that chocolate ice cream in the glass jar? Mm -hmm. Do we have any of those left? Yeah. Can I have one, please? Everybody keeps mentioning chocolate, so I'm going to eat some chocolate ice cream. <laughs> All right, Robin, this time it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if we had Robin any of said, I got raised yesterday over my chocolate, and I'm still eating it. <laughs> Teresa Louise said, use honey, not sugar, if you can, and only use real butter. Wow, look how much that cost to fix that. Oh, Joy. Holy she said crap. it was freezing last week. My water heater cracked, flooded my garage. Then the gas re regulator broke down in the furnace. $6,700 later, I have hot water and heat. Come on. 
Wow. is bad. That's a lot to go through. It's a lot of money. Georgie said, I feel for you, Joy. That's always concern for us in Missouri when it drops to negative five at night. Uh, Robin, uh, what the heck is a gobstopper? It sounds like something for plumbing. <laughs> it is, uh, if you've ever watched the original, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Willy Wonka uh, movie, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, or I don't remember what the original one is called from back, I want to say 80s or 90s. I can't remember exactly when that one came out. Um one of the things that the candy maker Willy Wonka put out was an everlasting gobstopper. And so these are now made by Nestle, but they're basically jawbreakers that change color and flavor as you get to the center. We always call them jawbreakers. I mean, you could get them in big ones, but also the small ones are similar to gobstoppers. They're just really hard, right? I'm not hearing you, Candace. Mm. What? You didn't hear what she said? Okay, I'm not hearing your, you either, Katie. Let me see if it's my volume. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I was going to say this. She... It's my volume. My bad. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Candace, you're going to have to repeat what you said. Are, are, they're just like jawbreakers. A lot of places, people call them jawbreakers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're very similar. A lot of the jawbreakers that I found don't have the different flavors as you go through them. Right. But the gobstoppers yeah. do. I've not found an identical anywhere. I think Joy was asking Katie how you cook your steak. Yeah, I'm answering her now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I could say this verbally too. Joy, this is sometimes I'll marinate in Kikamon teriyaki sauce, and other times I don't. It just depends on the mood I'm in. One of the things about ribeye steaks that you probably don't know is you need to leave it sitting out on your on your counter 20 minutes before you're going to cook it. You can also pre-season it, season it while it's sitting out. Because what you want to do is make sure that it's not stone cold before you go throw it on a grill. And then um, I eat, I cook our steaks to be medium rare. If it's over that, it I just don't like it overcooked. I like to taste of the meat, not the what comes when you overcook it. <laughs> and Joy, I see you said look at Cracker Barrel. They might have them. There is not actually a Cracker Barrel in the entire state of Wyoming. Um, wow. so <laughs> we don't have Cracker Barrel. We don't have Waffle House. There is not a Red Robin that I'm aware of. We have one Chick-fil-A in the state, and that's in Cheyenne. Uh, we don't have in and out We don't have... Our city doesn't have a Hardee's anymore. We used to have Hardee's. Happy New Year, Lori, and sleep so, well. Yep, Happy New Year, Lori. Hey, Lori. Happy New Year, Lori. If Joy's you want it medium... Okay. Okay, so if the... Say the steak is, uh... This thick, like my thumb... You would cook it five and a half minutes on one side and five on the other side, and then one minute on each side and take it up. And then leave it sitting on the plate for five minutes before you cut it. If it's thinner than that, if it's half that thick, you're going to do it about two and a half on one side and two and a half on the other. Yeah, you don't want your steak cold when you throw it on the grill. Because it'll make the meat tough. Even as a ribeye. Yeah, a lot of people don't know how to cook steaks right. <laughs> Some I restaurants don't know. either. <laughs> I can say that um, the steakhouse or the restaurant here. They do a good job most of the time uh, making my steaks. Most of the time. Not 100% of the time, but most of the time. Texas Roadhouse, every time I've ever had a ribeye there, it's been medium rare. Just the way I like it. 
I don't like ribeye. I get salmon when we go to um, Texas. My son likes the place. You know what I miss about American beef? Is I can't get sirloin. Oh, man. Well. Why is that? I don't know. I guess there? it's not a cut. It's not a cut that they do. Yeah. When I try to describe where on the cow it comes from, I get a blank look. <laughs> My least favorite is prime rib. I don't like all the fattiness in them. I could just eat ribeye all the time, you guys. <clears throat> Fat and all. <laughs> as long. Now, with prime rib, I don't like that fat all. It's weird. I want the fire to kiss that fat so it will render. Because fat is weird. If it's not rendered, it's not tasty. It needs to be rendered when you're cooking it. And you don't and you don't get that with prime rib because it's cooked in a very slow. So me and Nikolai tend to only leave the fat on the outside of the roast. If we're going to do prime rib style, and then um, we will sear it on the grill after we slow cook it. And then when you cut into the meat, any fat that's on the inside that is that soft stuff, we cut that out of the meat because we don't eat it like that. I don't even like it rendered. Mm. Well, that sounds weird, but it's tastier when it renders off the part that most people don't like. Duck is the other thing. I grew up hearing that duck was a greasy, nasty bird. <laughs> and when Nikolai showed me how to cook a duck, no, and, was my or son. his cousin, one of them did, it was the tastiest bird I had ever eaten that I had never eaten before. It was amazing. And then when I cooked it for the first time, I did some research because I didn't want to have greasy fat. You know, the skin being greasy. And I did, every, you know, I did it the way it's all the suggestions. And let me tell you something. If the fat renders even off a of duck skin, which is what happens, it leaves that crisp, crispy, crusty skin that's left because all the fat has melted out between the meat from between the meat and the skin. And that's what makes it taste good. Teresa Lee says, I don't eat fat. Mm -hmm. So the duck Not doesn't either. have that fat, greasy taste because you've cooked it out of it. But with um, with uh, lamb, I cut all the fat off the of lamb. Yeah, I like lamb. And, the, and what is that, silver skin, babe? That thin layer of stuff? I cut all of it off because I don't like the taste of lamb fat at all. Cracker Barrel, still strong in Missouri last time I was in Springfield. Math Geek says, unfortunately, I can only eat grass-fed beef, so I rarely eat beef anymore. It's sad that they charge more for grass-fed grass beef. Which is saving them money because they're not grain feeding them. It's just strange how they price something that's not costing them more money to do. Is White Castles that one that makes great burritos? White Castles mm -hmm. is a lot like crystals. Yeah, they yeah. make sliders. Mm hmm. Because I ate at the White Castle in Chicago. It is the fat math, Pete. If you trim off all the fat and the silver skin, and then um, we I take we uh trim the bone out of it too, and then I we butterfly cut it open, so it's laying out flat, and then I um I stir fry mushrooms till they turn a certain color, put in onions and shallots, and lightly saute those. Season it all, and then um, 
I put it all across the meat while it's open. Uh, and then I season the meat and then we roll it like a roll and we tie it. And then I season the outside and we cook it in the oven like that. And it's so yummy. Yeah, I love Texas Roadhouse too. And that's one of the places I'm going to. Not without me, woman. <laughs> <laughs> I've been restricted from uh, Texas Roadhouse until he arrived. Not fair. Uh huh. <laughs> now you go to the Texas Bowl guys and send me a picture of that. What would that do? Me. Would that be fair? No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of places do you have around there to eat, Katie, when you go out? We have two cap. Uh, what do you call the one at the hotel, Bay? A combination cafe restaurant? Yeah, yeah. So we have a cafe restaurant at the hotel. And then we have a smaller uh, little, actually, there's two of them now. I don't know how long that one will last. Anyway, we've got two cafes. We've not eaten at the newest one. Um, but the one called uh, Goonga Walk, they serve things like uh, uh Smash burgers, which is made from fresh ground beef. Mm -hmm. um, sandwiches that are made in this, what kind of bread is that, babe? Flatbread? Yeah. Yes. And and they it depends on what you order. Like they have one that is an avocado sandwich, right? And the one we like is called a chicken club because it has chicken on it, but it also has hummus on it and some type of... Um, it's got sweet and sour onions in it, but what is the sauce they're using in it? It's some kind of sauce they make that they use inside of it, and it's quite good. Um, they make pizzas, and I'm trying to think what else. They also have an ice cream bar. They serve specialty coffees, which that's not even, I couldn't even tell you what any of them are because I don't drink coffee. It's sort of like a small barista. Yeah, it's like a barista. That's right. They have that coffee thing and everything. Yep. And it is 4.30, you guys. It's time for me to set up again for another giveaway. Yay. What? It's 4.50 now. Oh, we bypassed it? Yeah, we'll 20 minutes. Them. Oops, we're late. Oh, I don't know, but it's okay. We'll get it done. Then I bet everybody's going to disappear. But I am appreciative of all of you who have stayed. Because we've been here for a long time today. Very long time. <laughs> we sure have. Give away. And we are going to don't put it in there yet because I haven't got it set. Okay. Put in exclamation mark G Q fun. All one word. And I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. And this will be the last one. This will be number five. And there's 33 of us here watching. Yep. <laughs> Robin Marie says, yeah, my butt hurts from sitting so long. <laughs> I know when I get up, I'm going to be hurt. My hips are, yeah, my back is going to scream because my butt has sat in this chair a long time. Uh, I think Candace is tired, Teresa says. <laughs> she asleep? No, I'm here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate all of you who have stayed, so make sure you get that in there. Exclamation GQ fun. Yeah, my back is already hurting. I stretch my shoulders every chance I got up. Every my shoulders are, are yeah. killing me. 
The last time I stood up, I felt pain. So I know I've been sitting too long. Yeah, I may be doing tomorrow from my easy chair and then sewing on it later. My, my good chair died in this chair that we had to buy because I didn't have anything to choose from. It sucks. <laughs> this chair I have carried through over nine moves. Um, I happened to find it. It was at Staples and somebody put the tag in the wrong spot. It was supposed to be like a $400 chair and they had a $200 price tag in front of it or a $100 price tag. I don't remember what it was, but I got it at the one that they had the price tag for. And I've had to replace the, the hydraulics in it once and it's got some bang up spots from where we haven't been careful with it and where it's been roughly handled during moves, but it does not hurt me like any other chair I found. So I'm not giving it up until it finally starts hurting me. <laughs> oh, Denise sent me an email, you guys. Did she already leave? She might have. I haven't seen her in chat in a while. Oh, she wrote me an email saying thank you. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. She she was she didn't want to show her face and I'm okay with that. But she said she might want to next time. Oh, that'd be awesome. Maybe she just needed to see how it worked first. I know it can be very daunting to get in front of the camera. Yeah, and I understand that. That's why I said you don't have to be in front of the camera if you but if you want to be in Zoom and so anyway, that's fine. I have no problem with however you want to do it. I just wanted people to come and have fun. Joy said and I would I would have fallen asleep if I lay if I went horizontal. <laughs> Teresa says, I've been laying in bed for two hours already. <laughs> and Tangle says, I lay, I'm laying on my day couch. My butt is quiet. Oh, my <laughs> butt is quiet. <laughs> oh, Robin says, mine I'll also. Here. <laughs> and I, you know, again, I thank you um, from the bottom of my heart. I hope y'all went and looked at the picture when you have a chance of the, the love block. I think we've had a good time. You can really see who is here when you do a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a couple people in here that I've never seen before, Teresa. Two or three people, I think, that I've never seen. Oh, I so definitely think. Go ahead. You know, you can go ahead. I definitely want to thank you, Katie, for opening this up for us because well, it's definitely given me a new light and seeing whether or not I think I can handle doing a Zoom. There is no way in any kind of sense of the word that I would be doing a 12-hour Zoom, so you are more than crazy for this, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Becca had a, um, you're going to laugh when you hear this, Becca did a, every. Every quarter she does a weekend um, Zoom and it starts on, usually it starts on Friday and ends Sunday evening. Oh, and the first time um, she did it, um, I'm, I was in the sewing room and I had, I don't even know how long I'd been sitting in there sewing. And I don't know, everybody had abandoned ship but me, but I was still sitting in there because I was sewing and listening to music in the background. And Ian comes traipsing in <laughs> at like one o'clock in the morning, you know. He says, I couldn't sleep, so I'm here. And we sat and talked like three hours before I finally got so tired I had to go finally and lay down. And he, him and someone else, I think, talked for another three or four hours before other people started drifting back in and they drifted out to get some a nap. So it's it's really cool when you're on a Zoom and um you can come and go and or you can leave or do what we did. We left our zoom up, but turned our cameras off. That makes and sense. And then came back and turned our camera back on and resumed what we were doing. So this is, you know, a lot of fun. Okay. Does everybody got their exclamation mark GQ fun in the channel? Because I'm about to do this last drawing. So you have one minute to hurry up and get it done. I might take advantage of the work they are doing to move my sewing area from the bedroom to the dining room once they are done. That's a good idea. 
I just want my sewing room back, you guys. I had to move my sewing room to the living room this summer, and I'm so glad to be back in my studio now. Yeah, it's weird being in here because it's yeah, I'm in this little corner. Well, our living room's actually not a small living room. It's just being hogged by my plants. <laughs> How long till you get your room fixed, Katie? We have no estimation on when anybody's going to do anything. Oh, wow. It's is it crazy. always like that there? Or is it because of wintertime or what? I don't know what the... What do you think? What's your answer to that? What? Is it normal for it to take this long? Uh, it could be that they're busy with other projects. They're probably the only contractors, maybe. I don't know. But it's insanely crazy because do you know how long have we been waiting for our boiler to be put in? Two months. It's been... I don't know, a month. It's been longer than that. Yeah. Oh. They were supposed to come do it before you left. April. And, yeah, in April. And they didn't do it. And then when he came back in September, right? Oh. He had a discussion with them and they said they would get it done in November. November came, November left. They never even showed up over here. So then he comes home and they tell him, oh, we're, we're going to come next week. And the, it was what, the first week in December or second? Second, I think it was. That, yeah, they were going to come the second week in December. The second week came, the second week left. No phone call, no Go to hell? No, nothing. <laughs> I'm just saying. It, not one bit of communication. So we've been waiting seven months for our boiler to be changed to a new one. That's and fortunately for us, the crappy boiler we have hasn't pooped out on us yet. Maybe that's what they're waiting on. It has to be an emergency. Oh, so they can charge more money? They can't because of we course. have an, a financial agreement with the money already in place to pay for all of this, but they don't get their money until they do the job. And uh, so they can't change the price. Uh, they're waiting for a rainy day when they need the money. <laughs> That's what I, I'm thinking. Maybe they don't want their money right now. I don't know. But it's pissing us off. I bet. Well, this is stupid. I don't understand why you don't want to make money. They've had seven months to get that big amount of money in their pocket. Because it's not cheap what we're paying for. In fact, it's astronomically high priced. Even here in the States, it's hard lately to get, I mean, since, especially since COVID and stuff, like, I don't know. I mean, restaurants can't get help. And I mean, even fast foods like short people and, you call and try to get an estimate to get some work done at the house and like they'll call you back. They won't show up or they never call you back. It's like you got that much business. You don't even want to like give a quote or. Yeah, I don't understand that. They don't even answer. Listen to this. This is what ticks me off even worse. Everybody has a phone. Why does people not answer their phone? That's the number one thing. Secondly, Nikolai Spent, has spent time on and off emailing them. Have they answered the email? And other people do the same thing. You send an email inquiring about something, you get zero communication back. But you go on to Facebook and say something on Facebook about them, and they're hurrying up and calling you. Yeah. Well, the apartment complex where I live, we have siding coming off the building that I live in. Um, and they were supposed to have the siding people out in the, they said in April when we, or May when we moved in, that they were gonna have people out in the summer to do it. October came and we still didn't have the siding fixed. And I think the last week of October or first week of November, the siding people finally came and they fixed other siding problems that the building has, but they didn't fix the siding that is banging up against our apartment and the guy upstairs' apartment. Wow. So they, they, they only fixed half of what they were supposed to fix. Oh, I haven't drawn the winner, have I? Oops. Nope. <laughs> they are giving extra time. Sorry, guys. All right. Let's pull it. Let's see who the next last winner is. And the oh, Candid. Huh? 
you are the last winner of the $25 gift card. Thank you. <laughs> You're good, Candace. Let me get my email address so I can send it to you. Wow, you lucky girl. See, somebody in our Zoom won it. Yep. <laughs> I congratulate you. Um, I'm going to post it in the um, chat, um, Candice, by your name. Okay. I think I have it from um, the Zoom thing. I'm not sure if you had my email. or I don't know if we've emailed before or not. I don't think so. You sent me your the Zoom link. That's right, I did. Yeah. So so you already have it, so I don't need to post it, right? No, no, you're fine. I'll email okay, you. Okay, just make sure you email me, okay? Okay. And then I'll um when I get up, just when I, I'm gonna take a nap and then I'll probably get up around three or four o'clock this afternoon, probably. Maybe. <laughs> no, I will. And I will get on to Fat Quarter Shop and get all of y'all's gift cards ordered and sent in an email to all of you. Congratulations. And I thank you for sitting it out with me all this time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for hosting us. Oh, you're welcome. And I, I definitely want to do some more Zooms like this because it's gone smoothly. I don't think that... Uh, so, since we're talking about this, um, Tammy and Candace and... Uh, I can't ask the ones that were already here already. I'll ask them later. Did you enjoy doing it like this through a live? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's my first time, so. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's been splendid today. Joy T says, oh, my God, don't call the guys I used. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea says, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm going to bed. Thank you for staying, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. Baby, it's the plug to my phone unplugged over there. What, because of a dog? Probably. <laughs> of course it was. That's why my phone's telling, warning, we're going to die. <laughs> Happy New Year's. Still awake. Hi, Maria. Georgie, it's 1 a.m. and I'm heading for bed. Have a nice night and thank you for staying with us. Joy T, I am getting American Home Shield quotes next week. Sandra K says, hello. Math Kate says, goodbye, Andrea. So we have, what, one more hour to go? Yep, we have yep. an hour to go and then I'll be done. 54 minutes. 54 minutes, Nikolai says. I and may like I have, have to call it a night. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to call it a night. <laughs> yeah, I stopped because I uh, I had made a mistake on my PMQ, and when I do that, I stop. And I'll yeah. pick it back up. To my but I got lines the left definitely aren't done. right. <laughs> that matters, you know? Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. I've got three... Three pieces to attach to each of these eight, and that I entire round will be done. Some, some of you probably saw this last night. Oh, that wallpaper! This, I was going to ask you about that if you were going to when so, you were going to do it. So this is wrapping paper, you guys. Yeah, but wrapping what do paper. You see? I see potential quilt in progress. I love that idea. Yep, I'm going to get some graph paper and figure out how to make it. First, I need to figure out where each pattern stops and ends. You know, where it starts the where repeat. The repeat. Again. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I find where it repeats at, then I'll know how much of a, what I, you know, the pattern I'll have to do. There's, to there's a row. Um, if you see, it's a little under half or a little lower than halfway down there's a green and pink yeah right above there that 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 row there's a green and pink together right no that's uh, not no, pink. yeah that 
that row that your finger's on, uh, come over right there. Oh, come back, come back, come back, and one more. That green and pink right there, Uh huh. Yeah. that repeat is over off to the other side. That's where your repeat is. Okay, yeah, I see where that repeat is now. Okay, good eye. Because I would have been staring at it for a while, probably. So When I could I... fold it there. When I go to sewing days, I'm usually the one that goes around helping people figure out if they're laying everything out the way that their pattern says. <clears throat> That's That's one of the great. few things That I'm means really, you have really a good good eye. at. Yeah. And I think these, uh, <laughs> the circles that you see here, these yeah. are the green flag. And these can be done like reverse appliques, actually, I think. And it looked right. Instead You can do... of doing, instead of doing like the, a, a curve and then sew on a curve, I think I want to try doing it as a reverse applique. You can do it as a reverse applique, or you can do applique of a circle of the entire color, so the entire circle of the red and entire circle of the white, onto that background. And if you look through the pattern, you should be able to cut that circle and, and block in half Uh -huh. Oh, okay. and be able to go further down or you know place it further out. Okay. Or at least that might make it easier to applique if you're just going Yeah. to do a, a straight circle. Um, when you do the straight circle applique, Oh, um, wait, wait, wait. Stop for a minute. Let me yeah. ask you a question about that. Okay. Because I had thought of this too. You know, you got this half here, right? Uh huh. And you have the, the, the red on the bottom and the white on the top for the background. Yeah. Um, so I could potentially, probably what you were saying to me is um, sew the, the white to the, to the red. And we're going to cut that hole for that applique. But what goes behind it will all automatically be another white and red block. sewn together it'll fit behind it but it'll be shown as a circle Yes. that makes sense to me to do it like that Now, another way you can do so it, complicated in, instead of doing reverse applique, to do regular applique, uh, mm -hmm. you would take a red circle with a muslin background or a white yeah circle with a muslin background. You sew them right sides together with that quarter uh-huh inch seam and you cut a hole in the muslin Mm and you clip all your corners on the outside edges You pull that red or that white fabric to the right side after you sew all the way around, and that helps you press everything out. And that'll -hmm. give Okay. you a perfect circle, and then you can applique it, you know, just zigzag or straight stitch it down onto your block with the muslin in place, and then you can cut what you need. But Yeah. it's easier to applique an entire circle than it is to do a half circle. Yeah, it is. That's especially if that's not something you do all the time. Yeah, I understand that. Yep, that makes sense to me. Um, th this is probably like a flying geese right here with that whole block above it. Yeah, you can do that as a flying goose, or you can do that as an hourglass block, and just all your other pieces are that background color. Okay. You just do one, one triangle of the one color. And then the rest is, oh, I see what you're saying, and use the other side as the background color with that background okay Yeah, you could. That would be one way to do it. okay If you if you frequently lose your points on your flying geese. no you know I don't I only have trouble with the tip sometimes because of and it's probably because I still some, you know when you cut triangles to do flying geese And you're you sew the first one on, and you're making sure that the the sides of each side of the uh, corner of the triangle is flush with both sides of that uh, rectangle. Uh huh. Then when you overlay with the other one, for some reason, sometimes not all the time, I end up with a little more sticking out at the top, and I'm not sure why that happens. Does If that make sense? it does make sense, are you dog earing your corners of your triangles or are you using a square and then trimming away your extra? Uh, I can't.
No, I haven't. I don't think I've been trimming the doctor's off. I'm not sure. Okay, when you do, uh, one way to do flying geese is um, instead of doing cutting triangles, mm -hmm. so you cut your rectangle and you cut your your triangle pieces, but you cut them as a square. You don't cut it as a triangle. Um, Okay. and you draw a line from one corner to the other. You sew on that line or just one thread um, away from that line. So one thread towards the corner away from that line. And then you, tr you can use scissors or rotary cutter and cut off the extra that's uh, after your quarter inch seam allowance. And then you press your corner, you press your goose unit back or your triangle unit back. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I'm I'm still not real. I've gotten pretty good with my um half square triangles for the most part. I still sometimes get in a fight with it, but I've gotten better at it. But my flying geese, oh my god, there's still a struggle, and it and there's a lot of times. You know, a pattern of call for a half square triangle, and I don't want to fight with one, and I would use two half square triangles to make it. Just to avoid doing it the way you're supposed to do it. And I know you're not supposed to. One of the cheats that I do with my flying geese, when I, especially when I'm making a lot, is I will cut my rectangles larger, Mm hmm. and I cut my squares larger. But how do you cut back down? How do you cut down from that? Because that Um. because um, remember I said that I'm a I'm angle challenge. So when I if you make it bigger, how do you trim it down to the correct size without messing it up? I've got a template that I made for one size and I can show you how I made them. Um, I'll have to pull everything out to be able to do it because Okay. I, I cannot explain very well without tools to show you. Um, but there's, there's a way that you can use a template to show you where you need to be trimming and it'll teach you how to use your ruler to trim that way. If you're going to do the oversize and trim down. Yeah, the over doing the oversize, I just I've tried doing that and I've always every time I mess it up. So yeah. It's because I don't really I think I think I lack the understanding of the mechanics of a flying goose, maybe. I don't know. It, they're not the easiest units to learn <laughs> and I still get them wrong frequently. I mean I mean If I had to look at a flying geese I did four years ago to the one I did today, they're better, but they're still flawed. They're not like they should be. Well, better is what you're aiming for. Yeah. I don't want to, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for doing it right. That's what I'm looking for. That makes sense. I will try to pull stuff out when I do um, a video to post up on my on my page. I will see what I can do about posting about how to do the flying geese the way that I do them. Okay. I know So I've that got a whole bunch I've got to trim up anyway, so it's perfect that I've got them already. Okay. I tried to do use flying geese paper just to see how it works, and I discovered something about her flying geese paper. Uh, Kimberly's. Okay. She she puts two flying geese. Uh, where the points are facing away from each other on that one piece of paper and there's a cut line that goes down the middle of the rectangle and she wants in her direction she tells you to cut those apart before you start the soap of the paper and I, I got to thinking about that and I'm like why would you cut it if you could if you if when you could put a square unless you're going to use two different backgrounds for that part of the rectangle. But if you're using the same color for the rectangles, why couldn't you put a square there that's not been cut and then sew on the half triangles on each side? That makes more sense to me so that when you cut it down the middle, you have two flying geese that's not flawed. Well, if you're using a rectangle that matches the pattern, the layout of it, you're going to have bias seam in the middle. Right. Unless, unless you cut your rectangle or you cut your squares differently. But a lot of people are going to make that mistake where they're going to end up with a bias 
on the bottom of that flying goose unit. And so when you go to press or starch or anything like that, it's going to lead to a lot of failure. So she's trying to avoid you getting into that hiccup. Okay, that's That's, why that's, that's what I, I, I would think. yeah, that's why I asked the question. Yeah. I have not used the papers before, but that's, that's the only thing I can think of is she's trying to avoid running into the, well, I hate these papers because they don't work when it's, Yeah. you know, it's user error, but it's user error because people are still learning Yeah, exactly. and people are, people are going to make mistakes learning. So Yep, yep. Diane says, right, is the method that gives you the best consistent results. There is always more than one way to make a unit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And sometimes that's why I opt to use half square triangles to make flying geese, because I know that I can line them up simpler than I can to do the flying geese, which to me doesn't really make sense why that is. It's the way And it's your probably brain like, works. yeah, you know, I think it's because I lack the understanding of the mechanics of the block itself. That would make sense. Yeah, and, and that's where I need to figure that. And and if I learn it, then I could be better at making them if I can understand the mechanics of it. So, Katie, I'll probably post that in about a week. Okay. That, that would be my expectation. So Okay. I'm doing I'm the, putting no pressure on you. yep. so I am doing the New Year's Day with the Stitch in Heaven, and I'm going to show you all my fabrics Cool. that I am going to be using, and I am not typically a springtimey person, so I had to go buy all these fabrics, and I had, so there's not a Joanne Fabrics in my town. And the only fabric store that we have other than Quilt Shop, which is a lot more expensive, is Hobby Lobby. And I'm kind of bored with Hobby Lobby se selection, so I wanted to go to Joann's. Well, a week or two before I had a doctor's appointment and got to go to Joann's, and <laughs> I was buying fabric for an Elizabeth Hartman pattern, and I needed six fat eights. So I ended up getting a full quarter yard of, I needed six fat, fat eights for each fabric I was doing. And I'm doing six or seven fabrics. So I had a buggy load, carried it up to the counter, and then turned around and went and got another buggy load. As if the girls remembered me when I came back. Oh, I am missing one fabric. And let me grab it real quick. So my last year's mystery quilt, I did a Christmas quilt. And so this year I decided to do a springtime quilt. So I'm hoping that these are showing up in the camera. Uh, hang on, I think I need to, to um, pin you so we can see. Uh, mic around. Let me have it. There you go. Wait a minute. All right, let's try that. Oh, now I can Okay. see. I hope everybody else can. I'm hoping so. So I've got, there's four little um, pink colors. Uh, the teal is actually my background color. Uh, team Rob is doing white. And Team Tiffany is doing, is Tiffany Hayes. Uh, she is doing black as her background, but I'm doing teal. And then I've got two different greens to go with it. So this will end up on my, on my pictures and all of that soon too. <laughs> It's pretty. so that's what I'll be working on. My, this Zoom ends at 1, 1 a.m. my time and this live thing Uh, starts at 9 a.m. my time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh boy. so <laughs> I get to get off of You're here. going to be very tired, <laughs> aren't you? I am. I'm going to be getting off of here. And then I've got to go get the Black Eyed Peas ready. They've been soaking the entire time we've been on this live. But I've got to season and add all the extra stuff to them. And then I can put it on high and go to bed. <laughs> and then... 
I get to get up and make cornbread before I go to my live because my husband does not know how to make my cornbread recipe. And cornbread is one of the things I do not mind making at his request. So. I like how you have your cutting table up next to your sewing machine like that. Well, normally, so my camera is actually at my windows. I've got a huge picture. It's a double window. Um, but I always have my blinds open. I'm on the third floor. So if anybody's going to see in, they're going to mainly see up to my light and my back wall here. And they'll see whatever's close up so they can see the camera, the back of the camera. But my sewing machine is normally up against that window so I can look out and see sunset. Our sunset today was gorgeous. And then my cutting table is actually my long arm table. So my long arm is actually up underneath, just oh. barely off camera. You can barely see her. I've got a little cover over her. Uh, I've got to get okay. to using her a lot more. But the lady I bought her from, her husband built an inset to put in place when I take the long arm out. So if I need this whole table, I can take it. And this is actually the leaf for the table. And so I put my cutting board here and then I've got uh, two different ironing options. I've got an ironing board, a traditional ironing board, and then I turned a tray table into an ironing station. And mm -hmm. I carry that with me when I go to Quilts Guild or going to Sew Days or whatever. I'm going to one on Wednesday. So that that table tray table will be going with me and I actually take my sewing machine table with me. Um, I've got an adapter to fit my smaller machine and a different cutout to fit my smaller machine, but it is a lot more comfortable to sit at this uh, sewing machine table than it is to set my machine up on a table and then be reaching up to try to, to use it all day. So, yeah. I see a face peeking in. It's because I'm showing him something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say about what I just see, I'm seeing, you guys. According to the analytics while this live is going on, there's been 685 views of this live. Oh, wow. <laughs> you guys rock. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm totally shocked. I know uh, one of the local friends I've got, uh, she messaged me earlier, and it's so funny, and uh, she said, I, I realized tonight I love watching happy people on YouTube, then I was watching you, and I felt like a creeper, <laughs> and I said, come watch me. <laughs> no, I, I think that I, uh, the funniest, or I don't think it's funny, actually. It's weird when you first start out doing this and you're looking at yourself on a video live or on a pre-recorded video and you're seeing your face. I find it disturbing. And it's took me a while to just learn not to even think about it while I'm doing it. I think my biggest <laughs> struggle is I hear my voice when I replay my videos and I definitely don't sound... <laughs> anything like I feel like I sound well actually you have a nice voice just saying well, thank, you. thank you I appreciate that I always sound like a kid when I'm on a phone or something and then when people see me face to face and I don't sound that way they're like why do you sound different on the phone I have no idea <laughs> uh you got me on that one it's weird I guess it's how the sound systems pick up what you say Candace needs to talk. <laughs> so tell me what you did before you came on the live today. Did you make it? Did you, were you working on anything before you got on the live? Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, I went to Becca's. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. I forgot about her. Yeah. She's probably like, <laughs> why didn't she show up? Because I'm always there. <laughs> No, I put the binding on that quilt, but like the last week I did four quilts. So I was sewed out well and uh, 
free motion quilt thing. I bought got a machine like the end of November and um just started to learn all that and still swirls and stuff like that. So yeah, and clean house and my teenage my college daughter went back on Friday back up to Pennsylvania to go back to school and my son's with his dad this weekend. So yeah. <laughs> so just getting the house back in order for the most part. I can't believe school's already going to start so fast. She doesn't there. She's actually out for a couple more weeks, but you know, she had to make it back by new year's to hang out with friends. So she may come back before. I don't think she goes back till the 20th or something like that. I don't know, but she's got an apartment up there off the campus. So she's, you know, it's kind of her house now. So. I've got to ask about your cats, Candace. Yes. We got to know names. How many um, do you have? Because I've only seen the one. Oh, there's been two. Yeah. I have four cats. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> two, were my, two were mine. And um, a friend of mine passed away a couple years ago when I was still in Pennsylvania. And all her family was on the West Coast. And they're dog people, but she's a cat person. So... I didn't, you know, I figured if, if it had been me that died, she probably would have taken my two cats. So I took her two cats. So yeah, that's how I have four cats now. And I only, I only have one that's like, well, the black one, he's kind of friendly, but this one, this one's mine. The black, two black cats that were hers. This is gray. Oh, very cute cat. Yeah, he's a sweet boy. So the black cat we saw earlier meowing, that was which one? That was Jax, my friend's cat. Yeah. <laughs> but she's, we've had him for four years. So <laughs> he's my cat. But it was all up over that table and meowing into the camera. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? Normally he never comes up here, I guess, just because it's kind of quiet and everybody's out of the house now. I think we're going to be, uh, Joy T says, I usually wake up at 3 to 4 a.m. I don't know if I'll be able to go to sleep. I have a feeling we're going to have to watch a little TV to go to sleep ourselves. Me? Nah. Him, he'll probably just snore. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you on your project? Me? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to take a brush after my So... So the whole night only Jim showed up in here tonight, or did he? Yeah. I Because I, I there was two or three people that does Legos, and I think only two have, or one maybe. One or two showed up. So my mother had other things to do. Sheila Gage says, Marla, I am fading. Robin says, I usually go to sleep at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. That sounds like us. It's been being four o'clock in the morning lately. What four three? Oh, there's the other cat. I didn't see that one. Wow, that's a big one. Nice cat. <laughs> no, you gotta get back to the grind, don't you, baby? Huh? So Marla says, Sheila Gates says, Marla, I'm fading. Robin says. My sugar buzz just kicked in. <laughs> A few hours too late. <laughs> Marla says, oh, hey, Sheila, good night. <laughs> Only 30 minutes yet for Teresa Louise and Sandra K. Joy, I yep. have some good news and I have some bad news. Okay. I know, I know my voice sounds great. I cannot carry a tune. <laughs> hey, it's all right. I, I sing, but not on key. <laughs> <laughs> My kids' uh, friends, uh, one of them, I've taken them down south many times in a van uh, for bowling tournaments and whatever. And uh, recently, um, one of them, her name's Chatley, she was talking about something on her Facebook. She says, yeah, I remember when Aunt Kathy would be listening to Madonna and singing to Madonna all the way down the interstate in the van. Katie, <laughs> this is my Nikolai. <laughs> he 
He seems like he's shy being on camera. No. Yeah, he's not <laughs> wanting to let us see him. <laughs> Don't be shy, young man. Yeah. Her, uh, T Katie's husband. Go like, fight. Go with the J. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Nico. I'm Nico. Hi. I think the cat is Nick. Is it a child or a cat? No, my son is Nikolai. Okay. That's see? interesting. Your namesake, honey. Yep, my namesake. Do you like Legos too, Nikolai? Yeah, they're, yeah. This is a master at them. Cool. He's got a big set. I'm building this one. He's building the creator, the house. Yeah, it's the creators. Oh, cool. The creators are for. Advanced Lego builders. A lot of these uh, are set up so that they're a challenge for uh, expert builders. And I have rebuilt this one too. Cool. Green one. Green one. Green one. The country. Oh, the country? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Not Greenland, Georgia. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait. Don't tell him <laughs> nothing. Let me ask Nikolai some questions. What can you tell me about Greenland? What do you know about Greenland? It's cold. There's a lot of what? snow and ice. Okay. What else can you tell me about it? I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. Did you know that it's the largest island in the world? No. I guess. I mean, I never really thought of it. But... See, some people think it's Australia, but Australia is a continent, not an island. Cool. <laughs> These things you should know. A lot of people get Iceland mixed up with Greenland, and Iceland's like a spit in the water yeah. compared to the size of Greenland. Okay, bye. He just got home. He's ready to play video games, probably. <laughs> I wanted to see how much he knew about Greenland. He did. He does. He did know that it was uh, cold versus the island. My dad. My dad like was a world traveler, worked for the airlines, and he, I remember always being little and him telling me that they named Greenland and Iceland wrong. <laughs> Actually, um, Eric the Red named Greenland Greenland, and back then, before the mini ice age, it was actually green down in South Greenland. Yeah, it's just like it is now. We um for. During the summer months, there is no snow or ice anywhere around our town or where the sheep farmers live. Um, the last four years, though, climate change is affecting everything in Greenland. Yeah. And the ice cap is melting. Um, there's an ice cap that me and Nikolai went to that I have pictures of us touching it. That was in 2012, right? And then we have pictures of 2017 where we revisited it again. But somebody posted pictures two years ago and it wasn't touching the water. But then um, Diane and us were on Google Earth and we went to look at that ice cap and it's no longer anywhere near the water anymore. It's way up the side of the mountain. Oh, goodness. So it's very sad. And Iceland's been having lots of fun with volcano action. I I would love to go sit and watch those because they're so mesmerizing. But I don't know that my lungs could take it. Mm -mm. The chat's been going. Math Geek said, I joke with, pe with the people at work that I can stay up for a 7 a.m. meeting, but I can't get up for a 7 a.m. meeting. <laughs> Uh, Marla said, "I'm with you on that. I, I don't, I don't hear alarm clocks." <laughs> yeah, Diane, I wasn't like being mean about it. I was just saying Iceland's this tiny speck in the water compared to Greenland. Not about whether it was pretty or not, because Iceland is beautiful. I've been there twice, once or twice now. Once. Yeah, I can't remember if it was twice or not. I spent the night there. It looked like it reminded me of a little European town in it was in uh Capelet, right? Yeah. Capelet. Yeah. 
but I would love to see the volcano while it was erupting. I know you're just saying. <laughs> she likes to get on me. <laughs> She's my friend. I've been did you, in that did, so many times, too. Did you see Robin's comment a minute ago? Math geek, I am not a sound sleeper. <laughs> oh, listen to this, honey. Ma uh, Robin says to Math geek, I am not a sound sleeper if a... <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> If a, if a fly farts a hundred feet away, I wake up. <laughs> I knew oh. you hadn't read it because I knew you'd be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Left out Robin, but sorry. <laughs> Oh, y'all got me tickled now. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, while I'm thinking about it, when you're in the United States, if you do not have a black light flashlight, so it actually shows black light, I don't know how well you can see it on the camera or not. Um, if you get a hold of a black light flashlight, you can find them at like Harbor Freight or um, Tractor, you might be able to find it at Tractor Supply or places like that. If you have any of these tone on tones, like I've been using some white that has a white print on it and you can't tell which side is right side up, use your black light flashlight and it will highlight the print. And then on the back, it is just a solid, a solid fabric. Okay. That may not be something you can get in Greenland. I was just thinking about that. No, I haven't seen one, but I was thinking about buying one while I was in the U.S. Are they expensive? Mm -mm. I think this one, I got it at Ace Hardware because it was the only place I'd found it yet. I think it was like 15 bucks, but I think the ones at uh, Tractor Supply or Harbor Freight are going to probably be cheaper. I just haven't looked. I was wondering about whether they were expensive or not. Mm -mm. they're not super expensive but it's definitely something to add on to your to your list while you're here uh joy says i don't know much about greenland either until i met you well i will have to tell you there's things about greenland i didn't even know and we should have learned it in u.s history and i honestly don't recall greenland ever being mentioned during the war because uh we studied World War II, which was the only part of history that I actually got into. And um, I don't recall during that whole time period, my teacher ever talking about the United States having Greenland under its protection during World War II. I learned that after I moved here. I don't think I remember hearing about that either. Yeah, so here's what's, what happened was when um, the Nazis occupied Denmark, Denmark didn't couldn't, couldn't protect Greenland. And uh, I hope there's no one in here about to take a fits, but China and the UK wanted it. And um, I don't know if the king of um, Denmark contacted the US or the US saw what was going on and they contacted their them over there and says, we can put... Uh, Greenland in protection and, and give it back to you when you're not occupied by Nazis anymore. So um, while they protected Greenland, they, like in the town I live in here, there's a radio station up on top of one of our mountains that was built by the American military and um, the Narsar Sawak airport that we go to by helicopter. Um that used to be, what did you say it was called back then, babe? Blue West One. So it was called Blue West One from the um, American, uh, it was an American base at the time. And then there was Thule Air Base, and then there was one off the East Coast. What was that one called off the East Coast? Do you remember? Nope. Because they had one off the East Coast, though. But um, when World War II stops, uh, the U.S. gave Greenland back to Denmark in 1940-something, babe, or 1950-something? 
I don't know. I think it was 1959 or something. Because they had it for a while, but they didn't own it. They just kept it in protection. Um, now, if you talk to some of the older generation that are still living that were children back during World War II, some of them have nice things to say about our country. And some of them don't have nice things to say about our country. And it's mostly because um, when when they gave back Greenland back to Denmark and they left, they left a lot of stuff that they should have took with them. And it, now it's polluting the um, environment where they were at. There's like 5,000 uh, barrels of spent fuel that's leaking into the environment. And Greenland doesn't have the money to clean it up. Unfortunately. So some of the older generation are kind of unhappy about that. But they're also thankful that they stayed in protection, of course. But that was interesting history that I didn't know about. I never, I do not once remember our instructor ever telling us about that. I learned this in an Arctic guide class. So it's very interesting. That's why we have, uh, what do you call them, satellites? The satellites just run up and down the east coast of Greenland, and most of them were put in by the United States, and they're still operating on that east coast, and they keep track of what uh, Russia's doing, and China, of course, especially since the sea ice is not as prevalent there anymore. I think some of the Greenlanders are worried that there's been submarines from Russia sneaking around the island. Could be. Because this place is huge. I mean, there's areas where people never even go. Everybody stop talking. Uh, we have a largest national park. Yep. It, it's one of the world's largest national parks. It's not exactly the largest, right? There is a lot about all wars that come out years later. I agree, Mar Marla. It's surprising some of the things you learn about. And you don't get educated about it because you, I don't know, you're just not taught about it. Mm -mm. There's a lot that's not covered in school. Definitely. Denise says... We have pollution around bases in the United States that hasn't been cleaned up. I have radon in soil near me. Wow, that's very bad. Yeah, there's a lot of basements that you have to have a radon detection system. Yep. I think I saw something where Florida's starting to test housing for radon, but I don't know why. Because the whole state of Florida sits on a lime rock bed. Yeah, and you don't typically have basements. No, we don't because you can't. Mm -mm. That's not possible. I, I, I've only ever seen one house in Lake City that actually had a basement, surprisingly. And I don't know how it survived all those years of not being flooded, but it never flooded, which is weird. But, um, yeah, the, the the whole state sits on that lime rock bed, and any time they get acid rain, it breaks down some of it. Nice. That's where sinkholes come from. Well, moving up here yeah. is the first time I've seen as many basements as I have in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, we have a basement under this house. It's not that big. I mean, you can't live in it or nothing. But there's one under this one. But there is some of these houses that have huge basements that you can actually live in. Well, that, most of the houses here have multi-levels. It's harder. Yeah. It's really hard to find a ranch-style house here. A so. ranch-style is a one-floor house, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like those. You. It's like the house you saw. Have you ever seen the movie Secretariat? Yes. Yeah. You remember the house that in uh I think they lived in Colorado before she went to 
uh, her dad. They yeah, lived it, in that was a house. ranch house. Yeah. That was a big house. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want enjoying all that cuddling. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, it's nine nine time. What are you doing? <laughs> Way past nine nine. Because that's the one I've been seeing paying you a visit every so often. Yeah, he, he's wanting to wake you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> yep, yeah. like why are you up, like, mom? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know where Nora is? She's underneath my desk between my feet. <laughs> And Coda's still over there, passed out on the floor. Math Geek, where are you out of? I know, I think you said it earlier. Yeah, I can't remember. She's on the West Coast. She's waiting for her New Year's. And it's getting closer. Oh, yeah, so she's still... Yep. She's on Pacific she's time. Got, she's got, let me see, 12 minutes to go? 12 minutes, yep. Like yep. Hi, yep, Alfonso! Happy New Year! He was here earlier when I first started the live. Oh. Teresa must have fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, probably. Robin, I like those Victorian houses too. They're just not easy, easy accessible. Okay, Math Geek, you're near Seattle. Gotcha. I knew it was somewhere off the West Coast. I couldn't remember exactly. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was. You know who else else is on the West Coast? Diane is. Oh, okay. Alfonso, you're in Colorado. Awesome. What part of Colorado? Uh, I'm in Wyoming, Wyoming, just above you. Yeah. I would like to see Colorado one day. I want to see Montana. I, I've i So my husband worked as a, as a truck driver for a while. Mm -hmm. And I got to go on the road with him for about 15 months. Um, nine months at one time and six months at another. And we got to travel all over the U.S. We got to go to upstate New York all the way out to Seattle, down to um, Southern California, and be able to basically spit to the Me Mexican border, and then all the way uh, to Southern Florida. And there's a lot of places that we absolutely loved visiting, uh, but we definitely are happy that we've moved here. Sandra says she's about 20, 220 miles east of Math Geek. Katie, you look so pretty really today. I want to bear hug you. Uh, Denver so, Metro. Um, gotcha. We had hunt hunters in Lake City that would go all the way to Colorado to deer hunt. Every yeah. winter they went to Colorado to hunt. And I'm like, why do you want to go so far? Because we want to catch them big bucks with the big wrecks on them. <laughs> They would be in heaven here in Greenland because the reindeer here have huge rats. <laughs> All right. So I am four hours and two minutes from you, Alfonso. Basically, I'm I'm in uh, Casper, Wyoming. I've never been to Wyoming either. What is that like there? What kind of state is, I mean, <laughs> do you have lots of ranch land or do, is there... Ranch there, land, horse land, or what is it like? There is a lot of ranch land, um, but there is a lot of Bureau of Land Management land. So mm -hmm. basically, the government owns a lot of the land, which means uh, you are allowed to um, use it for recreational purposes. So you can camp, you can do a lot of other things. I really haven't looked into all of it yet because we're still new to Wyoming and totally new to the idea of Bureau of Land Management, where there's public land you can actually use um, for recreation. So Cheyenne is the biggest city. It's the capital of the state. Casper is the second largest city, and we're basically central to the city. So about two and a half hours to Cheyenne, depending on how I drive, about two and a half hours to Gillette, which is in the north part of the northeast part of the state. And we've made it up to Sheridan, which is a little, it's north, I want to say, a little bit to the west, but not significantly. And then Yellowstone is northwest part of the state. Um, and Yellowstone goes into Montana. We have not gotten a chance to go up to Yellowstone yet and go exploring. Um, that is a plan for either this summer or next summer. Uh, something we'll do with my stepdaughter and 
then as you get down towards, you know, southeast part of this, or well, 